Right, very good morning to Kilani International Raceway, home of the uh, Western Province uh, Karting Club for round one of the Rotax Max Challenge uh, Nationals, uh, incorporating the uh, African uh, Open. And Mike side, Francois Butler bringing you the uh, live commentary here from Cape Town in South Africa. A uh, cool day with a little bit of a northwestern breeze blowing. The wind might change during the day. Ambient temperature around about uh, 18 degrees. Uh, track temperature much the same. A lovely view there of uh, Table Mountain covered by a bit of cloud there. The track there in your uh, picture. And we sincerely hope uh, you're going to enjoy it. We're going to start with Heat 2 of the uh, Bambinos. Heat 1 uh, was uh, done yesterday afternoon. Very exciting racing. I think they set the tone for today. And we expect lots, lots of excitement here. And uh, the track looking absolutely pretty there in the background. The uh, main clubhouse and main commentary tower. We are here at trackside, just to the right of your picture. And we'll bring you all the live commentary. The Bambinos about to take to the circuit. And uh, we're going to have uh, lots of fun out there. Out there will be Caleb Lagerfeld, uh, Yakin Hamaldin, Roddy Harris, Ibrahim Kalpi, Alonzo D'Oliveira, Russell uh, Yosefat, Liam De Beer, Sebastian Suttleworth, Caleb Rogers, and Aston Veal. Oh, on screen, they got the wrong race. They got Minimax. It's actually the Bambinos. Well, yesterday, lots of excitement in uh, heat number one. That was yesterday afternoon between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. And we had some brilliant, brilliant racing, some uh, very big surprises here. And uh, everyone chomping at the bit there. We see pit lane, we see the young chargers, the Bambinos. That's where they start in the uh, mini carts, run by Coma Motors. And all the dads and the pit mechanics out there with their uh, respective chargers ready to go to war and it's going to be an absolute crackerjack race these little young guns don't hold back for one minute and uh, they are ready to rumble lovely close-up shot there from the cameraman have a look at those faces here we go ready to go engines about to get started they're going to take to the circuit best wishes are being offered there to their respective chargers and uh, we are going to have some great racing. Three heats today, lots of uh, action to be had. The uh, final heat is the African Open, whereby the winners will find their uh, selves being chosen to go to Italy for the World Rotax Finals later this year. There they go, off they go. The Bambinos take to the circuit and we see them come out onto the main straight away for their first warm-up lap. Get a little bit of heat in those tyres, bending the brakes a little bit. Everything's been fine-tuned there by the respective mechanics as they work their way there around Hall's Corner into the uh, little kink and they make their way down into the uh, 180 complex. Oh, already the strategy and the uh, mind games are being played there as they work their way through. And uh, double yellows waving, full caution yellow. It's the warm-up lap. Nobody doing anything untoward. They're all staying there in their respective lines as they work their way now out of the 180s down the uh, Rotax straight towards Boss Corner. All giving each other the beady eye as they work their way down to Boss. It's just a warm-up lap, but they stay in formation. Brilliant, brilliant discipline coming out of these young lads. Aged between five and seven years old. Absolutely brilliant. There they go down into what we call golf club roll out a golf club they'll come out a golf club and hang a left past what we call rotax corner make their way towards what we call the pit s and when they come out the pit s they will uh, hit the tram lines we'll wait for the lights to go off and then they're going to go racing right here we go heat number one heat number two bambinos into the tram lines ago we wait for the lights lights off and we go racing as they make their way down towards uh, turn number one holes hook into holes they come and uh, we have a look see there who's got the whole shot it looks like it could be Roddy Harris now as they make their way down towards the 180s they will uh, hang a right there into the first 180 into the 180 they go 
Looks like young Roddy Harris is there in the front. Works his way out. It is the uh, 39. No, it's Yakin Hamaldin. Yakin is in the lead. Yakin Hamaldin in the lead now as they make their way up the road tax straight, up towards uh, Boss Sweep. And already they're getting linear as they make their way now down into Golf Club. Into Golf Club they go. They roll there through Golf Club. Hit the left hand, uh, make their way down past Rotax Corner. Yakin Hamaldin uh, leads out. And up behind him there's Roddy Harris. They were giving each other a little bit of uphill yesterday. And they make their way up over the line. They cross the line. They've got seven laps to go. And uh, Harris looking up on the inside. Roddy Harris looking up on the inside. And he goes in front of Yakin Hamaldin. Like I said yesterday, this is how the day uh, transpired in heat number one. Down into the 180s they go. And uh, still it's Roddy Harris. Yakin sitting there right behind him. And it looks like uh, Caleb Lingefeld's in there as well. They work their way around the second 180 down road tax straight. And they're literally nose to tail. There you see them fan out. Now they're side by side. Who's going to get through? Is it going to be Hamaldin? Hamaldin back to the front again. Up behind him there, Caleb Lingefeld in second place. Caleb sits there now in second place. Roddy in third. They hang the left hand to pass road tax. The little right kink. Then they make their way towards Pit S's. Everybody chomping at the bit now. Right hand sweep as they make their way onto the main straight and up over the start finish line. And it looks like Harris is alongside Lingefeld. There's a challenge going down into us, but no, he hangs back. He decides uh, to uh, just wait his time and uh, back down into the 180s. Into the 180s they go. And uh, it's going to be uh, Yakin Hamaldin that leads him out. Hangs that left-hander, another left-hander before he hit the right. And uh, they'll uh, run, usually run wide. These young cards get a little bit tighter. They don't go up onto the curbstone. Now they work their way down the road tax straight. And Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingefeld. Harris is going to go in front. He dives up on the inside there and goes up to second place. In the meantime, Hamaldin leads out out of golf club. Hangs that left-hander there past road tax. And the front three are at it. In uh, fourth place there, it's uh, Ibrahim Kalpi. It's all the local lads there giving it absolutely 10 tenths as they work their way up over the line. They cross the line. They will have uh, five laps to go. Five laps to go. As uh, you see there, still it's uh, Hamaldin leading out. Roddy Harris, Roddy Harris and Hamaldin were at it all day yesterday afternoon now as they work their way out of the 180s. Hit that right hand, uh, make their way down the uh, road deck straight. The heads are down as they try to buffet that little bit of oncoming breeze. And now Harris looks up on the inside and dives up on the inside of Hamaldin. Ooh, the gloves are off early in the day. And Harris goes to the front and Hamaldin's going to want to come right back at him. Oh, brilliant stuff here now. And uh, Hamaldin goes to the lead. Or should I say, sorry, Harris goes to the lead now. And Hamaldin's going to go. Hamaldin up on the inside, side by side now as they go down towards holes. Having a look up on the inside. And Hamaldin takes the lead straight back and says to Roddy, No, my friend, not today, not any day. I'm supposed to lead this back into the 180 complex to go. Hang a right. Run wide. Sometimes you go a little bit tight there if you want to protect your line. But now they're attacking the circuit at absolutely 11 tenths. Harris tracking uh, Hamaldin there now as he exits down the road tax straight to go. And now Harris up on the inside gets good drive coming out of the last bend. He's looking to go up on the inside once again. And Harris goes to the front. Hamaldin trying to hang around the outside but decides he'll uh, stay there and uh, choose another position. So off he goes sitting there now as they charge their way there past the uh, past the pit S's back onto the main straight giving it a, a good clout there at the moment working their way through there and uh, absolutely pushing as hard as they can working their way through the 180 still Harris leading out Hamaldin, Caleb Lingefeld, pretty close, best hit now, so the two they make a mistake, he's going to be, have easy pickings as they go through. Harris, Hamaldin, Lingefeld, Kalpi, um, 
Then we have the rest of the field up behind him. Now, once again, side by side. This time, Hamelden has the inside line. He closes the door. Harris try to come through there. Didn't have quite a good exit speed coming out of that uh, last 180. Hamelden still holds on. And uh, when they cross the line, they'll start their penultimate lap here and heat number two. Hamelden doing everything right. It shows Harris leading up. But when they cross the line, that board will change up. There we go, Hamilton leads out into turn number one, holds corner. And this time, Harris up on the inside, retakes the lead. Harris retakes the lead now as they work their way towards the 180s. Hamilton, Harris and Lingefeld embroiled in a titanic struggle here in the last two laps. They are literally nose to tail. You can cover them with a blanket now as they're going to the second 180. You can believe that Harris is going to go defensive now when he goes down the road deck straight. Out the, on the right-hander, works his way up down the back straight. The road tax straight and uh, Hamilton. There you see Harris going defensive. Hamilton looking for a way past. Harris just closing that line. Hamilton's going to try and go up on the inside of golf club. Does he know? Harris closes the door. Round the golf club they go. This is exciting stuff. They're about to start their last lap. It's going to be absolutely nail biting stuff down to the wire as they come past the pit bend into the right hander down the main straight. The last lap board will come out. Last lap board is out there and Hamilton up on the inside. Hamilton's up on the inside. Is he going to charge up on the inside? Yes, he does. He goes to the front ahead of Harrison. Lingefeld looks at Harrison and says, I might just have a bite. Hamilton defensive. Harris around the outside. Hamilton shuts him out. Holds his line. Lingefeld's in there as well. Joaquin Hamilton. Will he make it two out of two? Comes out of the uh, second 180. He's going to hang a right hand. He's going to go defensive down that uh, road tax straight. Yep, already up on the inside. Holds his line. Harris is up on the inside. Lingefeld's on the outside. He's been bombarded from both sides. He's holding up. He's on his way to boss speed, but Lingefeld goes through to second place. Lingefeld's in second place there behind Hamilton, and Hamilton is still holding on. He comes out of golf club, hangs that last left and uh, works his way there through the road tax bend. And Hamilton's leading out. He's going to hang that last left hander and uh, Lingefeld's right there on his tail. Check it flag begins for Hamilton. It's absolutely side by side, but Hamilton does it. He takes it there from Lingefeld and Roddy Harris. Ibrahim Kalpi should come through there in fourth place. A fantastic drive by the young Chargers. You cannot believe that these little ones can bring so much excitement to the table. Fantastic stuff. Heat number two, Bambino. Joaquin Hamilton, Caleb Lingefeld, Roddy Harris, Ibrahim Kalpi. Silver goes through, Shut will goes through, and uh, brilliant for Hill there in seventh. Rogers in eighth, and uh, the rest of the field coming through. Brilliant stuff there from the young Chargers. And uh, this, the tone has already been set. Next up, the Senior Max Challenge. 27 carts out on the circuit. Yesterday was an absolute blinding race. Young Cape Tonian Joshua Smith, first ever Senior Max race, takes the honours, line honours. And uh, we have a look there. He's sitting on the front row next to Mohamed Wally. Second row, we got Mikhail Besaynot and Charles Michael Fisser. Third row, we got Luca Verley, Tate Bishop. Then Jono Wilson, Mauro Deleuze. Kanyang Gwenya, Ken Schwartz, Jude Stewart, Storm Lanfear, Ethan Deacon, Shrin Naidu, Roshan Goodman, Divian Naidu, uh, Neilan Marx, uh, Brenner van der Walt, Nzala Koza, Laxon Lau, uh, Camo Novella, Kian Spies, Ethan Boerstander, Kurbis Reinecke, uh, Kian Fussel, uh, Oliver Entenhaus, uh, Travis Bingay, and Cole Houston. 
the absolute who's who of karting in South Africa and from uh, Namibia and uh, Mozambique. Right, here they go. They're going to line up. We're going to wait for the lights. The lights go off and we go racing as they charge down into turn number one. Into turn one they go. They work their way around and uh, make their way down towards the 180 complex. Into the 180s. Now you can see it's a lot quicker as they work their way through. Come out of the uh, 180s. They're going to work their way down the uh, Rotex straight. Down the 180s they go. And uh, work their way down as they make their way into uh, Boss Sweep. Already uh, we've got some hard charging carts in there. Everybody is, anybody is in this race now as they work their way through. And uh, make their way towards the start finish line for the end of uh, lap number one. In first place, Mohamed Wally, followed by uh, Mikhail Basayna, Tate Bishop, Charles Fissa, Luca Verli. Josh Smith down in five. Yesterday's winner, John Wilson and uh, Ethan Deacon. Right, so uh, leading out, Mohamed Wally. He likes to lead out, but he's got a very hard charging. Uh, Mikhail Bassein behind him as they make their way down towards uh, Boss Sweep. Literally nose to tail stuff here. There's a group of four, then another group of seven up behind them. It's anyone's game. Wally will try and command from the front, but he's got very, very quick charges up behind him. There will be changes in this now as they make their way up over the line. Over the line they go. Mohamed Wally, Tate Bishop goes up into second place. Charles Fissa, Luca Verli. And uh, Mikhail Bassena sits there. Jono Wilson. Well, it's very quick stuff there. Have a look at that front four. Tate Bishop sits there in second. And Bishop will want to go to the front. He will not want Wally to stay there. They are literally nose to tail. Have a look, see now, they blit nose to tail, coming down, holding middle of the road, no one has a look there, Bishop sort of has a slant to the inside, quick look, but they still line us and they're all pretty much on even pace, which is very frenetic at this moment in time. Past Rotax, bend they go, past the uh, Fit S's, up over the line, and they cross the line, they will have uh, 12 laps left, 12 laps to go into turn number one, work their way around now through that little king, down towards the 180s. Still it's Wally leading out. Bishop sits there right behind him. Then it's Charles Fisser and young Luca Verli, who we know is very quick around this circuit. Having a look at this, any changes up behind them? Not too many changes. Everyone's at full speed. And uh, make their way down into Boss Sweep, down into Golf Club. And uh, yesterday, Wally and Fisser on the final lap had a bit of a coming together, which uh, gave Joshua Smith the win. So good points there for the lad as they cross the line, they cross the line, they will have 11 laps left. Now the car's starting to fan out. Oh, it looks like Bishop has been relegated to third position as uh, Fisser goes through. Charles Fisser, who was leading for most of the day yesterday, fortunately getting taken out in the last corner. He'll want revenge for that now as he sits up behind Wally. Fisser, a very aggressive car, he'll want to have a look at Wally. Wally goes defensive, keeps Fisser behind him. Fisser goes around the outside and Fisser takes him into the corner. A great maneuver coming out of Shoal Fisser as he takes the lead. Fisser to the front, he's going to pick up some slow traffic. And slow traffic does it. Have a look at that maneuver around the outside. That is really, really great stuff coming out of Fisser. Cross the line, down into turn number one they go. Shoal Fisser leads out to Mohamed Wally. It's Tate Bishop and Luca Worley. Don't think that Luca Worley is going to stay sleeping there. And uh, Josh Smith now up to six behind Wilson as they work their way through the second of the 180s. They are starting to move up quickly. Josh Smith now moving up. Smith has moved up to P5 and he's going to go look for the leaders. Yesterday's winners on a fly as they go down there into uh, golf club. There's Smith with the orange helmet. He leads out there of that second pack and he's chasing the front four. He's quick. He showed yesterday he's got the pace and now he chases down the leaders. There's Shal Fisser leading out over Mohamed Wally. Uh, third place, Tate Bishop, Luca Worley, Josh Smith up two positions, nine piece in uh, P5. And he's going to go and look for the leaders. The leaders now into uh, the uh, 180 complex. Coming out of the second 180s now, it's Shal Fisser leading out over Mohamed Wally. Then it's, it's Luca Worley who's got past Tate Bishop. Worley up to third. So Luca Verli, the man from Namibia, sits up there. He's in second place. He's going to work his way around and try and collect the leaders. He's a very quick and very avid little carter. 
Owen Smith's dropped down two again. Now he's got a lot of work to do. Another two down. Oh, it's very competitive there. So Smith goes down all the way to 11th position. They are hammering them from all corners of the globe here. But at the front still, it's uh, Shal Fisser and Mohamed Wally are slugging it out. Best lap so far, Shal Fisser, 40.767. So they are absolutely flying around the circuit. And there you see Fisser protecting his line against Wally. They had, two of them had an accident there in that precise corner. We call Golf Club. They work about past Rotax Ben. Fisser still leading out. Luca Burley in third position, ahead of Tate Bishop. And uh, John Wilson with Divian Naidu, Roshan Goodman. And then Mauro Deleuze, Ethan Deke and Mikhail Besaido, Gonzalo Corza, Stuart Jude. Oh, and where is uh, Smith? Has he got a problem? We've lost him. Josh Smith's picked up an issue. So he's picked up an issue. He must have made a mistake somewhere. He's still on circuit, but he's totally off. So he's come back. Fisser down into golf club. Ahead there of uh, Muhammad Wally. Fisser with that distinctive look up into the sky as he comes around the corner. Chasing on. Wally sits there right with him. And uh, we have got uh, six laps to go in this one. Fisser likes to command from the front as they work their way down towards the 180s. Fisser, Wally, Burley, Bishop and Wilson with Divian Naidu there in P6. Sean Goodman in 7th. And uh, Mauro Deleuze there in 8th. So they work their way now out of the second 180. Down road deck straight they go. Fisser gets his head down now. Wally follows suit. And a young uh, Luca Burley sits there in P3. Ahead there of Tate Bishop. Fisser comes out of uh, road tax there. Followed there by Mohamed Wally. Little Luca Burley getting closer. Can Luca Burley create an upset? He's a very quick carter. And he knows this track very well. This is his home circuit. And uh, oh, Luca Burley under the South African banner. We do know that he does come from the Libyan side. And uh, he's giving it absolutely 10 10 now. Right up there on the back of uh, Mohamed Wally. Fissa leads out. Wally, Burley. They're in picture now as they work their way up the straight. Not too far behind them, Tate Bishop. And behind Tate Bishop, John o. Wilson. Oh, it's crackerjack stuff. Down into golf club they go. Hang the left past the Rotax pin. Make their way up towards the uh, Pedestas is where the commentary tower is. And still Fisser leads out. Commanding from the front. When he crosses the line, we'll have four laps left. Four laps to go in this one. Down into turn number one they go. Fisser and Wally. And Luca Verli is right there with him. Luca Verli is having a look. So too is Wally. But uh, Fisser is a crafty... Uh, driver he'll make sure all his lines are well covered he knows it's the closing stage look at Hurley right up on the back there of uh, Wally is he gonna have a look up on the inside no he's there but he's right on the back of them Bishop and Wilson and Wilson's ahead of Bishop Wilson's ahead of Bishop Bishop down to five John Wilson gets ahead of him and uh, he goes now past Rotex Ben yeah they come past the pit S's John Wilson ahead of Tate Bishop Tate won't appreciate that he'll want to come back at him and it's all here for line honours at the moment as they work their way out the 180s with three laps to go. Still Fisser leads out into the 180s. Wally sits right there on his back end as they work their way through the second 180. And Fisser attacking the circuit as he works his way through. Hangs it right, works his way down the road deck straight towards the boss sweep. Here they go, line has turned stuff. Really not close enough to mount a challenge, nor is uh, Wally. Fisser there into golf club. And a little bit of deja vu there from yesterday afternoon with the two of them had a major calamity. But this time they worked their way past the uh, pit bend up over the line. And now they're going to start their, penul their penultimate lap into turn one. The three of them are nose to tail. This one is going to go into the last lap. We're going to have a war pretty shortly, folks. Hang on to the edge of your seats. This is where it's going to happen now. Now we're going into the dying moments of heat number two. Anything's going to happen. These senior Max guys are actually fly. Now you can see they put the hammer down. Fisser puts the hammer down as he works his way down the road next straight. Well, he's going to try and come in. John Wilson up behind Luca Burley. Well, well, well. Burley's a meeting a sandwich here between Wally and Wilson. What's going to happen? Out past road next bend they go. They're about to start their last lap. Last lap borders out there now for uh, Charles Fisser. Fisser comes up towards the line. It's last lap time. Senior Max. Here we go. Heat number two into turn number one holds. And work their way around up towards to the King, down towards the 180s. 
Fisser holds on. Wally sits there. And Luca Worley holding his line, not allowing Wilson any space. They work their way through the second 180. Bishop has lost touch with the front four as they come out the 180s down road X straight they go. And Fisser gets his head down and blasts his way down towards uh, Boss Corner. He's going to take line on his here. Luca Verli is holding on to third, protecting his line. Mohamed Wally is jammed up there in second place. They work their way past Rotax. It's flag time. The checkered flag is beckoning. And Charles Michael Fisser is going to take heat number two ahead of Mohamed Wally, followed by Luca Verli, Jono Wilson, and uh, then it's Tate Bishop. Divian Naidu, Roshan Goodman, Mikhail Basayla, Ethan Deacon, Mauro Deleuze, Ken Schwartz, uh, and Zalo Koza, and uh, Kian Spies, followed there by Travis Minge, Jude Stewart, Cole Houston, uh, Ethan Wurstunder, Nielsen Marks, uh, Brandon van der Walt, Joshua Spitt up to 20, Kubis Reinecke, and uh, Kamo Novella, was followed there by Storm Lanfio, you expect to be up a lot higher. Kanyan Gwenya and uh, Kian uh, Fussell works his way over the line there as well as Oliver Entenhaus. What a crackerjack. There you see on screen, folks, the uh, result there. Two hundredths of a second ahead there of Mohamed Wally, Shaw Michael Fisser, followed by Luca Worley, John O'B Wilson, Tate Bishop, Divian Naidu. And there's the rest of the field. Absolutely blindingly quick racing. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. It'll change as the day goes on. Nothing is going to stop. Not too long, next race to come soon. Next up, race number two, the mic <coughs> Micromax, and uh, on the front row there, we got Matthew Shuttleworth and Liam Ward, and second row, Jaden van der Maeve and Luke Toy, Luan de Vette, and Ruan Victor on the third row, fourth row, Adrian Stein, and there with him is uh, Slater Smith, we've got Jake Stein, Liam Takiso, Zach Bossoff, Alessio Brits, Ronald Fenter, Lawashu Mat Matabula, and uh, Mia Manis, young lady out there, in the, in the second heat there of Micromax. So, uh, see the charges down in pit lane. Young Liam Water there with mommy looking on there. And I'm sure the absolute uh, heart in the throat stuff there at the moment as uh, they're about to get this race underway. You see a slight breeze blowing around. And uh, all the onlookers there on top of the uh, main grandstand. It pulls up as the day goes on. Right, so the uh, joys of wearing spectacles, you've got to keep them clean during the day. And you have a nice view there. Look at all the charges there in the pits. Engines revving smoke about. 
already the, the main pit marshal asks if everyone is ready there the gate opens down they're about to take to the circuit micromax heat number two let the games begin as they go up over young Liam Wharton leads out all the charges now as they take to the circuit for their first warm-up they get a sighting lap they'll warm up and then they form up down at the bottom end of the circuit there on the uh, southern side with your great uh, shot of Table Mountain to your right and that little building you saw in line with Table Mountain is where yours truly is sitting and commentating on this uh, wonderful historic event here at uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Round one of the Rodex Mac Challenge uh, Trophy in South Africa incorporating the African Open. And the winners of the African Open get uh, tickets to go to the Rotex Max Grand Finals in Italy later this year. So they'll start forming up now as they come out of Golf Club under full caution double yellows. There you see the main marshal waving the double yellows, full caution yellow, as they will line up and uh, get into the tram lines, wait for the lights to go off and uh, go racing. Right, here we go. Heat number two about to get underway as they go through the pit bend. They're going to split those tram lines. The man that's on pole position, the young Liam Wharton. They make their way up towards the lights go and away they go down towards holes. Turn number one. Into turn number one they go and Wharton holds the lead. Makes way through the king down towards the 180s. Wharton there, it looks like it's Luke de Toy who could be in second now as they work their way around the first the 180. They hang a nice left hand are coming through. Wharton still holding up. Wharton's got to get the hammer down. He's got to try and get away from them and get cracking. As you look over his shoulder, gets his head down and makes his way towards boss sweep. There you see them now. They're all trying to try and fan out and make up positions as they go down into golf club. Golf club they go. Linear stuff as they work their way around. Pass Rotex. Then make their way past towards the uh, pit S complex. Through the pit S as they go. It's Wharton leading out up towards the line he goes he's going to cross the line Wharton leads out Luke the Toy Matthew Shuttleworth Ruan Victor Michael Mahoney and uh, Adrian Stein are all in there now as they work their way through into the 180s they go still Wharton leading out can he hold on there he's got the uh, Toy right up his tailpipe as he works out to that second way to hang a right hand and work their way down that uh, Rotax straight get the heads down as they go towards uh, golf club into golf club they go working their way through golf club they're going to exit golf club now and work their way through up towards uh, the pit complex and the toy's gone to the lead out of golf club look the toy takes the lead there over liam wharton and liam wharton has been hounded for about four cart stars they work their way down towards holes and wharton holds on to second the toys in front look the toy takes the lead it's an absolute monstrous battle out there now as they work their way into the 180 complex. And it looks like Wharton's gone back to the front. Liam Wharton's taken the lead once again going into the 180s. Wharton holds on. He might even go defensive early in the race to hold on. No, he attacks the circuit. He's got his hammer down. Hammer down. Now they're fanning out. Wharton holds on there as he goes into the 180s. Down into golf club. Sorry, the 180s golf club. Works about a golf club boss, Rotex. Wharton still leading out the toys right there with him. Shuttleworth, Mahoney's in there as well. Ruan Victor and Arjen Stein all in it to win it. Up over the line they go. Still Wharton leading out. No changes. Line of stern stuff. Everyone chomping at the bit. Down into the 180s. There's Mahoney in the green card. He wants to work his way through. And the toys coming under attack from Shuttleworth. Still Wharton leads out. Can Liam Wharton hold on? We've got nine laps left in this one. Quickest lap there, Jaden van Amava. And he's down in P8. Is he going to try and work his way up? Mahoney has a look up on the inside. And Mahoney goes to three. Michael and Mahoney into three. Still Wharton leading up the toy. But Michael and Mahoney has worked his way up into third position. And I think he's on a charge. Michael Mahoney's on a charge. They work their way down to uh, holes turn number one and Liam Wharton holding on to that lead a slim lead at that but nonetheless charging hard in the front trying to make sure that he keeps all his lines covered into the 180 complex the toy now being uh, hassled there by Michael O'Mahony and uh, Shuttleworth sitting there in P4 he'll want to come back the toy covers his line by covering his line he's losing touch with Wharton and Wharton's pulling away 
Mahoney looks up on the inside and Mahoney dives into two. Michael O'Mahoney goes up to second now and sits up behind Liam Wharton. Now, Wharton's going to have a challenge in his hands because Michael O'Mahoney is absolutely no slouch and he's going to be coming for Wharton. Well, we've still got another seven laps to go and anything can happen in this race. And Liam Wharton is giving a 10 10 but he knows there's a very quick Michael O'Mahoney coming for him. And he's got a lot of work to do as they dive into the 180 complex. Right, left and sweep. Round the 180s they go. Wharton cracking on the pace now as he knows. Oh, there's a bit of a challenge there behind them. That looked like Stain trying to put his nose in there. Wharton having a look there. Where's Mahoney? Trying to stay in front. As they work their way through the uh, golf club section there past Rotex. And it's getting very close. Very close. Michael Mahoney's there. Looked at toys there. And Liam Wharton still leading out. Wharton has got his foot flat down in the corner. And Mahoney's closing. Mahoney's closing. He's right on the back of Wharton as they go through turn number one. Through the kink. Up towards the 180s. Oh, this is getting too close for comfort. We've still got six laps to go. Wharton leading out. Mahoney's there with him. Wharton, a well-prepared kit under him there now as he works his way on the road tax straight down towards Boss Sweep. Looks over his shoulder. Mahoney says, don't look, I'll take a grab. And Mahoney takes the lead. Why? Look. Liam Wharton, you're making work for yourself, lad, as they work their way through. And now they go through, look to toys in there as well. The front three have broken back from four, five, and six a little bit as they make their way through the uh, pit S's. Now Wharton's got work to do as he comes back at Mahoney. Mahoney's going to keep his lines covered. They dive into turn number one, Holes Corner. And now work their way through the King down towards the 180 complex. Down they go. Wharton sitting on the back of Mahoney. Can he uh, pull a rabbit out there as Michael Mahoney's uh, charged his way to the front? Mahoney in that green outfit there as he works his way down the right hand, down the road deck straight to go towards Boss Sweep. The front three have broken away there from fourth place man Shuttleworth with Ruan Victor and Alan Stain sitting up behind him. Into golf club they go. Very close, nose to tail stuff here from the front three. It's anyone's game. When they cross the line, they've got four laps to go. Past the pit bend they go and make their way up over the line towards turn number one. And Wharton's having a look. Wharton's having a look, but uh, Michael O'Mahoney, a crafty uh, young lad, uh, covers his line here, doesn't afford uh, Liam Wharton any space, and uh, one wrong move from Wharton, and the toy is right there to pounce. So it's all happening out there. Up behind them, it's uh, going to be uh, Shuttleworth and uh, Stain who are at each other's throats, but Wharton is all over the back of Michael O'Mahoney like a cheap suit as they go into uh, golf club they work their way out of golf club down past the uh, Grotex uh, building yeah they come through the uh, pit bend and still Michael O'Mahoney he goes defensive Wharton on the outside Mahoney hangs defensive with three laps to go Mahoney's going to hang defensive he doesn't want him to go through now as they make their way into the 180s Wharton still having a fair look here and Mahoney going always defensive, not affording uh, Wharton any space. Can Wharton pull one of those Shoal Fisser moves around the outside as he goes down towards uh, Boss Sweep? Up on the inside towards Golf Club. Oh, Wharton gets very close, very close to the Golf Club. He's right there. They're about to start their penultimate lap as they come past the uh, pit pen. Wharton is right there with Mahoney. Mahoney goes defensive, Wharton down the outside, getting full drive down into holes. Mahoney will go defensive at every quarter now, not afford uh, Wharton any space. There you see him up on the inside, Wharton looks up on the inside, he takes a big grab and he goes to the lead. Wharton takes the lead from Mahoney and moves to the front, what a brilliant, he sold in the dummy, he bought it. Now they're going to go down towards Boss Sweep, Mahoney's going to come in, Wharton's going to go defensive and say what you can do, I can do better. Down into golf club there goes. Liam Wharton leads out. Liam Wharton, Michael Mahoney are at each other's throats and look the toy just looks on and thinks, ah, I wish I could just have a piece of it. Past the pit pen they go. Last lap, Ward's gonna come out. This is the final lap. You gotta do what you gotta do here to hold out. 
and Wharton will go full defensive. Mahoney goes to the front. Wharton comes back at him. Oh, this is brilliant stuff towards the end. And it's a three-way tie here. They've got it through a slow marker. And has Mahoney done enough or will Wharton have a last gasp effort? It looks like Mahoney just gets a little bit of a lead there out of the slow markers. And Mahoney might have done enough. He's pulled a gap there over Liam Wharton. Liam Wharton in second place. And, uh, well, he's too uh, much concerned with the slow marker and has let Mahoney get away. So Mahoney has got it and Mahoney's going to take checkers. A great tussle, but Mahoney gets the upper hand. Wharton will come in second. Mahoney punches the sky. Liam Wharton second. Adrian Stein third. Luke de Toy, then Shuttleworth. Behind us, Shuttleworth is Jada van Amerva, then Slater Smith. Then it's Zach Bossov, Jake Stein. Then it's uh, Lawashio Matabula. Then it's Alicia Britz, Liam uh, Takiso, Ruan Victor, Ronald Fenter, and Mia Manus. Right behind them there, it's uh, Luan de Vett who brings up the rear. Well, what an exciting Micromax race. And uh, I'm sure lessons learned from that one there. You see the final result on screen for you. Michael Amoni, half a second ahead of Liam Wharton, Adrian Stein, Luke Tutoy, Matthew Shuttleworth, Jaden van der and Slater Smith, Zach Fossil, Jack Stein, and Lawasha Matabula make up the top 10. Right, so the next uh, pack of cards take to the circuit. This will probably be Junior Max out there. We have got uh, Georgia Lennitz, a lady on pole position alongside very quick Cape Tonian Reese Quirzen. Guiana Pascal, another lady there with Jack Moore. Rafael uh, De Silva, Sebastiano Human, uh, William Marshall, Luke Hill, Keegan Beaumont, Jordan Wadley, Keegan Martin, Spice uh, Malula. Nicholas Lennox, Christian Vahil, Emma Dowling, Caleb Mosh, Josh Moore, James Nash, Caleb Wurndal, Anwil April, Jesse Swat, and Amani Kenyao. Another crackerjack race, ladies and gentlemen. To the viewers at home, we sincerely hope we're enjoying this broadcast. Proudly brought to you by DT Films from KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. And the lads doing a sterling job here. Right, so they're lined up, they're coming out of Rotax Bend. And uh, working their way through, Reese Quirzen and Georgia Lennitz, a lady on the front row. This has to be a very historical moment. Two ladies on the, almost on the front row there. And, uh, well, young Georgia Lennitz, her dad, Alex Lennitz, a very uh, astute motorcyclist in his day. And he'll be looking on proudly as his daughter sits on the front row. Right, they're going to break the tram lines. We wait for the lights. Lights off and we go racing down towards turn number one holes. And who's got the whole shot? That's Reese Quirzen. Reese Quirzen goes to the front now as he works his way down towards the 180s. Is young Georgia up there behind him? I think she is. As they work their way through, Reese Quirzen. Well, he uh, came through a couple of carters down. He hit one yesterday to take the lead. And when he goes to the front, trust me, he's going to get the hammer down. Off he goes. Georgia sits there with him as they go down into boss sweep. The young lady is a very avid cart and very quick and lots of just equal positions as they dive there into golf club. Leader makes his way now past uh, the pit S's up towards to start to finish his first lap with 14 more to go. Over they go, Georgia Lennitz, Josh Moore and up behind him Jack Moore, Rafael De Silva, Jordan Wadley, Sebastiano Himan. William Marshall, Gianna Pascal has been relegated down to 8th after be starting on the 2nd row. Just shows the amount of challenge that's in there. But at the moment, Reese Quirzen leads out. But keep an eye on Georgia Lennitz. The lady right up behind Reese Quirzen. She's getting good drive. She gives him a little bit of tap from behind. 
don't want to bend that nose. You're going to get a nose cone penalty. That's one of the technicalities in hard racing. Have a look at the rubbing is racing gang down here into uh, golf club. Brilliant stuff here from the uh, centre pack as they work their way through. Up over the line they go. Still it's Quirzen ahead of Lennitz. Young Georgia Lennitz right on the back of Rees Quirzen. Oh, he won't want to go to... Uh, well, there's no school. It's school holidays. But you won't want on Monday to say, well, I got taken by a lady. So Rees Quirzen hangs on to the front. Now the cart's starting to bunch up on the lead now as they're coming to the second 180. And Georgia has a look at Quirzen. But he muscles his way back to first and says to are you thinking properly? And she says, yes, I am. It's a race. Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I can't beat you. And young Reese has got about nine cards racked and stacked behind him. He's got a mighty job to do as they work their way through. They're about to cross the line. And they work their way up over the line. Quirzen leads out on Lennitz. Then it's Moore. Then it's uh, De Silva. Jordan Wadley, William Marshall. William Marshall will want to be a lot higher up. He was in the lead earlier yesterday. So William Marshall will want to work his way through. But at the moment, Reese Quirzen commanding from the front there with Georgia Lennitz in second place. She'll want to keep her place protected. And young Josh Moore in third. Also very quick. William Marshall now up in about P6. And he's starting to think of making a move. There you will see him. He's got all those little dots on his helmet as they come out with Reese Quirzen leading the pack. Quirzen needs a pack there with Georgia Lennitz up behind him. And they cross the line. When they cross the line, they will have 11 laps. And Lennitz has a look up on the inside. Quirzen muscles his way. They are literally bumming and barging. A little bit of a stock or racing coming out of them as they go into the 180s. But this is the nature of the competition. You're not willing to relinquish a position here at any cost. As they work their way through. William Marshall is making his way up. He's in fifth now. He's gained one over Jordan Wadley. So he's sitting up there now behind Rafael De Silva. Oh, it's close stuff. It's brilliant stuff. And it looks like George has gone down one. It looks like Jack Moore has gone up to second. Jack Moore in second. Still with uh, Reese Quirzen holding on to the lead. Quirzen holds on to the lead. Now they've got 10 laps still. Lots of action to be held in this uh, race as they work their way down into the 180 complex. Quirzen with Moore. And Lennitz has gone back another position. It looks like De Silva's gone through. So uh, Rafael De Silva has moved up one as well. Out they come. Still, it's Reese Quirzen. But he's got Jack Moore all over the back. And Moore looks up on the inside. But Quirzen cuts his nose off and says, Stay honest, lad. Stay behind me. Pass road tax they go. Still, it's an absolute heated battle out there, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take your eyes off the screen because it can change in the blink of an eye as they work their way down towards holes. There's a little bit of jostling wall positions there as they're going to turn number one into the 180 complex. It looks like William Marshall is in third. Marshall's in third. Now here is a real challenge coming up. Has Marshall moved up into second? William Marshall is an absolute flyer. It's William Marshall in second and he's going in search now for Reese Quirzen. And if it is ever going to be a battle, it's going to come out of that quarter. Because Marshall is sort of on even kill with Reese Quirzen. So uh, they work their way through. Jack Moore, 9 third. He'll want to come back at Marshall, but Marshall has been charging hard. He's come up from about 18 to second. They cross the line. They've got nine laps left. Still nine almighty laps as they work their way out of the 180s. I mean, the turn one towards the 180s action so quick and uh, furious that you get totally tongue-tied and twisted here but nonetheless Quirzen leading out over Marshall Quirzen works his way down the back straight and Quirzen's put his hand up he's got a problem oh sorry red flag red flag red flag we have an incident around the circuit red flag incident they'll make their way back to the start finish line as the race has stopped possibly a cart that went off somewhere we're not picking it up but a full red oh a massive accident there and uh, trying to pick up who that is but that lad not looking very happy well if you hit tires that hard that you crumble the tire wall over it's got to be sore Kanya. Kanya. Kanya? so uh, a bit unfortunate out there on uh, turn number one and uh, the young lad not feeling very happy, caught getting taken out the way. 
and uh, well we might just need a little bit of medical help there all the cards stop on the line and young William Marshall doing a sterling job oh that card badly bent hit the tire wall hard to cause that amount of damage you've got to hit it hard and with your arm on the steering wheel there's a good chance that you can damage your wrist and the medics approach the uh, young charge there and go check him out so Quirzen and Marshall on the front and now they're going to restart the race with those two on the front it's going to be an absolute titanic battle there the medics taking the young driver off to go and check him out let's hope he's okay the team members come out to pick up the cart take it back to the pit lane a little bit damaged now they've got to go and rework it all the young guns out of their carts having a quick uh, nit net and all the carts are off the cart looking a little bit worse for where it's going to need a bit of work as uh, the uh, team members take the cart back there you see all the uh, mechanics and team managers in pit lane watching their charges well with seven laps done we should have seven laps completed we should have eight right so we've got six laps remaining in this race it's going to be six grueling epic laps there's the officials down on the start line talking to the young chargers and say them guys we're going to go racing soon anything between the ages of about 11 and 14 years old and a nice view there of the uh, pits and the uh, start line there you see to your right and all the sponsors right back to xps mojo taking off the neck braces they're waiting now first to fix up and clean the track before they go racing again absolute professionals as young as they are lovely to see them all down on the line if ever you are in the world watching the uh, live stream welcome to Kilani International Raceway here in Cape Town South Africa for the uh, South African Rotex Max uh, Challenge uh, round number one of the national championships and it incorporates the Africa Open that's the last race today, heat number four, which will be the Africa Open. And uh, the winners of that in the various respective categories will win themselves a, uh, or should I say, will earn themselves a ticket to the Rotax Max Grand Challenge Finals in Italy later this year. Well, the sun peeking out, so a little bit of uh, heat coming through. You see a, a view of the main circuit on the outside of the karting circuit. Cars going by. It's a street car track day on the go. With my main commentary box right on the top of that building. There you see a little hut with a glass. As the senior official talks to the uh, carters and gives them a little bit of instructions. What to do and what not to do. So... Uh, Lovely stuff, as you see him having a look there. And there's our little commentary tower, that's where we're doing our production from. The CRG Rotex Racing Tower is sitting up there. That little roof is going to make us a little bit warm during the day, so we will be uh, hydrating for most of the day. Turn number one there with Table Mountain to the right, the iconic Table Mountain. One of the wonders of the world, as they say. Popular all over the world with tourists coming to South Africa. You have the Christmas season, over 300,000 tourists in Cape Town. All the carts racked and stacked. The uh, clock of the course giving them a little bit of a rundown. And they'll soon all quickly climb into their carts. And another six laps of battle is about to ensue. Uh, 
Chet there with the CRCs. Timekeeper brings down the grid to the CRCs. They can check it. Everyone's in their correct positions. All the drivers looking on precariously as they say, well, where at do I actually stand? Well, Reese Quizen was a uh, state of mind when he saw the red flag. He put his hand up immediately and slowed the whole bunch up. So they should be in their respective grid positions, but that now will be checked to make sure that everyone's in accordance with where they are placed. A couple of the uh, crowds having a look there. Top of their respective uh, pit garages. Nice uh, balcony built for them so that they can watch the racing from an elevated position. Oh, it's going to break away for a bit of an advert. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. Right under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. the grand finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. 
rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain. The reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, Every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this.
Right, so the uh, drivers take back to the circuit after a short break there. We had a uh, going off the circuit with an injury. Glad to let you know that the respective driver is okay. As they do a quick warm-up lap and they will form up as they come out of Rotax Bend. We'll have to slow it right down. Looks like they're going to uh, start in single file formation. Right, off they go. Cross the line and lights off and away they go. Down into holes and uh, Reese Quirzen has got uh, William Marshall there with him. And they work their way into the 180 complex. And already jostling for positions there as they work their way down into the 180s. Quirzen leads out. He's got a bit of a cap and if you give him that cap he's going to be gone. Quirzen on the hammer works his way down towards boss sweep. And up behind him, it's Moore and Marshall in there. Well, they're working their way around. And uh, Georgia Lennitz will be in there as well. Georgia Lennitz there in third position as they cross the line. Over the line they go. Burson, Moore, Lennitz, Yill, Pascal, Dowling. And uh, all work their way now into the 180s. And look at Quirzen. He's got a great lead there now. He leads out. Josh Moore is there in second place. He's got a whole array of carters up behind him now as they work their way out the 180s. Down they go down the uh, Rotax straight. Lennart's up to second place. Georgia Lennart's up, up to second. She'll be happy with that one. Great contest there. Oh, running wide and a carter off there. He'll have to work his way back, but we won't be happy with that one. As they work their way past the uh, pit bend, up over the line goes Reese Curzon. He's got a 1.2 second and there, oh, just out of view there. And, uh, well, that Carter managing to bring it back, but getting uh, spun out there. Curzon still in the lead into the 180 complex. Followed there by Georgia Lennox, Joshua Moore, Luke Hill, Guiana Pascal. And uh, it's Nicholas Lennox who's up there. Nicholas will be... Uh, Chomping at the bit as you want to work his way. William Marshall up on the inside there. Marshall goes up a position. We've still got about seven laps to go. Round they go. And uh, Quirzen is putting the hammer down. He wants to pull away. But up behind him, it's an absolute titanic struggle as they cross the line. And now it is uh, Josh Moore, Luke Hill and Georgia Lennitz down to four. Gianna Pascal, Nicholas Lennox. Christian Verhill, Amani Kenyal, Jesse Swart and Caleb Woodendahl up into 10th. Oh, and there's a bit of a coming together in the 180s, but the drivers all come back onto the circuit. Wow, 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 it is absolute war out there. In the meantime, Curzon's checking out. Marshall up to third place. He fights off Georgia Lennart's up on the inside. There you see him picture. Marshall goes up. Lennox won't be happy with that one. She'll want to come straight back at him. The young lady is an absolute charger. But your leader is down the road. And in second place, it's Luke Hill, followed by Georgia Lennox. And Guiana Pascal's up to fourth with Jack Moore. And Nicholas Lennox up in sixth. Then Amani Kenya, Caleb Woodendahl up to eighth. Ka little young Caleb is on the move. Rhys Quirzen has got an absolute blinding start and has got a lovely lead with he does not worried about all the goings on behind him. Luke Hill in second place. William Marshall up to third. And young Keegan Beaumont sits up there now behind. Uh, is that Keegan Beaumont or not? No, it could be Nicholas Lennox. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, they work their way up over the line. Over the line they go. Luke Hill, Guiana Pascal, Georgia Lennox, Jack Moore, Nicholas Lennox up to six, Amani Kenya, Caleb Woodendahl in eighth, William Marshall and uh, Jesse Swart. Wow, chopping and changing and slicing and dicing, but in the meantime, very quick, Reese Curzon out front, William Marshall chasing up the back end there of Luke Hill, and we have got uh, three and a half laps to go. Curzon comes past Rotax, works his way past the pit bend there. And uh, up over the line he goes. Luke Hill has got William Marshall 
hounding him down towards uh, turn number one. And Marshall right on the back of Hill. Guiana Pascal's up in uh, three there. So there goes Quirzen down the back straight, followed there by uh, Luke Hill and William Marshall and Guiana Pascal. Then it's going to be Nicholas Lennox who's on the fly, local lad from Cape Town. But uh, making Cape Town proud at the moment, there's your leader in screen, Rhys Quirzen, makes his way up the straight, crosses the line. And we have got two laps to go, penultimate lap. Having a look up on the inside at turn number one there was uh, Pascal. Georgia Lennox is also in there. The ladies are fighting there at the moment. Rhys Quirzen once again down the straight. And uh, William Marshall sits in second. But I don't think Marshall's uh, transponder is kicking in. He's in second place. There's Quirzen. There's Marshall. Then it's uh, Luke Hill. Then it is... Uh, Keanu Pascal and it looks like Nicholas Lennox up behind her. Over the line they go, Pascal goes defensive, Lennox around the outside, looks to do a switch back on her as he comes out of turn number one. And on screen still, there they're entering the 180s. There's Lennox on the back of Pascal, into that second 180. There's Marshall, there's Yill, there's Lennox, there's oh, Pascal and then uh, Lennox. Well, 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 all happening out there. So they work their way now. The leader crosses the line. Check it flag. Reese Quirzen takes seat number two. Followed there by William Marshall. Then Anna Pascal. Georgia Lennox. Jack Moore. Well, well, well. It's all out there. What a great race there race junior max race number two and Reese Quirzen showing his prize in his home track using it to his full advantage not a young lad that shows a lot of emotion but already stamping his authority down on this race so brilliant stuff there at the junior max is proud to let you know that that uh, young lad who got injured earlier is a-ok -okay and ready to race Quirzen, Yil, Pascal, Lennox, Moore, Marshall Beaumont, Urendal, Martin, Kinyao, Verhill and Malula. Right, so next up the uh, Minimax, take to the circuit, on the front there we've got Ariane Singh and Michael Dang, second row Rafael D'Souza, Chipang Sishinwana, and on the third row Darrell Goodman and Max Bossoff, local lad. They take to the circuit for their uh, sighting lap and warm up lap. There you see on screen the grid. Everyone will be warming up their carts. The Minimax just below Junior Max, they're also exceptionally quick, some great drivers out there, a couple of seasoned veterans as young as they are, they're warming up, they'll be under full caution yellow, and they'll start forming up into golf club. Some of the back markers have to hurry it up out of golf club, there we go, slowed right down, right down, look at that discipline bopping and weaving, getting heat into those tires. You want maximum grip going down into one so that you can go through there at full tilt. They work their way past the commentary tower into the pit bend. They'll work their way towards the tram lines. We're going to wait for the lights to go off. 
the carts enter tram line vicinity. Slowly does it. And watch for the lights. Lights off and we go racing for heat number two of the Minimax. They dive down there into uh, turn number one. Work their way up through the kink up towards the 180s. And already someone's got an electric start there. We'll try and pick up who it is now as they enter the second of the 180s. That could be Singh that got a good start. Try and pick up the numbers. They work their way down there. It's uh, the 571. It's uh, Aryan Singh that leads out. So Singh's in the lead. He's in that Lumo green car. Singh leads out. Makes his way past the uh, pit bend. A whole array of carders all line as stern as they work their way around. Singh leads out. He's got about a half a second gap over the second place man. And uh, that is uh, Rafael de Souza, Dural Goodman, who had a good performance yesterday, sits in third. Chipang Sessinwan is in there, Max Bossoff, Ronaldo Kuhn, Michael Dangs down in seventh, Ruan Lewis, Kian Reddy, and Brody Dowling. They're all in the 180s, they exit the 180s now, make their way down the Rotax Strait. Still Singh leads out with uh, de Souza in uh, second place. Rafael de Souza, right there with him, it's uh, Dural Goodman. They come out of uh, Rotax Ben. Singh getting a bit of a lead there. He's got a bit of uh, air between himself and second place man, Rafael de Souza. Down they go up over the line. They cross the line. They've got uh, 10 laps to go. It's a 12 lap race here in Minimax. Everyone right up uh, behind each other. The line is doing stuff now as they work their way into the 180 complex. There's Singh there in the lead. No one uh, taking charge. A little bit of a dive up on the inside there by somebody who works his way through there up two places. We'll try and pick up who that is for you now as they exit the 180s and uh, make their way down the Rotex straight. Looks like Goodman is closing up behind Singh. Singh had a bit of a gap, but it's now getting closed down. There they enter Golf Club. Right hand 180 plus sweep as it cools back up on itself. Then you ought to hang a left. Then a right hand sweep. Make your way towards the Pit S complex. Through the S's they go and back up over the line with nine laps remaining. Still Singh in the lead. Goodman second, D'Souza third. Darrell Goodman's gone up one. He's up into second. I said Darrell Goodman had a fantastic race yesterday. He led for a couple of times. So uh, keep an eye there. He's going to try and close down on Aryan Singh. Goodman closing that gap up and brings with him a whole array of carters all in line there. Behind him, it's uh, Rafael D'Souza, Ch Chapang Session Warner, Max Boss of Ronaldo Kuhn, and Michael Danks and Ruan Lewis. Down into Golf Club they go. No dynamics in Golf Club as they work their way through past Rotex. Rotex, hang a right-hander, then uh, left and right in the pit S. And then towards the start-finish line, they cross the line, they've got eight laps left. It looks like Goodman's gone to the front. Where is he not? Is Singh still in? Is Singh still in the front? Arian Singh still leads out. Arian Singh still leading in the front there. Goodman in second. Very close. There's about eight carts in it, in the front there, anyone's game. So it's Singh, Goodman, uh, D'Souza, Shisinwana, Bossoff, Danks, Kun and Lewis. All in it to win it now as they exit uh, Golf Club, yeah, past Rotax and look how close. There's one, two, three, four, five, six carts in it, down towards Danks. Anybody's game, they cross the line, they're left, seven laps to go. It's starting to heat up. It won't be too long and you'll see, start seeing cards fan out as they come up towards the 180 complex. Still seeing leans out. Goodman's in second. He'll want to pound soon. Line of stern stuff. The nose cones touching the tail bumpers as they work their way around. Hang that right down the Rotex sweep and Goodman's on the back of Singh. Goodman's on the back of Singh. Is he going to make a move? No, he sits behind Singh. A bit of... Uh, Drafting, going down there into Golf Club. Still Singh and Goodman lead out. Third place there, Rafael de Souza. Chapang Shisindwana sits there in with Max Bossoff and Michael Danks. Now they start fanning out, going down into holes. Is there a maneuver coming in? Yep, it looks like someone's gone up a place there. That could be Max Bossoff that might have made a move. Still Singh leads out there with Goodman in second. There's a take there.
from fourth to third. I think Chipang Shisenwana went up one. Shisenwana goes up to third. Chipang Shisenwana from Gazoo Racing goes up to third. He had a great day yesterday afternoon. And he's going to start fighting out with Tyrell Goodman once again. Work their way out of golf club. Hang a left hand pass. Rotex through the right hand king down towards the pit S. Come through the pit S's. Make their way up over the line. Still Aryan Singh leading out Durrell Goodman there in second place. Third place. Chipang Shisenwana. Looks like we've got a maneuver there up to fourth. That could be Max Bossov that's gone up to fourth place. So Bossov is also on a move. Bossov goes up to four. He wants to join the party. He wants to make sure he can get racing. He's got to go and collect that front three, though. A little bit of a tall order, but he's going to give it his full. Still Singh. Third place, Shisson Wana from Gazoo Racing there. And then Max Bossoff goes in there. And uh, it looks like he's got Michael Danks up behind him. So Michael Danks is also on the move. We still got uh, four laps to go after this one. Four laps left in it now as they cross the line. Still at Singer Goodman. Chisson Wan is sitting there. Oh, and Dural had a look at Sing. Well, they're starting to peak now. They're starting to show their hand. Chisson Wan right up behind Goodman. Sing still holding on to first. Bossoff is getting a bit closer and bringing with him Michael Danks. Two local lads. Sitting four and five respectively as they exit the 180s down the back straight. Chisson Wan has a look there at uh, Goodman. And Danks has a look at Shisenwana. Or at uh, Bossov, sorry. They work their way through the uh, Rotax kink. And make their way down towards the S's. When they cross the line, they will have three laps to go. Still Singh leads out with Goodman, Shisenwana, Bossov and Danks. Then this is... Oh, and someone's off. It's the 547 cart. And that's Durrell Goodman. Durrell Goodman's gone off the circuit and he's got to come back and he's lost a lot of positions. Well, things are changing up. Still Singh, but here comes uh, Justin Warner and then it's Bossoff and uh, Danks. Oh, the dynamics change at the flick of a switch. Can Justin Warner get up behind Singh with uh, two laps left? They're going to start their penultimate lap. Penultimate lap, there's Singh, there goes Shisenwana, and then it's uh, Bossoff and Danks, and then uh, D'Souza. Brilliant stuff now, have a look, see if anything happens. And there's a move, there's a move. Oh, it's Bossoff back on Danks, have a look at that. And Danks is getting mugged from all quarters as D'Souza goes through. Oh my word. And look at Shisenwana chasing the back there of Singh. He wants in. It's going to go down to the wire, folks, as they enter golf club. They reel around golf club. Hang a left hand here towards us. And Singh's leading. And Chabang and Wana is throwing the kitchen sink at this one. He is absolutely flying. Last lap board time. Last lap board comes out. They've got a slow marker. Will this come into play as they go down there in two holes? Turn number one. Work their way around holes. Up towards the 180. Shisen Wana is getting closer. He's got the bit between his teeth and he's chasing Singh there. You see him right up behind Singh. Into the 180s. Chipang Shishin Wana thinks he's got something in. He's got uh, one more corner to go. Where he can possibly make a move. He's got to get right up behind Singh and try and draft him. Game down. He's chasing hard. Singh goes defensive. Chipang Shishin Wana is there. And they've got a slow mark up in front. And this is going to hold him up. What is going to happen? They have to slow up. And Chipang Shishin Wana is right on the back of Aryan Singh. That back marker is holding them up quite badly as they come out. And Shisson Wana has a quick look at it. They're coming up towards the line. Singh takes it from Shisson Wana. It's in uh, Max Bossoff, Rafa de Souza, Michael Danks. Uh, behind him, uh, it's uh, Brody Darling, Ronaldo Kuhn, Ruan Lewis, uh, Ruvan Maritz, Kian Reddy, and Durrell Goodman up to 11th. Aiden Beaumont, uh, Mandume Kenyamo. Zach Hindley, Andre Betancourt there from uh, Mozambique, Zach McCauley, uh, and uh, Nandek <coughs> Kayama from Namibia, uh, Eduardo Campos from uh, Mozambique, Asha Nagura, Thunder Yisun Klapo, Andrew Retter, Ashan Reddy, and then it'll be uh, Michael Arder, 
Z and, and uh, Zaydan Hussein crosses the line. Well, tell you what, Mini Max was an absolute blinder. Lovely racing up front, very, very competitive. Right, so next up we have uh, race number two of the DD2s. 15 laps, some of the biggest names in the country. Sebastian Boyd, Bradley Lemonberg, Nicholas Vastanis, Jason Goodseer, Olorata Sukudu, Matthew Wadley, Ethan Steer, Karabo Malamela, Dusan Rajovic, uh, Jaden Jacobs, um, Zayn uh, Buten, Tian Ulof, Jordan Moodley and Nikita Tim Timi. TM. Right, so they're getting a bit of a warm up lap and they form up down the back straight, going down into Boss Corner, and it's going to be absolute 15 laps of war out there. First race was taken there by uh, Sebastian Boyd, followed by Jason Goodsee and Bradley Liebenberg. And uh, well, I don't know if we'll have much of the same. Goodsee a little bit further down the pack, he'll want to work his way through. He's from Gazoo Racing. The two barrel carts sit on the front row. Bradley Liebenberg and Sebastian Boyd. A very quick... Uh, Nicholas Vostanis sits there on the second row. Right, so they're about to split the tram lines. Lights off and we go racing down towards turn number one. And it looks like it could be Brad Liebenberg who gets the whole shot. And Vostanis might be there in second place now as they go into the 180s. Into the 180s they go. And they work their way around. Come through. No, it looks like it's Boyd. Boyd's in the lead. Sebastian Boyd, Nicholas Vastanis, Bradley Liebenberg, and Jason Gutzier having a look. But Liebenberg shuts the door in his face, keeps him brutally honest as they go into golf club. Work their way around golf club. Linus doing stuff now. Hang a left here past Rotex. And uh, make their way now through the uh, kiosk bin. Cross the line, 14 laps to go. Boyd still leaning out. Vastanis is right there on him. Nicholas Vastanis, one of the big guns out of the northern regions, now sits up behind Boyd. Then we've got uh, Bradley Limberg and Jason Gutsia. Up behind him, it's uh, Alorado Zakudu. And up is Zakudu, it's uh, Karabo Manamela. Still Boyd leading out. Vastanis sits there up behind him. New dynamics from race one, but still Boyd gets his head down, makes his way up towards uh, Boss Corner. Vastanis, right his tail. Gutsia looks up on the inside of Boyd. Boyd's holding him and keeping him honest. Whoa! Absolutely dynamic stuff coming out of these front uh, runners here as they work their way past the uh, kiosk, kiosk bin. Now they make their way up over the line. Once again, Boyd leads out now, trying to get away from Vastanis. He doesn't want Vastanis hassling him as they make their way down out of turn number one, up towards the 180s. They come up towards the 180s, and it looks like Kutsia has got past uh, Brad Liebenberg. Jason Gutsia moves up to P3. He's got that Daigler helmet on and still Boyd leads out over Vastanis and Gutsia is on a run. He's going to go look for Vastanis. Very quick in the corners, this Jason Gutsia. Very late on the brakes. You will see him close up on the back of Vastanis. Jason Gutsia, also a main circuit uh, competitor. So he knows what it's like to travel at pace. They work their way through the Kiosk King down towards uh, turn number one, Holzhoek. And still Sebastian Boyd leads out. He likes to lead from the front, but he's got a very quick Nicholas Vastanis up behind him who's going to come under threat pretty short from Jason Gutsia as they enter the 180 complex. They're all pretty much line astern. Now Gutsia getting a bit closer. Bradley Liebenberg sits there. Right up behind him is Olorata Zakudu, who's going to start giving him some food for thought. 
All the riders are good. It sits there up behind Bradley Liebenberg. There, Liebenberg enters the into golf club. Liebenberg sits there in uh, P4. Behind Jason Kutsia and Ola Rajan Sakuda has got a hole. He's got Karaba Malamela up behind him. He's got uh, Matthew Wadley, Ethan Steer, and uh, Dusan Radojevic. So they're out there. Uh, turn number one, make their way up towards the 180. He's got 11 laps left in this race. These races absolutely fly by. That's how quick they go around the circuit. Literally do it in about 40 seconds. One kilometer in 40 seconds. Absolutely blistering pace coming out of these carters. Still, Boyd leads out. Could see her closing up there on the back of uh, Vastanis. So they're all uh, having a good uh, look at each other there as they work their way now out to Rotax corner. Front runners work their way through. Could see her closing up on the back of Nicholas Vastanis. Jason could see is very quick and very late on the brakes going into the corners and that gives him right on the back there of Nicholas Vastanis. Jason could see her. Jason could see her. Checking out Nicholas Vastanis. We still got uh, 10 laps left in this one. Boyd still leaning out. Vastanis, the meat in the sang with Jason could see right up his back bumper. You could see could see when he goes down into the corner, will be very late on the brakes and closes up on the back of Vastanis. Bradley Nimberg still sits in a very lowly fourth position there, but uh, he'll try and consolidate and hold on to that one. As they come through the pit S, make their way down the main straight. Up over the line they go. Cross the line now. Nine laps left. Nine laps left in this one. Could see her all over the back there of Astana's like a cheap suit. And uh, not giving him space to breathe. Astana's closes up at the back there of Sebastian Boyd. He'll want to make a move to try and get out of harm's way. Bradley Liebenberg still part and party of this. He can pounce at any time. Have a look at that whole row of cards behind him. Five to be exact. As they work their way down the back straight towards Boss Sweep. And still Boyd leads out. Boyd still leading out there, Vastanis in second, Jason Kutsia in third. They work their way past Rotax Bend, hit that right hand and make their way towards the pit S's. To the pit S's, they go up over the line and they cross the line, they'll have eight laps left. Eight laps left to go. Still it's Boyd leading out into turn number one, they go. Vastanis followed by Kutsia, then uh, Liebenberg. Behind Liebenberg, it's Olorado Zakudu, Matthew Wadley, Karaba Malimele, Ethan Steer and uh, Dusan Radijevic. Brilliant stuff here coming out of Boyd as he controls the race from the front. He holds out there with uh, Nicholas Vastanis in second and Jason could see a third. Bradley Liebenberg, Ola Raja Zakuda, Matthew Wadley. They make their way down into Boss Sweep, into uh, Golf Club, work their way through Golf Club. And still Boyd holds on. Nicholas Vastanis, though, still thinks he's in with a shot. And who knows, he might be keeping the best to last as they make their way down towards turn number one. Boy doesn't go defensive at all. He attacks the circuit at all quarters here. Works his way out of one up towards the 180 complex. Into the 180s they go. Boyd controlling it, keeping his head together as he works his way around. I think the man with the biggest ideas here could be Jason Goodseer. But Bradley Liebenberg now starts to up the ante and is closing down on the back of Goodseer. Liebenberg is coming into his own once again now as he starts revving it. And uh, there's a big break. And Matthew Wadley has got past Olorod Sakuda. So Wadley is up to fifth. So there's people on the move here in the final closing stages. And uh, we've got six laps to go when they cross the line. Boyd crosses the line, pulls away from uh, Vastana slightly. And Kutsia is still monitoring Vastana ahead of him. Into the 180s to go. There's your leader, Sebastian Boyd, Nicholas Vastana, Jason Kutsia, Bradley Liebenberg. Into that second 180. Lovely shots coming out of the cameras here, right close by. They're going to hang a right hander, make their way down the Rotex straight and. Boyd gets his head down as he makes his way down towards Boss Corner. Kutsia, I feel, oh, and someone trying to make a move, but uh, caution is the better part of Ella. And uh, they cross the line. When they cross the line, we've got five laps left, and Boyd is still controlling from the front. Into turn one they go. Kutsia closes right up on the back there of Nicholas Vestan. It's Bradley Limberg's a little bit further back watching on. There's your leader on screen. Sebastian Boyd, he works his way around the second 180, followed there by Vastanis. He's going to hang a left and then a right to make his way down the Rotex straight. Liebenberg, then Matthew Wadley, Olorata, Zakudu, up behind him, Karaba Malimela, Ethan Steer, and Dusan Radijevic. Working their way through Golf Club. And still Kutsia tracking the back of Vastanis. Kutsia is still looking at the back of Vastanis. Yeah, I think he's going to wait till the last two laps before he gets closer. 
This man can pull a rabbit out of the hat, can this Jason Goodsier stupendously late on brakes. But I take nothing away from Nicholas Vestan. It's a great part in his own right. So Sebastian Boyd into the 180 complex, still leading out ahead of Astanas. But Sears right there with him. Bradley Liebenberg not too far back. They make a mistake. He's going to pounce on them. Boyd goes down towards Boss Sweep. Into Boss Sweep, he'll dive down into Golf Club. Lovely camera shots coming out of the cameraman there as they hit that uh, long winding right-hander, which turns back on itself. Then you've got to hang a left. Pull a bit of G-forces in that car. They wear body braces to protect their bodies against that. But you see Kutsia now on the back of Astanas. They cross the line. They've got three laps left. Now Kutsia has a look. Hey Kutsia slides it in in front of Astanas. I told you he is stupendously late on the brakes. And it's exactly... But Astanas comes back at him. And now their antics has brought Brad Liebenberg back into the story. There's Liebenberg right on the back of Kutsia. So now... It's unfolding into something special. And while they were doing that, they've let release the Sebastian Boyd and he's down the road. There he dives into the golf club. So Sebastian Boyd leads out. Vastanis, Kutsia and Liebenberg are now going to be embroiled in a titanic struggle with only two laps to go. So Boyd about to cross the line will start his penultimate lap. There he goes. He's got ample breathing space. He's won uh, race number one. And now it's uh, Kutsia up on the inside of Vastanis. They are having a right royal rumble and Liebenberg follows Vistanus and now Kutsi has been relegated to fourth Yeah, in the penultimate lap. So the gloves are off. Down the uh, road deck straight they go. Vistanus is in second, Liebenberg and then Kutsi. And cool, calm and collected. They work their way through. Here comes Sebastian Boy now making his way up towards the line. And uh, those other three are having a real right royal rumble. Vistanus leads out of Liebenberg. The last lap board comes out. Last lap borders out there from the flag marshal as they make their way into turn number one. Vistanis, Liebenberg and Kutsia is where the battle is at. There's your leader, Sebastian Boyd. He's in the 180 complex. Oh, and he looks like he's on a Sunday cruise. He has got absolutely no pressure on him. But here's where the pressure is at. Vistanis, Liebenberg and Kutsia. Now we're going to see. Last corner. Does anything happen? No, no one's close enough to mount a challenge. They're going to accept where they're at. Matthew Wadley down in five. And here comes your leader, Sebastian Boyd up towards the line. Boyd makes his way up towards the line. It's check it flag time. Check it flag time. Sebastian Boyd, two out of two, crosses the line. Nicholas Vastanis, Bradley Lindbergh, Jason Gutsia, Matthew Wadley cross the line. Olorata Sukudu, Karaba Malamele, Ethan Steer. Then up behind Ethan Steer is Dusan uh, Radojevich. And then it's going to be, I think, Tian Ilov. Yep. Wait for the rest of the field to come through. Zane Buton. And uh, then it'll be uh, Jordan Moodley. And I think that's pretty much it. Well, a very exciting race coming out of DD2. Is next up the DD2 Masters. Some of the greatest drivers in the country. The South East. Sebastian Boyd takes it with nearly a three second, second lead over Nicholas Vastanis, followed by Bradley Limburg, Jason Gutsia, Matthew Wadley. Alorata Sukuda, Karaba Malamela, Ethan Steer, Dusan Radojevic, uh, Tian Elof. And uh, behind Tian Elof, we had uh, Zane Buton and uh, Jordan Moodley. Well, that was DD2, heat number two. And next up, we'll have the DD2 Masters. So we'll just wait for them to come onto circuit and just take a short break. Right, so the DD2 Masters are about to go to the circuit. Off they go. On the front row, we've got Justin Rogers and Jared Jordan. Jared Jordan taking yesterday's first race. Beyond Ruiz, Connor Hughes, two of the very quickest Masters out there. Christian Boucher, Roy Gruer, Jonathan Peterson, ex-DD2 champion. Michael Jordan and Grant Fienstra out there. You cannot say who the race is going to be. These DD2 Masters are all very quick. And uh, Christian Boucher is one of the foreigners out there. He's from Mozambique.
So we wish him the best as he sits on the third row. Right, they're going to go and form up down there in golf club. On screen there you have your, uh, you see Christian Boucher there with the Mozambican flag next to him. He is the international flavour in this race. There they're forming up on the front row there. We've got uh, Justin Rogers and Jared Jordan. Jared Jordan taking yesterday's uh, first heat. Beyond Ruiz second and Connie Hughes third. So let's have a look, see how this one pans out. Under full caution, yellow, they pass the flag marshal there. Work their way around. Jared Jordan sits on the outside there of uh, Justin Rogers. They hit the tram lines, lights off and away they go. Make their way in down into turn number one. Is it going to be Jared Jordan takes the lead? Jordan takes the lead. There's a little bit of algebra. Is that Connie Hughes up into second? Connie Hughes gets up into second place and goes a major, but he's got the inside line. He holds the inside line and holds on to second there. And uh, Justin Rogers fighting for dear life as he gets attacked from all quarters. Bjorn Be Ruiz sits there in P4 with Roy Gruer up behind him. There they go into uh, golf club. And don't give uh, Jared Jordan that little bit of a lead there because he's going to absolutely maximize it. It's 15 laps of absolute mayhem. Connie Hughes in second as they cross the line. Then it's Justin Rogers, Bjorn Ruiz, Roy Gruer, Justin Pizza. And uh, then it's uh, Grant Fienstra, Christian Boucher and uh, Michael Jordan. Jonathan Peterson in that uh, green card, he'll want to work his way through. Also, oodles of experience. Getting a little bit out of shape there, Connie Hughes, been followed there by uh, Justin Rogers. And Jonathan Peterson, and someone goes off. Someone goes off. Was that uh, Roy Gruer? I think Roy Gruer went off. Will he come back? Yeah, he's coming back onto the circuit. Coming in there. And ah, he just went a little bit wide and touched the dirt. And that threw him off. Right, so let's have a look at the front still. It's uh, Jared Jordan into the 180s. Jared still followed there by Connie Hughes. Justin Rogers is still in there. Bjorn Roos is there. Then Jonathan Peterson. Oh, we've got all the big guns now on the front end of this field. It's going to become a little bit serious now. We're into the business end of this race as they work their way through. Now we've still got 13 laps left. And it's the business end because everyone's doing their business and everyone wants to win this one and everyone wants to get points. They come out of the uh, sweep, make their way down towards turn number one, holds it. And still, Jared Jordan leads out. Connie Hughes, Justin Rogers, Bjorn Roos, Jonathan Peterson. Brilliant stuff. Down into first to 180s. Connie Hughes protecting his position there, trying to close down on the back of Jared Jordan. And he gets a little bit closer. Jordan's under threat, and Connie Hughes is pretty quick. Jonathan Peterson down in five there, followed there by Fjernstra. They work their way down towards holes, and still Jared Jordan leading out. Is Jared Jordan wearing a jacket? Is that just his suit that's flapping in the wind? No, it's just his suit flapping in the wind. I thought he had a raincoat. I don't want to say there's no rain above. But no, it's just his suit that it's it's the speed they're going on. There's so much wind buffeting. And the slight breeze around creates the buffer. Down into turn number one. And oh, someone going right off circuit. And it sounded like a motor wind. Is he back on circuit? I'm not sure. It looks like Fienstra. No, he's pulled off. Something has gone awry with that car. A massive pop and there's someone else's off that's Michael Jordan Michael Jordan's also stranded into turn number one what happened there I don't know but still Jared Jordan leads out into golf club there with Connie Hughes up behind him then up behind him it's Rogers Rogers been out by there by Bjorn Ruiz and Jonathan Peterson yellow flags waving no overtaking and uh, they got to stay line turn Bjorn Ruiz has a look he can't overtake he kicks himself and thinks, damn, it was a good opportunity, but I couldn't get through. Never mind, we're going into the 180s. Maybe we can Jonathan Peterson up on the inside of Bjorn Ruiz. I told you this man has got oodles of knowledge. And now he sits up behind Rogers. Peterson's on the move. Well, we've still got uh, nine and a half laps to go. Plenty can happen here. Two of the uh, contenders are out this one. Still Jared Jordan leaning out there from Connie Hughes into golf club. Jordan hanging on, pulling G's as he wheels his way around, then hangs the left. Then another right. And uh, past they go. 
Justin Rogers is in there, but Rogers is going to get a, a very uh, apt visitor pretty shortly in the likes of uh, Jonathan Peterson. And they work their way into the 180s. Jonathan going to make a move. Peterson's in there. Does he make a move? Yep, Jonathan Peterson moves up to P3. Jonathan Peterson moves up to P3. And Justin Rogers gets a rude awakening. Don't feel bad, lad. That is a great carter that just moved past you there. A man who's been carting for many, many, many years. Jonathan Peterson now up to P3. Can he go in search there of Connie Hughes? Is Justin Rogers going to give him a little bit of uphill and a bit of food for thought? Beyond Ruiz, down in five. We had second yesterday. Could be battling with a little bit of traction. Still uh, Jared Jordan leading out. Eight laps still to go in this one. Jonathan Pizza holds on to P3. He holds the inside line. Guards his uh, place well. There's your leader, Jared Jordan. And Connor Hughes getting close. Connor wants to get into the front. Jared Jordan is really coming to his end. Hey, look at Justin Rogers. has come back to third. He's taken uh, Jonathan Pizza back. Well, the man's got the bit between his teeth and says, no, 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 no. You just hang on. I will take third back. Jonathan Peters there. Bjorn Rus is still in there as well. So these three are going to give each other horns towards the end of this race. And it's anyone's race. But the man that leads out front at the moment, Jared Jordan there with Connie Hughes. There we see Rogers, Peterson and Rus all giving each other a good bit of food for thought as they come out of turn number one. They're your leader is uh, Jared Jordan behind him, Connie Hughes. They all slow down nicely into the 180s. Justin Rogers, and look at Peterson up on the inside. Oh, and Rogers just hangs on on the outside. Really fighting hard there. You could see him hanging onto that steering wheel. Down into golf club they go. Jared Jordan, Connie Hughes. And Justin Rogers pulls away there from Jonathan Peterson. Gets a bit of breathing space, can regain consciousness. And then, oh, as Peterson got past him, I think Peterson's got past him. Jonathan Peterson's got... No, it's still Justin Rogers. Rogers has got breathing space. Rogers, yeah, into turn number one. Peterson's got risk giving him a bit of food for thought. Your leader there, Jared Jordan, there with Connie Hughes. Hughes leads out. He's trying to close down. There's Justin Rogers. Jonathan Peterson and Bjorn Ruiz right up behind him. Out the 180s they go. There's your leader, Jared Jordan, giving it a full tilt down into... Uh, Boss sweep down into golf club. Connie Hughes, the two local lads from Cape Town, the Masters, leading out as they make their way now past the uh, pit pin. Justin Rogers hanging it wide there as he works his way through with Jonathan Peterson, Bjorn Ruiz right on his tail. Five laps left. Now Peterson has a look on the inside of Rogers. They're side by side. And Bjorn Ruiz looks for a way through, but he cannot find a way through. The three of them are absolutely on each other's tails. And there Bjorn Ruiz gets through on Peterson. Bjorn Ruiz looks up on the inside of Justin Rogers. Bjorn Ruiz takes two. Ruiz is on a fly. A beautiful maneuver coming out of Bjorn Ruiz. Takes two in the 180s and tries to get out of there. Brilliant stuff there from uh, Bjorn Ruiz. Look at him. Bang up on the inside on the second card. Fights the card. Pulls a shutout. Doesn't give Rogers any space. As your leaders work their way up over the line. So still it's Jared Jordan leading out of a Connie Hughes. But I have a look here. Here's Bjorn Ruiz. The leader here into the 180s. Jared Jordan and a Connie Hughes. There come uh, Bjorn Ruiz and uh, Jonathan Peterson is now past uh, Rogers. And Rogers has got Boucher up behind him. The man from Mozambique sits there by. He's joined the party. Oh, with four laps left to go, things are unfolding. Connie Hughes trying to get a bit closer to Jared Jordan. Will he mount a challenge in the closing stages? Will we have a little bit of excitement as they cross the uh, pit pen? Connie Hughes getting a bit closer. Has he been looking after his tyres? Has he been strategizing? We'll have to wait and see. Into turn one they go. Here come the others. Beyond Ruiz leads out with Jonathan Peterson. Oh, was there a move? Peterson up on the inside of Ruiz, but Ruiz holds his line. They're coming to the 180s. And Ruiz holds on. Bjorn Ruiz holds on. Jonathan Peterson and Justin Rogers and Boucher as well. The leaders down into uh, Boss Sweep. It's still going to be Jared Jordan and Connor Hughes all over the back of him there like a bad rash at the moment. Jared Jordan fighting for his lunch at this moment in time as he works his way up over the line. When he crosses the line, we will have two laps to go. They're on their penultimate lap and Ruiz is pulling away from Peterson. 
Pion Rus has got the bit between his teeth now and pulls away from Peterson. Roger still hounding the back of Jonathan Peterson. Well, Jared Jordan exits the 180s. There's Pion Rus, Jonathan Peterson, and Justin Rogers there with Christian Mache up behind them. Comes your leader now down into uh, golf club. It's uh, Jared Jordan there with uh, Connie Hughes. Will Connor try and pull a cat out of the hat here now when they work their way down towards uh, turn number one? Off they go. Jared Jordan leads out. Connie Hughes not close enough to mount a challenge. Through one they go. Head back south towards the 180s. Now Hughes gets a bit closer. He's on the back of Jordan. Jordan's aware of him. He goes defensive up on the inside of the corner. Keeps the door closed. There's Roos. There's Peterson. There's Rogers. Peterson just holding Rogers behind him. And Boucher's in there as well. They get a bit of a nudge. Here we go. Into that uh, last corner. It's check. Could it be checkered flag time? It's the final lap. Jared Jordan's going to try and make it two out of two. As he makes his way towards the line. Jared Jordan's going to take that checkered flag. Check it flag time. Jared Jordan, he punches a hole in the sky. I would too. Followed there by Connie Hughes. And we have a look at the line. Next up should be Bjorn Roos. Roos comes across the line. Then it's Peterson. Then it's Rogers. Then it's uh, Christian Boucher. And then Roy Gruer. Well, well, well. Michael Jordan and Grant Fienstra, unfortunately not finishing. I don't know what happened to their cards, but there was just a loud bang. I sincerely hope it's not a motor that's gone. What a great race. Absolutely brilliant. Right, so for the viewers at home and for those around the track, we're going to have a small luncheon break. We'll be back probably in about, let's have a look, uh, half an hour. So you at home, have a cup of tea, make a sandwich, check on the news, check on your socials, and we will be back shortly to uh, regain the racing. When the sun goes down, the lights come on and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there was a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lies six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. 
It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. Each year the Grand Finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those few, those lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain, the reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, Every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Winning is everything, but it is not the only thing. 384 champions, a rainbow of color, hope and pride. It changed my whole life, and there's no other event in the world like it. I love it. It's part of my life. 
Bahrain unfolds before them, a floodlit ocean of sand under an ink black sky, a roller coaster of tarmac and emotion. Months after months they have toiled in every country, at every track, in all conditions, to grasp hold of their prize, their ticket, their golden opportunity. Behind each contender, the love, the drive, the joy and heartache is shared equally. The time and sacrifice is all of ours, each moment each race is felt from afar, from the pits, the stands, the grid. It put hairs on your arms, you know. It's such an emotional experience for everyone. Win, lose or draw, there's such a passion for it. The moment arrives. Summon every sinew and go for broke. If you don't take your opportunity, a rival will. Glory, triumph, victory or defeat, all flash by like a feather blowing on the hot breeze. With every grand final, a champion is crowned, standing tall on the shoulders of us all. It sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, Every minute change matters, a never-ending quest. Each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved. Speed, grip, hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, it is molded, until finally it is ready, but not complete. It's a really uh, immediate kind of adrenaline buzz. Nothing has the, uh, has the excitement of karting. My name is George Robinson. I've been involved in karting for many, many years. Fairness and sportsmanship in uh, karting is a, uh, a very broad subject, but before Rotax Max came along, 
there was many different engine manufacturers competing in the same class. Rotax Max was really the first major attempt at running a one brand racing, which is what we have here today. That had changed karting completely because it meant that it was much easier to get the same baseline, a fair level of performance with an amazing level of reliability from a new product that was much more modern. It was the dream of the Rotax company to introduce this category. The Rotax Max was designed to be as much a leisure use engine as a racing engine. But what's happened throughout the world, not just in the UK, it's proven to be the most popular class worldwide. Racing is very difficult to say it's completely fair because things happen on track that might be an incident you say isn't fair, but as far as the equipment is concerned, as far as the engines are concerned, it is the fair it has ever been in this sport in the 50 years I've been involved. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? Stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. 
It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. Each year the Grand Finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those few, those lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain, the reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, Every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Winning is everything, but it is not the only thing. 384 champions, a rainbow of color, hope, and pride. It changed my whole life, and there's no other event in the world like it. I love it. It's part of my life. 
Bahrain unfolds before them, a floodlit ocean of sand under an ink black sky, a roller coaster of tarmac and emotion. Months after months they have toiled in every country, every track, in all conditions to grasp hold of their prize, their ticket, their golden opportunity. Behind each contender, the love, the drive, the joy and heartache is shared equally. The time and sacrifice is all of ours, each moment each race is felt from afar, from the pits, the stands, the grid. It put hairs on your arms, you know. It's such an emotional experience for everyone. Win, lose or draw, there's such a passion for it. The moment arrives. Summon every sinew and go for broke. If you don't take your opportunity, a rival will. Glory, triumph, victory or defeat, all flash by like a feather blowing on the hot breeze. With every grand final, a champion is crowned, standing tall on the shoulders of us all. It sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, every minute change matters a never-ending quest. Each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved. Speed, grip, hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, it is moulded, until finally it is ready, but not complete. It's a really uh, immediate kind of adrenaline buzz. Nothing has the, uh, has the excitement of karting. My name is George Robinson. I've been involved in karting for many, many years. Fairness and sportsmanship in uh, karting is a, uh, a very broad subject. But before Rotax Max came along, 
there was many different engine manufacturers competing in the same class. Rotax Max was really the first major attempt at running a one brand racing, which is what we have here today. That had changed karting completely because it meant that it was much easier to get the same baseline, a fair level of performance with an amazing level of reliability from a new product that was much more modern. It was the dream of the Rotax company to introduce this category. The Rotax Max was designed to be as much a leisure use engine as a racing engine. But what's happened throughout the world, not just in the UK, it's proven to be the most popular class worldwide. Racing is very difficult to say it's completely fair because things happen on track that might be an incident you say isn't fair, but as far as the equipment is concerned, as far as the engines are concerned, it is the fair it has ever been in this sport in the 50 years I've been involved. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. When I saw the carts for the first time, you know, it was just magic. I loved my first race suit, helmet, gloves, and boots. I looked like a hero, my own superhero. And when I went on the track, I knew this was my dream. The rumble of the engines behind me, the screech of the tires around me, and I was in control of it all. I felt like the king, the king of speed. Then I learned it would take much more to be first, but every time being second just made me strive harder for victory. After week, month after month, we learned, we practiced, we traveled, and we raced. We couldn't buy speed, we had to learn it. The power was always there, and it was down to us to unlock it. Every year we set out with one goal, one dream. 
to earn my ticket to the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. Money can't buy the feeling I got when I qualified. Money can't buy the feeling we had when we knew all those years of hard work was worth it. Raced my way to a ticket to the most spectacular, most colorful, most unique karting event in the world. All the sacrifices were worth it for the chance to compete with the best, to finally be among the best, and to give it all I had. To hit every apex perfectly to be the best Rotax driver in the world. To be part of this is like a crazy dream. To get to the final, to hold your flag, to hear your anthem on the podium. I have raced, I have competed, and I have won. Through all these years, I made so many friends, I became a part of the Rotax family. The noise, the color, the speed. It still makes my heart beat faster, my eyes open wider, and my desire to race get stronger. And still to this day, I feel like the king. The king of speed. Right, so welcome back to uh, round number one of the Rotax Max South Africa Challenge, incorporating the Africa Open. We're going into heat number three. Our Bambinos take to the circuit. Race number three for them. There will be four races in all. The fourth race will incorporate the Africa Open as they take to the circuit out there. Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingefeld, Joaquin Hamaldin, Ibrahim Kalpi, Caleb Rogers, Alonso D'Oliveira, Aston Villal, uh, Russell Yusufat, Liam De Beer, and Sebastian Shuttleworth. <laughs> right, so they're just in their formation, just warming up the tyres a little bit. To our viewers at, at home that join us once again, welcome. If you've just joined us, very warm welcome. Thank you for affording us the opportunity to bring you the live stream of round one of the South African Rotex Max Challenge. Mike side, Francois Butler. I'll be trying to entertain you. The entertainment will be on track nonetheless. I'll just let you know what's happening. Right, so the carters working their way down through Boss Sweep, down into Golf Club. They'll reel around. It makes a full 180 degree turn. And then you've got to hang a very sharp left. We'll see as they come out of golf club. And then that sharp left past Rotex building. And then a quick uh, dive to the right. And then a left and right. And then your laps completed. But in this case, they will be breaking the tram lines. And we'll get race number three underway. Right, so here we go. They're about to split the tram lines they're into the tram lines. There's someone in the middle and off they go. They make their way down towards turn number one. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Oh, difficult to see there now as they work their way around. It could be right here. Oh, it looks like two cards have gone off. Two cards go off there in turn number one, but they manage to enter the circuit once again. Into the 180s they go. 
Everyone jostling for positions there. It looks like it could be Lingerfeld or Harris that lead out. We'll pick them up as they come down the Rotax straight. It's the uh, 23 of Roddy Harris and Joaquin Hamaldin is in there as well. Down into uh, golf club they go. They work their way through golf club and making their way now past Rotax Bend. You see on pick screen there a little bit of a challenge there. Coming out of uh, Caleb Rogers. There's your leaders. So they make their way up over the line. Roddy Harris leads over Ibrahim Kalpi and uh, Caleb Lingerfeld. And what has happened to uh, our man? He's low down. So uh, Roddy Harris leads out Ibrahim Kalpi, Caleb Lingerfeld. Yakin Hamaldin down in seventh has made a mistake somewhere and he's got a lot of work to do. There he comes now in picture. But the leaders now side by side as they go down into uh, boss sweep. Roddy Harris and Ibrahim Kalpi battling it out there. Caleb Lingerfeld looks like he's gone up one. 23 there of Lingerfeld goes into second place. He's now chasing the back end of Roddy Harris. It's eight laps. They're about to complete uh, lap number two. Roddy Harris looks over his shoulder and sees Caleb Lingerfeld trailing him. He's going defensive very early in the race, trying to hold on to his position. Rest the carts cross the line. And Yakim is up into six. He's moved up through the ranks. He wants to get back to the front, but he's got a large job ahead of him. He's in the number 39 cart. There's the leaders. Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingerfeld and Abraham Kalpi. There comes uh, Sebastian Shuttleworth and Alonso de la Vera. There comes Yakin Hamaldin. He's got a lot of work to do if he wants to go fetch a leader. He's got a lot of distance to cover. And he's leading uh, it's like Caleb Rogers. Your leaders come past us here at the commentary tower, work their way through the pit bend and up over the line. Roddy Harris has got nearly a 1.75 second lead there over Caleb Lingerfeld. And Roddy Harris is pulling away. There they enter the 180 complex. There's the number 33 there of Caleb Lingerfeld. Second place. Roddy Harris has got a bit of a gap now. And then there's another gap over Abraham Kalpi. There is uh, Dolavera with Shuttleworth behind him, then Yakin Hamaldin in the not too distant background, pushing hard. And Yakin's on the move, he's uh, gone up. Yakin Hamaldin is on the move and he is pushing hard. This youngster is very quick. He definitely made a mistake somewhere. We didn't pick it up, unfortunate, but he's moving along swiftly. up in six chasing the back end of uh, yeah, he's up to fourth Yakin moves up to fourth so he's moving up swiftly once again catch those front three but uh, Roddy Harris thing or Caleb Lingerfeld getting a dash of speed there now as he works his way through the 180s he's chasing the back of uh, Roddy Harris he's left uh, Abraham Kalpi in the dirt there Kalpi pushing hard here comes Kamaldin Yakin Hamaldin is absolutely flying in this little car to his. That Komamoto working overtime at the moment as he chases the back end there of uh, Abraham Kalpi. He's got his head down. He's getting the job done. Up behind him, it's uh, the Souza and Shuttleworth. And it looks like the Souza gets through there. Or the, sorry, the Oliveira. My, my apologies, the Oliveira. But your leader has got a healthy lead there. That's uh, Roddy Harris over Caleb Lingerfeld. Kalpi and Hamaldin are going to be embroiled in a battle pretty shortly. Hamaldin chasing the back end of Kalpi there, going through holes. Into the 180s go your leaders. There's the 33 of Lingerfeld chasing the back end there of Roddy Harris. Roddy Harris in screen, there's Caleb Lingerfeld, he goes through. 
And there comes Gamaldin on the back of Kalpi. This Yakin Gamaldin is absolutely a brilliant racing driver. He looks up on the inside. He's going up on the inside. He goes past Kalpi and Gamaldin moves up to third, going into boss sweep. A nice clinical maneuver up on the inside. Good drive out of the 180s now. And he's starting to pull away from Kalpi. He's going to go look for uh, Lingefeld and he can see him. He's not worried what goes on behind him. He just wants to get the job done. He's still got three laps to go. Can he close down on the Lingefeld? Three laps. No, two laps. Sorry, my, my error. Two laps to go. Oh, and someone spins out. He said Lingefeld had spun out and Hamaldin comes through. Lingefeld spins out and Hamaldin goes up to second. And so did us Kalpi. I don't know what Lingefeld did there, but he just spun out in turn number one. Roddy Harris out front. No, there comes that's uh, Kalpi that's coming through. Did Harris, did Hamaldin slip out? Well, well, well. How uh, things change. Right, so they're going to start their last lap. The last lap board's going to come out very shortly. Here comes your leader, Roddy Harris. No, here comes Hamaldin, the 39 of uh, Hamaldin is in second place. Over the line they go, Roddy Harris leads out. Up over the line goes Hamaldin. He's not close enough to catch Harris, but it's going to be a stunning second place for him. He's won two races. Roddy Harris will take this one. And then he'll go down to the fourth uh, race of the day, the final race of the day. Harris doing a sterling job. Hamaldin pressing hard. He's not giving up. He'll race it to the flag. But I don't think he's going to catch Roddy Harris, who's got his head down and getting the job done. So they work their way there down past the Rotex straight. There's uh, Harris in screen, your leader. Roddy Harris down into golf club. There Hamaldin comes into picture, but Roddy Harris has done it all. He's on his way to the checkered flag. Roddy Harris doing a sterling job there. He's going to take heat number three through the uh, pit pen. Checkered flag beckons. Race number three, Roddy Harris punches a hole in the sky. He's elated with that win. Second place, a great drive coming out of Yakin Hamaldin. Third place man coming up over the line. I think it's going to be Ibrahim Kalpi. Indeed it is. Wait for the rest of the field to come through. It's going to be uh, Caleb Lingefeld, followed there by Sebastian Shuttleworth, Alonso de Oliveira, and then it's uh, Aston Vareel. Should be Aston Vareel. Indeed it is, and then it's Caleb Rogers. And I think the last man over will be Liam De Beer. Indeed it is. So there we go. Nice drive there from him. There's your confirmation. Roddy Harris takes from Yakin Hamaldin, Ibrahim Kalpi, Caleb Lingefeld, Sebastian Shuttleworth, Lonzo de Oliveira, Aston Wheel, Caleb Rogers, and Liam De Beer. Well, a little bit of a spread out race, but we had some great driving there from the likes of Yakin Hamaldin, who uh, went, made a mistake and managed to bring himself back into picture, take second place. Next up, it looks like the uh, Senior Max Carters. <coughs> to the folks at home, thank you for joining us and allowing us into your uh, private space for round number one of the South African Rotex Max Challenge uh, Championship. And that incorporates the African Open as well. Young uh, Charge walking back to the pit lane. The walk of shame, as they call it. And shame, it's a terrible long walk. They have to pick up a jog, but they want to hold the works up. Well, they learn from a young age, don't they? So you see all the fans up on the main grandstand. They can uh, give us a wave. All the folks on the main stand. Wind uh, blustery. Now it's uh, turned to southeast. It was northwest earlier. Now the southeast is blowing, which means uh, it'll be, the weather will be pretty okay for the day. Right, let's go. Senior Max hits the circuit. Oh. This is going to be a humding battle on the front there. Mikhail Bassana and John Wilson with Ken Schwartz, Luca Verli, Schal Fisser, Ethan Deegan, Divian Nider, Travis Mingay, Mauro Deleuze, Mohamed Wally, Cole Houston, Tate Bishop, Joshua Smith and Roshan Goodman make up the first six rows. 
Oh, we can have another war on our hands. Absolutely blindingly quick stuff coming out of the senior maxes. This is usually where all the action is. Yeah, in junior max. It's uh, the biggest field of the day. Senior max, 27 cards out there. Unbelievable stuff and unbelievable scenes here at Kalani International Raceway, Cape Town, South Africa. Temperatures around about 22 degrees. And uh, it's warm, it's humid. Not very hot, but humid. And uh, there, look at them, racked and stacked. It looks like a traffic jam in peak hour traffic as they roll around under full caution yellow. They're gonna roll their way around. They're gonna hit those tram lines. There you see them coming into the picture there. The tram lines beckoning for them. They're gonna wait for the lights. Wait for the lights. Lights off and they go racing. Down they go towards turn number one. They gotta keep it all together. You don't wanna go off in turn number one. They all work their way through and it looks like everyone does okay. Down they go into the uh, 180s. Everyone jostling for positions. You lock the inside line. You maybe have an outside line and then the inside line and the second 180. You work your way around. Everybody fighting each other there to get through. And uh, make their way down into a boss sweep. Unbelievable scenes here from Kalani International Raceways. They work their way down into Golf Club. They try and pick up who the leader is as they come here towards us. It's cart number 296. It's uh, Jono Wilson leading out from uh, Paul. Up over the line they go. Jono Wilson, Shaw Michael Fiss is in there, Luca Verley, Travis Minge, Ken Schwartz, Tate Bishop, uh, Ethan Deacon, Mikhail Besaidnot, and uh, Maura Deleuze with uh, Muhammad Wally. Oh, great stuff here as they come out the 180s. It's tight stuff up front. It's anyone's race at this moment. Shalfus are getting on the gas there, working his way down towards boss sweep, following Jono Wilson. Can Jono Wilson hold out? Blisteringly, blindingly quick pace. Fisser, has he gone to the front? I think Fisser's gone to the front. Shal Fisser, local lad, has gone to the front. Indeed he has. And uh, he's going to try and get away. Very quick around the circuit. Up behind him, Wilson, then Worley, then Minge, then Schwartz, then Bishop and Deacon. Oh, it's the who's who, and there's a maneuver here. Someone up on the inside, uh, looks like uh, Wilson and Worley are at it. Wilson and Worley, Wilson boss Worley and Tate Bishop is in there with Ethan and Bishop. Uh, goes up on the inside, so too does Deacon of Luca Worley. He's getting swung from all corners, and Worley spun. He's got to bring it back, and he's going to lose about eight or nine positions. Luca Worley gets... Uh, Bombarded from all quarters. Fisser leads out. Wilson second. Bishop third. Well, it's not Worley. Worley's in fourth. My mistake. So it wasn't Luca Worley that was bombed out, but someone else got bombed out there quite badly. I think it was Mikhail Besaidner. Yeah, Mikhail Besaidner that got bombed out. Dropped down all the way down the charts. Quickest man out there, Tate Bishop, 41.9. They were doing 40s early on. So it means they're upping the ante. Now Bishop takes with him Wilson as they go down into... Uh, boss sweep down into golf club. Got to chase uh, Shaul Fisser. Fisser's the man that leads out. Not an easy customer to reel in or to pass for that matter. And Bishop says, you know what, if anyone can do it, I can. So let's see what happens as this race unfolds. Up over the line, Wilson. Then it's Worley, Minge, Schwartz, Wally. Wally's in seventh. Mohamed Wally will want to work his way a little bit higher up the field. He's in that uh, lime green car. There he is on screen. One of the quicker men in South Africa. Young men, for that matter. Bishop chasing Wilson. Luca Worley. Up behind Worley is uh, Travis Minge. Then Ken Schwartz. Then Mohamed Wally. Then uh, it's going to be uh, Mara Deleuze, followed by Brandon van der Waals. But the leaders come through now past the kink. Over they go. Shaul Fisser now realizes that Tate Bishop is hunting him. He's got a target on his back. There's Fisher into turn one, followed by Bishop, followed by Wilson, followed by Worley. And uh, then it's uh, Schwartz and Muhammad Wally. Ken Schwartz, also a very great carter there from the northern regions. Fisser holds out. You see that distinctive look up when he goes around the corner. That's just his style. And there he goes. And look at Bishop, head down chasing. Jono Wilson and Luca Worley right up there behind him. 
Worley chasing hard behind Wilson. He wants to get through. He wants to move up to third. Can he do it? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Up behind him, it's, uh, Ken, it's Travis Bingay, then Ken Schwartz. I think Travis Bingay, look at Worley now with the quicker lap. They're all out there. So uh, they're working their way around the circuit. There's Charles Fisser. Let's see his head look up. There's Fisser. I mean, Fisser, sorry, um, Bishop. Fisser leading out. Look at Worley. Click his man in the circuit, 40.89. So now you see they're starting to up the ante as they get into the business end of this one. Fisser pushing hard down into golf club. There's Bishop up behind him. Fisser, you'll see his head as he looks up. See, that's basically just to counter the G-forces in your neck as they work their way down past the bend and uh, take a right-hander onto the main straight. Fisser leading out, Bishop chasing hard. John O'Wilson, Luca Verley, Travis Bingo. Mohamed Wally's up, one on Mauro Deleuze, then it's Cole Houston, then Mikhail Besaidnot, then uh, it's going to be uh, Rashawn Goodman, Ethan Deacon, Lan Storm Lanfear, Brandon Shin Naidu, and then uh, Neilan Marks. Well, off they go. Leaders down into a golf club, working their way through. Charles Fisser and uh, John O'Wilson has got past State Bishop. I think John o. Wilson's got past State Bishop through Golf Club. Wilson now back up to second. And uh, working their way around there. Bishop back to second. Bishop back to second. He won't allow Wilson. He's a very avid carter. He's got a bit, he's got a job on hand. He's chasing Fisser. Muhammad Wally now ups the ante. He's now the quickest man. 40.7. So they're getting faster and faster now as they work their way down into uh, boss sweep, down into golf club they go. Fisser still leads out, Bishop, then Wilson, up behind Wilson, Worley, then Mingo, then Wally, and the lose. Then Cole Houston up to 8th uh, place. Mikhail Besaid note, Sean Goodman in there as well. Wally all over the back of Travis Mingo. Wally looks up on the inside of Mingo and Wally goes through. And Wilson still hounding the back of Bishop. Luca Worley still in there. There's uh, Muhammad Wally in that green card. He's starting to work his way through. He wants to get up. We've got uh, five and a bit laps to go. So there's still a little bit to happen in this one. Schalfus is still leading out front, controlling from the front, doing a good job there. Tate Bishop there in second place. St holding off uh, John o. Wilson and Luca Worley. Out into turn number one. There's uh, Fisser, there's Bishop, there's Wilson, there's Verley. And up behind Verley, there is uh, Mingo, then Wally, then Lelouz, then Houston, then Besaidna, then uh, Goodman, all in there. Brilliant stuff. Luca Verley, 40.7, so he's on a fly. There's your leader. Luca Verley chasing the back end of John Wilson. He wants to get close there now in the closing stages. We got uh, three and a half laps to go. Well, four and a half laps to go, my apologies. As they make their way past the Kiosk King. Up over the line they go. Still Shoal Fisser leads out. Bishop there with Wilson. Cross the line, four laps left. Four laps left into turn number one they go. There's Fisser. There's Bishop, Wilson and Verley. Up behind them tra is uh, Travis Bingo. So they work their way through. Still Shoal Fisser leading out. And Wilson crowding the back bumper there of Bishop. Here comes Luca Worley. Worley's on a fly. Travis Bingo is in there as well. They're giving it absolute horns now as they go into golf club. Working their way around. And Fisser still got about a half a second gap there over Tate Bishop. We've got three and a bit laps to go as they work their way up over the line. Fisser got almost a second gap now over Bishop there. 0.8 seconds to be exact. Down into turn number one. Are things going to start heating up now in the closing stages? Fiss is still in the lead. Bishop, Wilson up on the inside of Bishop. Wilson goes up into second and Bishop returns the favor on the second 180. And uh, Luca Rurley is right there with him. So do Travis Bingo. Down the back straight they go. Bishop in second. Bishop with oodles of experience. A South African junior and senior max champion. So he knows what it's all about. Nine senior max. And uh, you see there as uh, Wilson comes inside Bishop says fine watches him 
cuts back and returns the favour. Brilliant stuff. Right. Across the line. Two laps to go. Penultimate lap. Still Shal Fisser leads out from the front. He got to the front and you don't catch him. Wilson takes Bishop. Bishop returns the favour once again. Wilson comes back inside. Gentlemen giving each other space. Luca Verli has a look. They're going to start their final lap. What's going to happen? Here we go. Jono Wilson, Tate Bishop. Bishop up on the inside. Oh, tries to have a look, but Wilson keeps his line closed. Tate Bishop's right there with him. Last lap board's going to come out for Shaul Fisser. Fisser up towards the line, gets the last lap board. Wilson's trying to get away from Bishop. Bishop's going to have to close down on him if he wants to do anything in the 180s. Yeah, they go. This is where it's going to happen. There's Fisser going into the 180s. Let's have a look here now. There's Wilson. There's Bishop. Can Bishop come back? No, Wilson's got enough lead there. Is anything going to happen? Wilson's got quite a lead there now. On Bishop. Can Bishop come back? Fisser leads out. Wilson second. I mean, yes, Wilson second and he's going down. Looks like Wilson's going to hold on to second. It's checkered flag time in race number three for the senior max. Here comes Shaul Fisser. Shaul Fisser leads out. John o. Wilson, Tate Bishop, Luca Verli and Travis Bingo. Checkered flag time. Thank you, says Shaul Fisser. I'll take that. John o. Wilson second, Tate Bishop third. And uh, Luca Verli with Travis Bingo. And a good race there from Cole Houston, followed by Mohamed Wally, Mara Deleuze, Mikhail Besaidnot. Then uh, it should be Shrin Naidu and uh, Brian Shrin Naidu, Storm Lanfear, Roshan Goodman. Joshua Smith in 13, Nielsen Marks, uh, Brandon Van Vault, Laxon Lau, Ethan Boerstander, Ken Schwartz, Jude Stewart, Kanyang Gwenya, uh, Kian Spies, then it's uh, Nzalo Koza, Ethan Deacon, um, Kian Russell, or Fussell, and uh, Oliver Internaus, and unfortunately one or two drivers not making it. Well, there on screen, confirmation of your winner, Charles Fisser, John o. Wilson, Tate Bishop, and Luca Verli.
Right, so next up, uh, Micromax, race number three. On the front there, Jaden van der Maven, Luke de Toy, Michael Mahoney, Adrian Stein, Liam Wharton, Slater Smith, and uh, then Luan de Vett, Matthew Shuttleworth, Ruan Victor, Zach Bossoff, Lawashu Matabula, Jake Stein, Liam Takiso, Ronald Fenter, Alicia Britz, and young Mia Manus, the lady, um, the rose amongst the thorns. Well, a lovely crowd turned out here today, trackside, and uh, great uh, racing here today. Micromax, it's going to be an exciting one. Everyone wants to win this one too. So let's see how this one pans out. To the viewers at home, hang on to the edge of your seats. We're about to go racing. As... Uh, they heat up the tires there. Your pole sitter, Jaden van Amerva. He's had a pretty good outing uh, of late. It's his hand up as he gets everyone racked and stacked behind him there. They still uh, adhere to the rules, put their hands up as they slow down, which is a proper common practice within the uh, karting uh, line, within racing for that matter. You even see in Formula One, they put their hands up out of the cars. So. Uh, yeah, this is where it all starts and who knows one of these young uh, steeds could one day be in a formula one car right so they make their way past the rotex building up towards the uh, pit bend hear the buzzing of the carts as they come past our commentary position here they go when they go around the corner they're going to eat those tram lines the lights are on we're going to wait for the lights to go off into the tram lines they go, they get on the throttles, lights off and away they go down towards turn number one. All dart and dive in there on screen, looks like Michael Mahoney in that distinctive green card sits in second place. He'll want to go to the front as early as possible. They work their way into the 180s, line of stern stuff, jostling all four positions. And Michael Mahoney sits right up behind Jaden van Amerva, two local lads work their way out. They make their way down the road tax straight. And they're on the gas early. Van amerva has got his head down as he works down towards Boss Sweeper. Michael Mahoney right up behind him. Looks like Liam Wharton sits in P4. And I can only tell that because I recognize the helmet. They're driving so fast it's very difficult to see. But here comes Jaden Van amerva and someone getting a little bit out of shape. I think that is... Uh... Oh, we're going to have a look now. As they cross the line. It's Luke de Toy. I thought so. Luke de Toy sits there in third. And he's holding on, he's got Liam Wharton crowding him, but still Jaden van Amerva goes in there with Michael Mahoney, the toy and Wharton. Look how close they are, it's anyone's game. Mahoney fighting with that steering, trying to keep that uh, car to go where he wants it to go, but Jaden van Amerva still leads out. The MP5, it's uh, Slater Smith. Nice to see him up so high now as he works his way up in P5. He's going in search of the P4, he's got a lowly P5. He's got to keep his head down and get the job done. Up behind him is... Uh, Adrian Stein, who's got a whole gaggle of carters up behind him, but here come your front four. Slater Smith trying to catch him. He's giving it horns there, he's in picture, through the pit pen. There they go up over the line. When they cross the line, they've got 10 laps left. Down into turn number one they go. Still, it's uh, Jaden van Amerva over there with Michael Mahoney, Luke de Toy, and uh, Liam Wharton. Wharton chasing hard, he's got nothing to look behind him. There's everything in front of him. With front four pulled away from the rest, the fight is on. Wharton chasing the back of the toy. There is Slater Smith now coming into his own. So they chase down. It looks like they're close, but they're pretty far apart. Wharton having a look up on the inside. No space. Just not enough drive as he goes through there. They go down into golf club. Wharton all over the back there of Luke de Toy. And Mahoney still chasing Jaden van Amerva. All these little battles, separate battles are starting to emanate now. Liam Wharton up on the inside. Is he going to dive him down into turn number one? No, he doesn't. Look, the toy holds his position. Slater Smith to still down in five. Starting to be approached by a whole traffic jam. But still on screen there is uh, Luke the toy fighting it out with Liam Wharton. There's Jaden van Amerva and Michael Mahoney. And Mahoney, the quickest man on circuit. And uh, Slater Smith has got company. Slater Smith has got company. It's Adrian Stein that's we're getting onto the back of him. Comes your leader, Jaden van Amerva, Michael Mahoney, and uh, Liam Wharton has got through on the toy. 
Slater Smith still fending off a whole gaggle of carters as they go up over the line. They have now got eight laps left. Eight laps to go. As they go through, there's the leaders. There's Jane van der and Michael Mahoney. Mahoney just sitting there. While he sits there, it might bring uh, Wharton a little bit closer. Wharton's getting on the gas. Jane van der Michael Mahoney, Liam Wharton, Luke de Toy. And then it's Slater Smith. And then they is getting some company. Companies coming in. Steenkamp, Shuttleworth, and uh, De Wet. They're all in it there. Have a look there at Mahoney. He's just tracking uh, Jaden van der Van der just holding out in first. Wharton trying to get a bit closer. He's pulled away from the toy. Jaden van der has got some good pace going on to turn number one. Mahoney follows suit. Here comes Wharton. Liam Wharton pulling away from the toy. Slater Smith is still in five, but he's got Steenkam, Shuttleworth, and uh, De Vet all behind him. They're all sitting there. Oh, ooh, and they're hitting a bit of a rumble there, but keeping together. Here comes uh, Michael O'Mahony. Mahoney up on the inside and dives up on the inside of Boss Sweep and says to Jaden, thank you. I'll take the lead and be careful when Mahoney takes the lead. He wants to get away. Look at him. Steps out, takes it, justifies his uh, action and takes over first position. So now Mahoney leads out. And uh, Wharton getting a little bit closer is ahead of the toy. Slater Smith still in five. Shuttleworth 9 6, head of Steenkamp. Mahoney, will Jaden come back at him? Oh, a whole gaggle of carters there. Wharton and uh, Slater Smith and Shuttleworth all at it. Now Jaden van Amava all over the back end of Michael Mahoney. He doesn't want to let go. It looks like Liam Wharton's getting a bit closer. They come out of uh, Rotax Corner and I tell you what, Liam Wharton's only 1.1 seconds behind him, but I think he's going to close that gap as quick as he can. Into turn number one they go, Holes Corner. Named after a very great Edgar Hole, who was one of the co-founders of Kalani International Raceway. And still it's Michael O'Mahony, Jaden van Amava. Here comes Liam Wharton. He's closing that gap down quickly. He's the quickest man on circuit, 45.4 seconds. He is moving along swiftly. And, oh, Slater Smith's been relegated to eighth. Now, Jaden van Amava up on the inside of uh, Michael Mahoney, going down into Golf Club. He takes back the lead. Michael Mahoney to second, and Liam Wharton is there with him. Wharton is there with him. He's joining the party. Lovely stuff as they come out there. Jaden van Amava, Michael Mahoney and Liam Wharton joins the party there. They dive into turn number one. Great stuff. Uh, great racing up front. Jaden van Amava trying to fend off Mahoney. Liam Wharton now joining the party as they're going to the 180s. And Wharton has done well. He's collected the front two and he's going to join the battle. Out they go. Down uh, Rotax straight. Still Mahoney and... Uh, Mahoney steps out. He's going to do it again. And Mahoney goes to the front of Jaden van Amava. And Wharton closes up on the back of the two of them. Now it's a three-way tie. But as they say in South Africa, now the gala is on. Lovely stuff here from Mahoney. Steps out at the right occasion and takes the line. But in the meantime, the three of them going down into uh, holes into turn number one. Mahoney leads out. And Wharton's there also uh, contending for a position. And he's looking up on the inside. And Wharton goes to second. Wolf on him every turn of favor. Now Wharton crosses his bow and takes back second place. Wharton back up to second. Ahead of Jaden van der Maven. He's going in search of Michael Mahoney. Liam Wharton is on a fly. Liam Wharton is getting the job done. This little lad can pedal. And he's chasing Michael Mahoney. All the local lads here are giving each other absolute horns here in uh, the closing stages of this race when they cross the line they left two laps to go two laps to go they cross the line Mahoney goes defensive Wharton on the outside Mahoney is going to go totally defensive he won't want Wharton to get past him let's see if we can have a little bit of a battle on our hands Wharton trying to sell the dummy Mahoney stays there Wharton hanging around the outside looking if he can go through Mahoney very defensive cuts that line off 
Wharton sitting on here. Jaden van der Merv is there with him. What can Maloney do? Is can he hold off Wharton? Wharton looks towards the outside, tries to out drag him down towards Boss Corner and slots into second place. They're going about to start their last lap. The front three are absolutely nose to tail. You can put a handkerchief over them and they're that close now as they go past Rotax. Come through the final pit bend. Front three are too close for comfort. Mahoney will dive to the inside as he goes to defensive. And Wharton gives it absolute horns down there. He's going to be on the outside. And Jaden's pressurizing him. Wharton is the proverbial meat in the sandwich here. Does Wharton sell the dummy and look on the inside? No, he still hangs in there. Can he do something? And uh, Mahoney just covering his lines nicely as they exit the 180. Mahoney leads out over Wharton. Can Wharton get good drive and try and go around the outside? No, he doesn't. He's too worried. They side by side. Side by side. And Wharton slots back into second. Can he do anything? Golf club? No, Mahoney covers his lines. Mahoney riding a very strategic final lap here. Keeps Wharton behind him. Mahoney's going to take line honors unless Wharton can now drag him, which I doubt it very much. And check it, flag beckons. Michael Mahoney takes from Liam Wharton by nine hundredths of a second. Unbelievable stuff coming out of these uh, front runners. Michael Mahoney, Liam Wharton, Jada van Amava, Luke de Toy, Luan de Vett, Matthew Shuttleworth, uh, Adrian Stein, Ruan Victor, Slater Smith, Lawashu Matabula, Zach Bossoff, uh, Liam Takiso, Jake Stein, Mia Manus, Ronald Fenter, and Alicia Britt. What a stunning, stunning race. Clean, good lines, good take, uh, overtake maneuvers. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Well, that was Micromax. Lovely stuff there. Confirmation of the results on screen. It's Michael Amoni takes race number three. All right, next up, race number three of the uh, Junior Max on the front row, Keegan Beaumont and William Marshall. Second row, Gianna Pascal, Keegan Martin, then Jack Moore and George Lennox. And uh, then it's Luke Hill, Reese Quirzen, Jordan Whaley, Spice Malula, Rafael De Silva, Emma Dowling, James Nash, Nicholas Lennox, Joshua Moore, Caleb Woodendahl, Christian Vahil, Anyani Kunyana, Sebastiano Himan, Jesse Swart, Anula Laprille and Caleb Moss. <clears throat> there is nobody, nobody in that field that cannot win this race. There is no slow coaches here. Every single name in there is a great carter. This Junior Max is going to be absolutely epic. Well, as they say at the races, place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. It's their form up down in Golf Club. See the back markers pulling in there. So here we go. Oh, and someone's lost a tire. Right out coming out of golf club, someone loses a tire. A wheel. A wheel's come off a cart. Cart number looked like 475. 415. Is that James Nash? It's James Nash. I see his helmet. Right, they're going to break the tram lines. Lights off and they go racing. So here they go into turn number one. Is that Beaumont that's taken the lead? Let's have a look. That guy's out. Keegan Beaumont goes to the front. Keegan Beaumont has gone to the front. He had pole. So Keegan Beaumont leads out. Keep an eye on this lad. He's going to want to pedal hard. And uh, is it Gianna Pascal that sits there in second place? Beaumont leads out. A very dejected James Nash walks off the circuit. Yeah, they come, working their way uh, past the uh, pit bend, work their way down the main street. Oh, there's been a calamity in the 180s. Two more carts out of it. It's another race of attrition. So, uh, oh, and we've got a red flag situation. Red flag, 
the race will be stopped. The hands will go up. There we go. The hands go up. <coughs> On screen, you see all the drivers put their hands up as they see the red flags and they slow it right down. Right, there's the replay. Let's see what happens. Oh, cards go. Oh, and uh, all the major. Oh, and there's an injury. There's a calamity. A cart on top of a driver. Every sport has its injuries. Well, well, well. And, uh, well, one of the lads feeling it. He might need a bit of medical treatment. So they left her form up back on the grid. Well, it's absolute war out there, folks. And when you go to war, you stand the possibility of getting injured. So uh, they've got to just clean up the circuit. It will take, it, take a while to clean up the circuit and see if any of the, the stricken cards can get back onto the grid. Well, Junior Max, the... Uh, I almost want to say the hormones come to play and uh, the adrenaline rushes there and everybody wants to win the race. So uh, it's a crackerjack race. It's going to be a crackerjack race. Everybody's out there, even the ladies that are partaking. Here with the red helmet, you see a lady, Jana Pascal. Carts are all broken, going off the circuit. Well, Real play coming up. Here we go. Car drives one up on the tyre. Get a flick. And on top of the poor driver. And he's probably got about 100 kilograms lying on his head there. But uh, everybody seems to be okay. Which is a good thing. They are still built out of this strong stuff, these youngsters. Able to take it. Well, it looks like our medical team might be entering the circuit. Just to go and check up on the young lads. So we're just going to have a bit of a delay. Once again on screen. Check the Gazoo cart up on the air, bang up, it's the driver in the back of the head. Fortunately, that's why we wear helmets. And wow, what a calamity. It's got to be sore with a cart lying on your back, your shoulder there. All that metal digging into your back. Cannot be comfortable. And uh, they're just keeping the lad. He wants to move around, but he looks a little bit dazed out there. So uh, take it easy, lad. Let the medical staff do their job. Whether you feel good or not, they will know. See our medical vehicle on there? It's not as serious as it looks, folks. It's just someone getting a once-over <coughs> just to she see that he's in uh, good health. I'm right, just going to break away from your screen for a quick ad break. We'll be back shortly. sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all of some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess.
calm before the storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. the grand finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain, the reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao.
Right, so uh, as the uh, drivers get spoken to there by the clerk of the course, they're getting ready to race. It looks like we might uh, restart the race. You see there on the line, the clerk of the course giving a talking to. Right, so uh, about to get the race underway once again. And uh, off the drivers go, or not yet. Waiting for the uh, flag marshal to say to him, there's the one uh, finger comes up. You've got a warm-up lap, Jens. Looks like they're going to restart that race. So, Junior Max, race number three. As they work their way around, Keegan Beaumont leads out there. He's got William Marshall. They're warming up their carts alongside him. And the second row, Gianna Pascal and Keegan Martin. So, uh, it's going to be a real crackerjack race. Another 15 laps couple of exclusions now due to damages so the field is uh, a little bit smaller double yellows waving full caution yellows they make their way down into golf club where they'll start forming up and uh, get this race underway once again so it opened up with a couple of calamities no nothing, no serious injuries they form up alongside each other now as they come past the uh, kiosk bend They'll make their way past the kiosk bend and into the tram lines. There you see them. They will get into those tram lines, wait for the lights to go off. And lights off and away they go. Make their way down into uh, turn number one. And it is uh, Keegan Beaumont that leads out there. William Marshall, but Marshall up on the inside. Looks like Gianna Pascal. Moving up. No, Marshall back in second. Marshall's in second. There's a lot of jostling for positions here. Oh, and there's a calamity. A major calamity. But they all do avoidance and try to get back on circuit. But it is a major calamity. And in the meantime, the two leaders, there you see it happen in the replay. Collision avoidance, but they manage all to get back on the circuit. And no flags needed. And here they go. It's uh, Keegan Beaumont leading out. He's got William Marshall there with him. Marshall chasing Beaumont as they work their way down into uh, turn number one, Holzuk. And uh, Keegan Beaumont is under severe pressure from that man. William Marshall is very, very quick and a uh, very astute driver. Beaumont keeps the lines there. Looks like Gianna Pascal sits in third. They work the way out of the 180s now down the back straight. They go down the back straight, down towards Boss Corner. Beaumont leads in there with Marshall, Gianna Pascal. Making their way through. Jack Moore. Well, no, it's Georgia Linnets. My apologies. Georgia Linnets is up in third place. Both of them in red. Georgia Linnets. Pascal sits there right behind Jack Moore. And they make their way down. Pascal looks up on the inside of Moore. And Pascal goes up to B4. Gianna Pascal now behind Georgia Linnets. And it's still Keegan Beaumont leading out over William Marshall. Beaumont holding on to first there ahead of William Marshall. Working their way through. They come out through the 180s now, second 180, work their way down the road tech straight. Beaumont leads out, Marshall chasing out. Then it's Lennitz, then it's Pascal. They are giving it absolute horns now as they're working their way through there. Coming around, making their way here out of Golf Club. And it's uh, still Keegan Beaumont here over William Marshall. Marshall chasing out on the back of Beaumont now as they go down the main straight. Beaumont still trying to hold out, Marshall trying to close down that gap. Georgia Lennitz. Keanu Pascal, Jack Moore, Reese Curzon. Now Curzon's in the mix and Curzon will want to go to the front. We've seen what he can do and we've still got 12 laps left in this one. Into the 180s, Beaumont and Marshall. And uh, Leonard's coming through there. Keep an eye on Curzon. He's right up there behind Pascal. Curzon will want to work his way. Curzon goes, Pascal goes wide. Curzon goes through onto the back of Jack Moore. Pascal did a bit of farming, managed to bring it back, kept it under control. Still Keegan Beaumont leading out. Beaumont there with Marshall. Then it's Georgia Lennitz. Moore, then Quirzen. Go down to turn number one. Quirzen on the back of Jack Moore and Quirzen's just going to dive straight in here. Yes, Quirzen into turn one. Quirzen takes back that position. Still the leaders. It's uh, Keegan Beaumont and William Marshall. Then it's... Uh, Going to be, uh, looks like, is it Quirzen up in third? I don't think so. I think it's Moore. No, it isn't. it's Georgia Lennitz. Guiana Pascal, sorry, Guiana Pascal, Jack Moore. Now, Reese Quirzen ahead of Jack Moore. 
So it's all happening out there. Here we go. Keegan Beaumont, William Marshall, Gianna Pascal, Reese Quiz and Jack Moore. And a whole gaggle of cars behind him. But they have a look there at William Marshall. He's closing down on the back there of uh, Keegan Beaumont. Keegan Beaumont's got his hands full. William Marshall is crowding him. Trying to work on his nerves a bit. But uh, Keegan Beaumont, a good carter. Gianna Pascal, there's Reese Curzon and Jack Moore behind him. Reese Curzon just wants to get into the zone and then he'll start getting quicker. Pedals hard. There's Curzon, there's Moore. Curzon's not worried about Moore, he just wants to get away from him. Again, search there of Gianna Pascal. There's your leaders, there's Pascal. Curzon, close out and uh, William Marshall's gone to the front. William Marshall's taken the lead there from Keegan Beaumont. Will Keegan sit back and take this one lying down? I don't know. He sits right there on the back of William Marshall. Keegan Beaumont, no slouch. He'll want to come back. Marshall leads out. There on screen you see Marshall. Marshall and Beaumont. Then it's Pascal. Then it's Quirzen and Moore. Pascal, here comes Quirzen and Moore. Quirzen gets his head done, getting the job done. Beaumont and Marshall are engaged in a serious battle here at the front end of the circuit as Marshall leads out. Person getting closer to Pascal, taking more with him. Well, it's starting to heat up here now. We have got eight laps left. Eight laps to go. And still Beaumont all over the back end of Marshall there. Not giving him space to operate in. He's sitting there right with him. Marshall not having it his own way now as Beaumont stays there with him. Here's Pascal with Curzon and Moore. Have a look, see, does Quirzen make a move? Quirzen gets good drive. Not close enough to mount any challenge, but right on the back of Gianna Pascal. There you see them going into golf club on screen as they work their way around. Quirzen sits there, meeting the sandwich between Pascal and Moore, but he's not uh, phased by that. He's got other ideas now as they work their way past the kiosk spin onto the main straight. Lovely dicing here for second, and, or for third and fourth and fifth. Have a look, see if we're going to have anything happen down in the 180s. Pascal Quirzen. Quirzen will pull the pin anywhere. He's that kind of a driver. But he's biding his time. He's trying to keep it tidy. And Beaumont's all over the back end of Moore. Look at Beaumont on the back end of Moore there, down into Golf Club. Beaumont sitting right there on the tailgate. Then it's Pascal Quirzen and Moore. Oh, this is brilliant stuff coming out of the leaders. Going through now, it's uh, Marshall still being hounded there by Beaumont as they cross the line. Then it's uh, going to be Pascal, Quirzen and Moore still. Keanu Pascal doing a sterling job. But look at Keegan Beaumont. Like a cheap suit all over the back end of Marshall there. Pascal's got Quirzen. Pascal closing his lines down, not affording Quirzen any space. What happens down the back straight? We'll have to wait and see. Is Quirzen close enough to mount a challenge? Quirzen just sits there, bides his time as they go in there. All right, Quirzen up on the inside of golf club. Quirzen in the inside of golf club goes through. Quirzen's gone up to third. Marshall and Beaumont. Yes, Quirzen up into third. And Moore as well also got through on Pascal. So Moore, Quirzen third, Moore four. There's your leader, Marshall, still with Beaumont right on his tailgate. Oh, this is blistering stuff. Now, does Quirzen start upping the ante? He's got uh, four and a bit laps to chase those two in front. Can he do it? Jack Moore is tracking him for pace. Quickest man on the track now, Sebastiano Iman, who's done in 12th. Marshall and uh, Beaumont embroiled in a titanic struggle here for the lead. Quirzen is now on the hunt. Is he going to up the ante? He's quick enough to go and find them. He might pull away from Moore. There you see he's now he's got that. He gets the bit between his teeth and gets the job done. Moore and Pascal trying to stay in touch with him. Brilliant stuff here at the sharp end of the field. Georgia Lennitz moves up back into uh, six behind Gianni Pascal. And uh, Pascal and Moore are embroiled in the battle and it releases uh, it releases Quirzen. Now Quirzen's going to get his work done. He's going to go chase down the leaders. All he wanted was breathing space and he knew the two behind will get up into mis get to mischief. Marshall still leading out over Beaumont. Quirzen's going to go hunt them down. There go the leaders up the main straight. There comes Quirzen. 
Cousin's got the hammer down, he's chasing hard. He's got about a, uh, oh, about a three second gap to close down. So he's got a bit of work to do. Marshall still leading out over Beaumont. Marshall doing sterling work to keep Beaumont behind him. Cousin's on the chase. Cousin chasing. Will he catch them? He took the last heat. Can he catch them? We've only got uh, two and a half laps to go. Marshall holding out. Like I said, anyone can win this race. I think Quirzen's got a mountain to climb to catch those leaders because they're not exactly hanging around. They're pedaling hard. 41 seconds dead is what they're doing now. And Keegan Beaumont up on the inside of William Marshall and Beaumont takes the lead back. Keegan Beaumont patiently waiting. Takes the lead back from Marshall. Will Marshall let this one go? We'll have to wait and see. Down the back straight to go and here comes Marshall bumping uh, Beaumont. Beaumont doesn't take it lying down. A great maneuver from him there. Down into golf club, Beaumont still leaning out. And, uh, well, let's have a look, see what happens. Last lap board about to come out. Last lap for Keegan Beaumont and William Marshall. Reese Quirson in third. And Marshall up on the inside of Beaumont, catches Beaumont napping. Up towards the 180s. Marshall, Beaumont looking to go around the outside. He's gonna try to switch back at him. Comes through, Marshall goes defensive. Doesn't afford Beaumont space. It's going to be a hard one now. What kind of speed do they get coming out of that final 180? Marshall gets the drive and he's going down. He's defensive, not allowing Beaumont to come through. Beaumont's looking up on the inside. He's going to try and take him, but uh, Marshall keeps the door firmly shut in his face. Uh, it looks like Marshall's going to do enough. The checkered flag is beckoning. William Marshall, Keegan Beaumont, goes through for the final time through the king there. And checkered flag, William Marshall, Keegan Beaumont second. Reese Quiz in third. Jack Moore, Keanu Pascal. And I think maybe it'll be Jordan Whaley that'll come through. Jordan Whaley, Georgia Lennitz, Keegan Martin. Um, then it's going to be Nicholas Lennox, Sebastian Eman, Josh Moore, James Nash came back to the race in 12th, Caleb Moss, Anul April, Caleb Woodendall, uh, Amani Kenyao, Christian Vahil, and uh, Spice Malula. Whoa, what a beautiful race this has been absolutely brilliant brilliant driver ability that's race number three out of the junior max i think next up will be mini max and then we go to the dd2s there's your uh, confirmation of your result on screen for the viewers at home one hundredth of a second there between the marshall and beaumont Right, ladies and gentlemen, next up, uh, race number three of the Minimax. Chapang Shisenwana on pole position with Rafael de Souza, Max Bossov, Michael Danks, Aryan Singh, and uh, Darrell Goodman. Another crackerjack uh, piece of entertainment awaits us here in the Minimax. They're on their uh, warm up lap. 
into the 180s they go, working their way around the circuit, getting some heat in those tyres. Full caution, yellow, double yellows waving. They are just sweeping around, getting heat in those tyres, work their way down the back straight. Before they form up, there is your uh, grid on screen for the viewers at home. You can see where they line up. Japan Shis and one on pole position. Work their way down into a golf club and then they'll start forming up. Slow it right down. Hey, coming out of golf club. Look at that. Educated discipline is the only way I can describe it as they just form up. Well, if there's anything you ever want to teach your kids, bring them to racing. It's competitiveness and discipline. And of course, oodles of fun as they come past our commentary position here around uh, past the pit bend looking nicely there from the right they're going to go around now they're going to hang a right they're going to hit those tram lines once they get into the tram lines we'll wait for the lights to go off here we go lights off and we go racing they dive down into uh, turn number one and uh, trying to pick up who's got the whole shot there's just the one was in pole he sits down down third is he going to work his way through? He's in that Gazoo Racing cart. He's fighting for second place. Comes back to second. And uh, it could be D'Souza who leads out. Everyone jostling for positions. They're trying to work their way through. They make their way down towards uh, Boss Sweep. That Gazoo Racing of Vicious uh, and Juana sits there. I think D'Souza is in pole as they work their way around towards us. We'll pick them up as they come towards our commentary position. And it is the... Uh, 547 cart it's Durrell Goodman that's gone to the front is it Durrell Goodman that's gone to the front indeed it is Durrell Goodman leads uh, Ayan Singh and Chabang Shisen Wana so it's much of a muchness that it was in the first heat and Shisen Wana is back ahead of Singh in the going to the 180s Durrell Goodman leads out this lad has been showing uh, all weekend he's got what it takes Goodman Shisen Yana Singh and uh, D'Souza, Max Bossoff and Michael Danks. Yeah, the who's who of karting in South Africa as they work their way down there into Golf Club. Lovely stuff there. Goodman leads out. Shisen Wana sits there in second place. Uh, Ariane Singh's up behind him. Up behind Singh, it's D'Souza, then it's Bossoff. Look at this cracker jack uh, group going down. Now there's a bit of jostling for positions there in turn one. Oh, I tell you what, needle stuff as they go up to us. Singh back up into second behind Goodman. And oh, you're getting bombed from all quarters. You don't know who's who and where's where. Out of the 180s, they work themselves. It's a right, then a left. And uh, they, it's a high speed train working its way down towards Boss Sweep. Still Goodman leading out, but there's 10 carts that are all nose to tail. So they work their way now out of Golf Club, around Golf Club, past Rotex. Goodman still leads out. They work their way around past the uh, pit bend up towards the uh, start finish line for uh, lap number three. So it's Goodman, it's Singh, it's D'Souza, Max Bossoff, Chapang Sessionwana, Michael Danks. And behind Danks, it is uh, Brody Darling. Darling sits there, Ronaldo Kuhn, then Lewis. Look at this. And Singh looks like Singh's gone to the front. Ariane Singh has gone to the front. Ahead of Goodman. Singh and Goodman. And in there is Chipang Shisenwana and Max Bosov and Michael Danks. Tell you what. You go and blink your eye. You just might miss something. Here they go. Once again, pass road tax sweep. Oh, and getting out of shape there, Singh. And everybody has a go. Wow. Who's gone to the front? Is it Shisenwana? No, it's Max Bossoff. Local end, Max Bossoff takes the lead. Max Bossoff goes to the front. Can Max hold on to that? Bossoff in front. And I tell you what, this young lad would like to stay in front. It's his home track. Bossoff leads out. We've still got uh, seven and a half laps to go. Bossoff, bit of a lead there over Goodman. Here comes Singh, anxious and Warner. Bossoff in the front. Bosov comes out there and leads out. Oh, I tell you what, he's under tremendous uh, attack from all quarters here. 
They're going to be chopping and changing. Boss off. Now they start diving to the inside. Darrell Goodman up on the inside. Oh, and Shisenwana gets uh, squeezed from all quarters here. You cannot make one wrong move and you're going to get gobbled up. Look at them all over each other. Three abreast into a corner. You can't do that. And Bossov says thank you. A little bit of breathing space. Oh, and sings there. Darrell Goodman in third. They work their way out of the 180s. Going down the back straight. And look at Bossov's lead. He's pulling away. And everyone's shouting, go Max, go. Local ad Max Bossov leads out. Into golf club. Oh, and someone goes off. Somebody went off there. I'm not sure it was. But Bossov still leads out. And Singer's chasing hard with Goodman up behind him. Oh, we couldn't pick up who that car it was. It was very quick. Bossov down into turn one. Works his way out. Bossov, Sing, Goodman, Danks, Shisson, Warner, Dowling, Lewis, Kun. And see who dropped down there. It is uh, D'Souza, Rafael D'Souza that dropped down there. So it was Raf D'Souza that went off. Bit unfortunate for him there. But still it's Max Bossov. Max is getting his head down. He's getting the job done as he goes down towards uh, Boss Sweep. Down into Golf Club. Young Max Bossov fighting hard. Local lad, local hero. Great little driver. Always does well here at regionals. Now in the South African Rotex Max Challenge uh, National. Bringing his best foot forward. Works his way down towards turn number one. We have got uh, five laps left to go. Five laps for Bossov to try and stay in front. Singh and Goodman and Danks and Shisson Wana and Darling Lewis Kun are all there behind him. Oh, I don't want to be in his shoes at this moment in time, but he keeps it tight. And Singh gets closer. Boss off that little bit of lead he had as they've now encroached his lead and he now needs to get the job done. He works hard down towards Boss Sweep. Keeps the door shut there. Singh's right on his tail. Singh's pushing him. Boss off's not phased, but he just wants to get the job done. Max Boss off. Doing well then as he works his way through. Singh and Goodman are right on the back of him there. I tell you what, it's like a bad cold. You can't shake it off. But Bossoff, Singh looks up on the inside. Singh dives to first and so too does Goodman. If you go wide, 10 cards will pass you. But Bossoff wants to come back. Bossoff sits in third. So Danks and Shisinwana are up behind him. Bossoff is the meat in the sandwich there. Doing extremely well there as they work out. Now, uh, Singh leads out. Singh leads out. Aran Singh is in the front there now with Darrell Goodman. And Bossov is getting attacked from all quarters. He's getting attacked from all quarters at this moment in time as they come past us. It's Singh, it's Goodman, it's Danks, it's uh, Boss, Shisinwana and, Bo and uh, Bossov. As they work their way over the line, you'll see the leaderboard change. Singh, Goodman, Danks, Bossov, Shisinwana, who's the quickest man on the circuit at the moment. Well, well, well. What a race. Danks up to third. Danks? Well local lad we don't want to favor the local lads but i reckon he's got a good shot here as much as but we enjoy bossoff's racing i think shizan one has gone through still seeing ahead of goodman danks is in third then it's uh shizan one and bossoff shizan one in the gazoo racing cart very distinctive sits in p4 the front five are very closely knit. It's anyone's game as they cross the line. Two laps to go. Two laps left. These are the closing stages. Keep an eye on this crowd now. Singh leads out. Does Goodman do anything? Is he keeping shit? Is he keeping Danks at the back? What is Michael Danks got to do? He's going to do something. He's got to do it soon. There's not many corners left to do. Now Danks gets a bit closer. Shisson Juan is there. Bossov is there. Oh man, it's too close for comfort at this moment in time. Down the back straight they go. Goodman. Sitting on the back of Singh. It's almost like he's protecting him at this moment in time. Maybe he wants to get through. Who knows? And Danks is pushing hard. Bringing with him uh, Shisson Wana and uh, Bossov. <coughs> Bossov running a bit wide there. Brings it back on track. Singh and Goodman. What is Danks going to do? Is Danks going to take a dive? A lunge? Not at the moment. It's the final lap. It's the final lap. You've only got... It's either now or never as they say. Coming up towards the 180s. No. I don't know. You're going to make it. Oh, look at uh, Shisin Wana up on the inside at Danks and Bossoff as well. Does Danks come back at Bossoff? No, he doesn't. Danks gets muscled out the way there. 
And still seeing leads out there with Darrell Goodman and Shisson Warners up to third for Gazoo Racing. Oh, look at that. And Max Bossoff's in P4. It's check it flag time. Check it flag time. Ariane Singh, Dural Goodman, uh, uh, Chisin Warner, Bossoff, Danks, Dowling. And up behind Brady Dowling, Ronaldo Kuhn, Ruan Lewis, Ruvan Maritz, Ashe Nagura, Mandume Kayamo, Ashan Reddy, Aidan Beaumont, uh, Nande Kayamo. Uh, Zayden Hussain, Rafael de Souza, Michael Arder, Zach Hindley, Ryan Falconer, Andre Betancourt, Eduardo Campos, Kian Reddy, and Tanda Yisu and Slapo. Followed by Andrew Retter. Well, well, well. What a brilliant race up front. Very dynamic, great racing from everybody. And uh, well done there to uh, Aryan Singh. Confirmation on screen of the results. a little bit of a delay for a track cleanup and uh, then we'll, I think we'll go and start with our race number three of the GD2s. Right, so the gates open and uh, race number three, DD2s. Sebastian Boyd up front with Matthew Whaley, Jason Kutsia, Bradley Liebenberg, Nicholas Vastanis, Olorata Zakudu, uh, Karaba Malamela, Ethan Steer, Dusan Radojevic, Tian Ilov, Jaden Jacobs, Zane Buten, Jordan Moodley, and Nikita Tiem. going to be a crackerjack race, race number three. Sebastian Boyd has got two out of two so far. Can he make it three out of three? Can he make it four out of four? We'll have to wait and see. 15 laps of absolute war. Lovely turnout here today at Kalani International Raceway, home of Western Province Karting in sunny Cape Town, South Africa. As they... Uh, Warm up and line up now to start the heat number three. The lights are on. They're going to break into the tram lines. They slow it right up. Into the tram lines they go. Lights off and we go racing down towards turn number one. And Sebastian Boyd gets that whole shot. Jason Goodsey is in there as well. So do Brady Limburg and uh, Nicholas Vastanis. Limburg in third, Vastanis in fourth. Matthew Wadley in five. Sebastian Boyd leads him out into the second 180. They work their way around the hangar right hand down the road, take straight away, make their way down towards Boss Corner. 
into Boyd Boss corner they go down into golf club everyone jostling all positions Sebastian Boyd leads them out they work their way around through the corner up uh, yeah past the kiosk bend they go Boyd here could see in second make their way up over the line Bradley Liebenberg followed there by Nicholas Vastanis then it's Matthew Wadley uh, Karaba Malamela and uh, up behind him uh, Ethan Steer Oh, the front three very closely knit at the moment. Could see holding his line, not affording Liebenberg any space. Nicholas Vistan is there, Matthew Wadley is there. They're all in it to win it as they work their way through down the back straight. They go to Boyd Boss sweep. And uh, Sebastian Boyd leading out down into Golf Club. He's got Jason Kutsia right there on the back of him, paying uh, close attention for Gazer Racing. And uh, they work their way around. Boyd still leads out. They work their way down towards uh, turn number one. Boyd trying to keep Kutsia behind him. Kutsia just biding his time. Brad Liebenberg sits there with him. Nicholas Vastanis, Matthew Wadley. They come up towards the 180s. Kutsia on the break, slides it in and takes the lead. Takes the lead and Liebenberg alongside Boyd and Liebenberg up on the top side of Boyd and Liebenberg's into the barrier. But he comes back. He's built tough as nails. And it has catapulted Kutsia into the lead of Vastanis is second and Boyd third, Wadley fourth. The dynamics have changed. And Kutsia has got a healthy lead and he's going to get pedaling. He will not be one to be held down. Well, how things can change in the blink of an eye. Jason Kutsia getting the job done. 12 laps left. Down into turn number one. Vastanis. And uh, up behind Vastanis is Boyd. Boyd down two places. Boyd's going to want to come back at Vastanis. Matthew Whaley's in there. Also a great little carter. He sits there as well. Then it looks like it's Ethan Steer who's up there in P5. Ethan Steer doing well in P5. He's up against uh, Elof. And then uh, Malamela. Well, have a look there. Vastanis is chasing now on the back of Kutsia. And Vastanis takes him Boyd and Wadley. The dynamics of this race have changed entirely. Well, Bradley Limburg's a bit farther to the back. He's, I don't know, he's going to have to work his way up. He's uh, lying down there in 12th position, lingering. There's a couple of people having a look there. So they work their way down the back. Still good see of Astana's taking with him Boyd. Well, they've still got uh, 10 laps to go. And uh, anything can happen. They go up over the start finish line. Good see of Astana's Boyd and Wadley. Followed there by Steer. Then, uh, Elo, uh, then it's Manamelo. Is it in now of Elo? Manamelo's on a charge as well. Good see leading out for Astana's getting a bit closer. Boyd's right on the back of Astana's. Then it's Wadley and Steer. Good see gets the job done. Down towards uh, Boss Sweep. Into Boss Sweep he goes. Down towards uh, Golf Club. Boyd on the back of uh, Vastanis there you see in picture Vastanis in the yellow cart chasing the back of uh, Jason Goodseer quickest man on the track now Sebastian Boyd he upstand he wants to get back to the front and he's still got nine laps to do it going into the 180, 180s now have a look see does anything happen Boyd still on the back of Vastanis Sebastian Boyd Vastanis holding his line, but Boyd's right there with him. They're chasing down Jason Kutsia. Matthew Wadley and Ethan Steer trying to get a bit closer. The rest of the field come through. Kutsia flying. Boyd sitting right on the back of Vastanis going into golf club. Boyd there on the back of Vastanis looking like he wants to pounce anytime soon. He wants to go back to the front. He doesn't like to sit there and lingering in P3. He wants to go back to the front, but Vastanis is equal to the task as they work their way down to turn number one. Kutsia, Vastanis, Boyd, Boyd lumps rump on the inside, not close enough to mount the challenge. Works their way back down towards the 180s. Vastanis and Boyd is having a look here and there and everywhere. Now he looks up on the inside and he goes to second in the second 180. Boyd slips through on Vastanis and goes back up to second. Steer in five. Up behind Steer is Malamela. Look at that move. Bang up on the inside. Easy does it, says Boyd. And gets through there on uh, Nicholas Vastanis. So still, Jason Kutsia leading out and Sebastian Boyd chasing him. 
Boyd wants to win. He's got his winning face on today. Chasing a very, very fast Jason Goodseer. And Jason Goodseer also not an easy man to get past. Boyd now trying to close up onto uh, Goodseer with Vistanis close by. Boyd comes in. There's Matthew Whaley doing well. There's your man uh, Jason Goodseer from Gaza Racing leading out. Sebastian Boyd, Nicholas Vistanis, Matthew Whaley and uh, Ethan Steer and Nicaragua Malamela. Down towards Boss Sweep they go. Dive down into Boss into golf club Vastanis up behind Sebastian Boyd and Jason Goodseer leading out Goodseer Boyd Vastanis Matthew Wadley Ethan Steer over the line they go they have now got uh, six laps left six laps to go Boyd trying to get a bit closer to Goodseer coming into the 180s slides it in brings it in nice and tight taking those corners as tight as possible to close down the lines Vistana sits in third. If the front two did anything, then he's going to be ready to pounce. Ethan Steer, head lying over. G-forces work on that neck. Oh, I don't want to have that neck tomorrow morning, that's for sure. As they work their way around golf club, still could see her leading out from Boyd. Boyd there sits looming large there behind Goodseer. And Vistana in third. Matthew Whaley just a slightly off the pace. Needs to up the ante. If he wants to join the party, the front three are breaking away now. With five laps to go into turn number one. It's uh, Goodseer and Boyd. Two local lads, great mates and great contenders. They don't give each other an inch. Boyd sitting on the back of Kutsia. Kutsia holds that corner tight to keep uh, Boyd behind him. They come out of the uh, 180s down the uh, Rotex straight and Boyd chasing Kutsia. They're getting away from Vistanis. He's uh, battling to hold on. The front two at a frenetic pace coming out of golf club. Work that uh, left-hander. Work their way past Rotex down towards the pit bend. We call it the pit bend or the chaos bend because the chaos sits in the pits. And Kutsia runs hard. Boyd chases and uh, measures him for pace there out of turn number one. And uh, Boyd still chasing Kutsia now into the 180s. Into the 180s they go. Take the corner. Kutsia gets the line. The door closed. Boyd follows suit. Rastan is about another half a second behind. There's Matthew Wadley. Ethan Steer. Up behind him is uh, Karaba Malamela. Then it's uh, Sakudu, then it's Eloff, then it's Liebenberg, then it's Jacobs and Radosevic. And uh, then it's uh, Jordan Moodley. But still it's Jason Kutsia leading out. Sebastian Boyd still sitting with him there. Boyd right on the tailgate there of uh, Jason Kutsia into the 180s they go. Kutsia in there, watch him tighten up that corner, doesn't afford uh, Boyd any space, he knows if he leaves the slightest space, Boyd's going to stick his nose in there Ethan Steer is battling with that neck with that uh, G-forces coming out of golf club it's still Kutsia there with uh, Boyd right up behind him they cross the line, they left two laps to go, two laps left in this one in heat number three Boyd sitting there with Kutsia. Is he going to pounce anytime soon? We'll have to see if their penultimate lap. They've got a lap and a half to go. Boyd sitting on the back of Kutsia. Kutsia attacking the circuit. Boyd is right there with him. Boyd right there with Kutsia. Is something going to happen? Are we going to live large here? Nicholas Vastanis now. Suddenly the quickest man on circuit. The 40.2. And that is blindingly fast. Into uh, golf club they go. Still good see leads out there with Boyd right up behind him. They exit golf club now past Rotex. Good see is on the gas. And Boyd follows suit. Last lap board to come out. Last lap. They make down towards turn number one. Still Jason good see Followed there by Sebastian Boyd. Into turn one they go. Work their way down towards the 180s. Keep an eye there on uh, Boyd. Will he do something or is he going to take second? Second means that he'll still have first for the day and uh, he's chasing hard in the back of Kutsia yeah they come out now Kutsia's got enough speed going down to boss corner he's going to hold on to it Jason Kutsia looks like he's going to take heat number three in the golf club they go Boyd sits up behind Kutsia I think Boyd's thinking with his head he said I'll take second I'll be happy with second points wise will put me on top of the charts and Jason Kutsia is going to take heat number three second Sebastian Boyd third Nicholas Vastanis fourth Matthew Wavy Ethan Steer five Brilliant racing. Steer, Caraba Malamela, 
Then it's Alarata Zakudu. Brad uh, Liebenberg comes up eighth after going off circuit. Tian Ilov, Jaden Jacobs. Then we wait for the rest of the field to come through. And uh, Dusan Radojevic goes through Jordan Moodley and uh, Nikita Team. Well, that was uh, DD2's race number three. And now for the DD2 Masters. Right, next up, DD2 Masters on uh, the front row. We've got Jonathan Peterson and Connor Hughes. Second row, we've got Jared Jordan and Bjorn Roos. Then we've got Roy Gruer and Christian Boucher from uh, Mozambique. Then it's uh, Justin Rogers, Grant Fienstra and Michael Jordan. Well, they had a calamity there in the uh, previous seat and it seems like they're A-OK -okay and ready to go again. See the starting grid on screen. Connie Hughes, Jonathan Pizza, Beyond Rose, Jared Jordan, Christopher Boucher from Mozambique sits there in the third row as they take to the circuit on their warm up lap. This is the final race of race number three, of heat number three. And then the heat number four will be what we call the Africa Open. Right, so the DD2 Masters, another 15 lap epic battle will uh, ensue. And uh, they will form up going down into golf club. See the sun shining at Kalani. There they go around golf club and they'll start forming up. They'll slow it right down. There, the DD2 Masters. Not a big field, but a very competitive one at that. Slotting in behind each other in their respective grid positions. Michael Jordan brings up the rear. There they go. They're working their way around now. They're going to go into the tram lines. Uh, lights off and we go racing down towards turn number one. Let's have a look-see. Jonathan Peterson gets the whole shot. Looks like Connie Hughes sits up behind him now as they work their way down towards... The 180s. Hughes goes around the outside. Looks for a switchback on Peterson. But Peterson is a little bit too clever for this. Nice and easy. In he goes. Jared Jordan sits in third. Jared want to go to the front. He's won two out of these three races already. And uh, he'll be looking to go to the front. Jonathan Peterson leads out with Connie Hughes. They dive down into Boss. Into Golf Club. Work their way around. And uh, led out there by Jonathan Peterson. Comes through past uh, the chaos pen. Peterson leads out, he's going to cross the line. Connie Hughes, Jared Jordan, they cross the line, there it comes up. Bjorn Roos is there in fourth. Roy Gruber, Christian Boucher, Justin Rogers, Fienstra, Fienstra and then uh, Michael Jordan. Jared Jordan wants to get through on Connie Hughes. He doesn't want to get held up. He's looking, he wants to go find uh, Jonathan Peterson. But uh, Connie Hughes, a uh, wily old campaigner, and make sure that he stays exactly where he is. Peterson looking to break away. Very quick people there. Beyond Roos in picture in P4. 
down in the golf club they go Jared Jordan is very quick he wants to get past Connie Hughes you do not want Jonathan Peterson to pull away and he is he's creating a bit of a gap let's have a look see when he goes over the line what kind of gap he's got yeah half a second it's already half a second you don't want him to get away Connie Hughes is he holding up uh, Jared Jordan and Bjorn Roos coming in here Jordan up on the inside and he gets through and so too does Bjorn Roos Roos goes through to third and Connie Hughes gets relegated to P4 now Jared Jordan's going to go look for Jonathan Peterson Jordan gets on the gas and pulls away from Roos they're down into boss sweep Connie Hughes cannot be very happy with that he's going to want to come back and be on Roos and uh, behind them it's uh, Roy Gruer and Christian Boucher from Mozambique as they work their way through now up over the line 12 laps to go Jared Jordan chasing hard on the back of Jonathan Peterson Beyond Ruiz up in P3. Connie Hughes, Roy Gruer, Christian Boucher, Justin Rogers, and uh, Grant Fienstra, followed there by Michael Jordan. Look at them. They're all so close for comfort. But still, Jonathan Peterson leads out. He works his way out of the 180, down the back straight, down towards Boss Sweep, and Jared Jordan is chasing out. Beyond Ruiz is there in third. Look at the heads down as they're giving it 11 tens down into Golf Club. Work their way around Golf Club. Why do we call it Golf Club? Because from the air, it looks like a Golf Club. Now they work their way around past the uh, pit bend. Up towards the line, they cross the line. They will have 11 laps. 11 laps to go. And uh, Jared Jordan getting a little bit close to Jonathan Peterson. Bjorn Ruiz is in there as well. Jordan is pushing hard. He wants to get past. He wants to get to the front. He wants to get the job done. He's closing up on Peterson. Jonathan Peterson, not an easy man to campaign past. And uh, he'll be wise to the wind. They work their way down towards Boss Sweep. Peterson, Jordan, Bjorn Roos, Roy Gruer, Christian Boucher, they're all giving it good honors. And Connie Hughes has dropped down to seventh. Has he got a problem? Connie Hughes has dropped right down to seventh. Clearly he's uh, got some kind of problem or he's made a silly mistake somewhere. He's not there with him. He's one of the quickest men around here, but he's definitely got a problem. So Jared Jordan now, very close now. Jordan looking up on the inside. Oh, Gruer cuts him off. He wants to come back. He's eager. He needs to just bide his time. You've still got nine and a half laps to go, buddy. Anything can happen. There's Connie Hughes in picture. He wants to work his way through. Jonathan Peterson trying to keep uh, Jared Jordan at bay. Jared runs through. He's very quick. He's become a very good carter over the last few years. That's Jared Jordan. Right there on the tailgate, Bjorn Ruiz still the MP3. Jared Jordan sitting there. Jared looks up on the inside. Oh. Peterson takes that line that he dives across his bound. Keeps him in total check up towards the 180 as they come. Jared Jordan is this way, that way. But Jonathan Peterson is such a wily campaigner. He's just keeping him at bay. He's not phased by it. He knows he's there and he's doing everything just to keep him in check. Right down they come. Peterson ever so defensive keeps Jordan behind him but Jordan right there on his tailgate here's Christian Boucher in picture Christian Boucher pushing very hard and uh, Bjorn Roos in third starting to close up the end and now Peter's again defensive because he knows now that Jared is uh, all over the back of him Jared looking to go around the outside tries to switch back on him Pittis is wise to the win. He keeps that line closed. And Bjorn Roos is looking for a way through. Oh, it's starting to eat up, folks. It's starting to eat up. Look at this. We've got a five-way tie. Brilliant stuff. And Connie Hughes is coming back. Connie Hughes is coming back. He's sitting on the back there of Christian Boucher. Connie Hughes is coming back. It's anyone's race. we still got... Uh, seven laps to go seven laps left in this one and Jonathan Peterson is fighting for his life and uh, they're all over each other look at this Bjorn Roos Jared Jordan's in there as well then it's Roy Gruer and Justin Rogers everybody wants a piece of the pie oh we've lost somebody we've lost somebody in the 180s well, we didn't see what happened in the 180s there. We definitely lost someone. Two cards are off. It looks like it's Gruer and uh, Rogers. 
and are they coming back on circuit? That's changed the dynamics. So now it's Peterson, it's Jordan, it's Ruiz, it's Boucher, it's Hughes. Oh, I tell you what, Jonathan Peterson is doing everything right to keep everyone behind him. He's under immense stress. Let's have a look, see, Jared Jordan there now. Peterson goes defensive, he doesn't want to happen. And, well, you got Christian Boucher from Mozambique in P4 and he's sitting right on the tail end there of Bjorn Ruiz. Our man from Mozambique is in with a shot and Connie Hughes is up behind him. They cross the line, we're going to have five laps left, folks. Five laps, what's going to happen? Peterson goes defensive. And you don't want to try something stupid and lose your place. Look at this nose to tail stuff. Anybody's game. And Bjorn Rus up on the inside. I said don't do something. Jordan does it. Does he come back? No, he doesn't. Bjorn Rus does it all right. Christian Boucher is in there as well with Connor Hughes. It's now heating up. And Jonathan Peterson is doing everything right. Can Bjorn Rus now give Peterson a bit of an uphill battle? Jared Jordan sits the MP3. Across the line, we've got four laps left in this one. Oh, this is too tight, folks. Too close for comfort. Jonathan Peterson doing a sterling job keeping everyone behind him. But I tell you what, it's now heating up. Bjorn Ruiz looks up on the inside. Peterson crosses his bow. Keeps him brutally honest now as they work their way down towards the 180s. It's Peterson, it's Ruiz, it's Jordan, it's Boucher, it's Hughes. Anybody can take this one. One slight mistake and you are going to lose four places. Peterson and Bjorn Ruiz trying in the inside. Peterson keeps him in check. They rub. Rubbing is racing. Bjorn puts his hand up and says, you know what? I think of you. <laughs> well, never mind. Here we go. Still Peterson leads out. He's done this before. He knows what it's about. Bjorn Ruiz wants to get through. Jared Jordan having a look there at Bjorn Ruiz. No place to get through. Then Christian Boucher and... Uh, Connie Hughes. Oh, look at this five-way tie. This is dynamic stuff. Rubbing is racing. Everyone wants to get... Ah, oh, Jared Jordan goes straight through. Jordan to the front and Boucher goes second. A little push and Connie Hughes is in third. Have a look there. Jonathan Peter gets a rub and he loses it and so too does Bjorn Ruiz. And Jared Jordan's got the lead with uh, two, well, two laps to go. And, uh, oh, this is going to be brilliant stuff here now. Jared Jordan leads out and he's not going to want to relinquish that lead. He's got about a half a second over Christian Boucher and Boucher must be happy with second place. Connie Hughes is going to have a go at him. Hughes is going to push now to get past Boucher. Connie Hughes wants to come through. He was lingering in fifth. Now he's in third. Christian Boucher wants to hold on there. Peterson back up to fourth and then Bjorn Ruiz in five. Jared Jordan leading out. He's got the bit between his teeth and he's going to be biting it hard. Bjorn Ruiz dejected in five. Here comes Connie Hughes up on the inside of Boucher. He pulls out. It's a beautiful maneuver coming out of Connie Hughes and he moves up to second. They're going to start their penultimate lap as they cross the line. Jared Jordan leads out over Connie Hughes, Christian Boucher and Jonathan Peterson. Penultimate lap. Jared Jordan leads out and Jonathan Peterson is having a look at Boucher out of holes and oh, and they collide and Boucher goes off and Peterson and here comes Bjorn Ruiz through to take third place. Is this a race or what? In the meantime, Jared Jordan down the road there with Connie Hughes and they've blown away from the rest of the field. Yellow flags waving. The last lap board's going to come out. Jared Jordan there into golf club followed by Connie Hughes. Jordan getting the job done. He works his way past Rotax followed by Connie Hughes. They are way, way ahead of the rest. There goes Jordan, there goes Hughes. Last lap board is out. And uh, Jared Jordan doing everything right. Third place man is uh, Bjorn Roos now after his calamity. And still no one over. Then it's uh, Fienstra has moved up to fourth. So Grant Fienstra goes to fourth, but Jared Jordan is doing it all right. He's making his way down towards boss sweep with... Uh, Connie Hughes in close pursuit, but I think he's done enough here for race three. Jared Jordan's going to make it three out of three by hook or by crook. He doesn't mind. He'll take it. He says, I'll take that. Check it flag time. Jared Jordan takes it from Connie Hughes. 
third place will go to Bion Ruiz. And then uh, Grant Fienstra. Well, well, well. Big race of attrition. Followed there by Kristen Boucher and uh, Justin Rogers. And uh, Michael Jordan and Jonathan Pettitzer out of that one. Well, Jared Jordan absolutely elated with a 3 out of 3 result. He's doing what he wants to do. I tell you what, I'll be punching deep holes in the clouds, my boy. Trust me, it's the way to do it. Fantastic stuff coming out of Jared Jordan. He is absolutely elated with that result. Brilliant stuff out of the DD2 Masters. That man doing it all right. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to proceed now to heat number four of all the categories. And this is the Africa Open. This is where it all counts. This is where we play for the whole bag of marbles. The whole bag of marbles is up for play here now. The winners of these respective categories are the guys that are going to win their tickets to go to the World Finals in Italy later this year. Wow. It has been an absolutely eventful bit of racing. Three scintillating heats that we've had from yesterday to today. And I cannot believe we're going into the finals already. Unbelievable. Three heats and a final, as they say. This is going to be absolute war. The spectators and the viewers around the world watching this, I sincerely hope you're enjoying it. It has been an absolute spectacle and still there's more to come. How time flies when you're having fun as they say. It's been a, a great turnout, some lovely spectators here today. And uh, well, to all the drivers, I wish you the best of luck for the fourth and final heat. And uh, the entertainment has been absolutely out of the top draw. As a matter of fact, out of the top cupboard. And we are still set for some more exciting driving. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a bit humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. 
Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. We see the carts coming up onto the grid on their trolleys, their respective trolleys. It's uh, basically a, a parade for the Africa Open, all the young chargers. In the Bambino, it's heat number four. This is the race for all the marbles, as they say. On pole position, Roddy Harris alongside him, Joaquin Hamaldin, second row. It's Abraham Kalpi and Caleb Langefeld. Sebastian uh, Shuttleworth, Alonso Dolivera. Caleb Rogers, Aston Veal, Liam De Beer, and Russell Yusufat. I wouldn't even like to be part of this. My nerves will be shot. How exciting can it be? Everyone down there. Getting ready now for their uh, fourth and final race of the day. Well, to our viewers around the world, around South Africa and the world, and to the spectators, yeah, it's been a wonderful day thus far. Wonderful two days racing. And I'm sure you've been enjoying yourselves to the uh, ultimate. And uh, the fourth and final race, I think, is going to bring a lot of excitement to us. And uh, it's going to be very close. It's going to be absolutely battles royal out there. And uh, I don't know if you are as excited as I am for this fourth and final round. And uh, I think the racing is only closer than it has been for the rest of the weekend. Right, so uh, hang on to the edge of your seats and we'll go racing pretty shortly. Right, for the viewers at home, you can see the uh, cards still there, some pictures being taken, some photographs. Young lad says, I'm not photogenic, I don't want to be part of the photo. <laughs> uh, great stuff. And we all see all the cards racked and stacked, ready to be unpacked and ready to go racing, prepped to the nines. All the young lads there for their group photo and make their way back to their carts. All the photographers on uh, duty.
carts are packed onto their respective uh, grid positions. They'll get one uh, sighting lap and then they'll go racing. Photographers all getting their shots in for the socials. Carts getting started. Right, so the young chargers are in their carts. They're about to get going. Last words being said there to the respective chargers as the team managers walk away. And uh, Radi Harris, Yakin Hamaldin on the front row, Radi Harris on pole. Caleb Lingefeld and Abraham Kalpi sit in the second row there with Alonso D'Oliveira and Sebastian Shuttleworth. It's their fourth and final heat of the day for the Bambinos. Watch the marshal, the flag marshal, he'll put up his hand and give you that one lap to go. And says, right lads, off you go. There we go, they roll off the grid. They're going to have their sighting lap and then they're going to go racing all solid eight laps of it for these little lads. And man, have they been racing hard today. Tonight, when they hit that bed, they will sleep like the proverbial logs. Best thing you can do. In they go. Work their way around. Have a look at our timing sheets. Timing sheets not up yet. As so they work their way around. Radi Harris and Yakin Hamaldin sit on the front row. They work their way down the back straight, getting some heat into those tyres. Oh, it's going to be an absolute titanic battle there on screen. You can see the grid as they work their way down towards Boss Sweep. They go around the corner and they'll start slowing it down as they make their way towards the start finish. It's a rolling start, as you've seen most of the day. Round road to expand through the right hand kink. Make their way towards the pit S. Alongside each other. Your heart's in your mouth. You're ready to go racing. They work their way around. They go into the tram lines. Watch the lights. Lights off and we go racing. Eat number four and away go the Bambinos. Down into uh, turn number one. They're all jostling for positions. Work their way through. And oh, someone has spun out. It's the uh, 29 of Ebrim Kalpi that spun out. And it looks like it's Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingefeld, and Yakin Hamaldin that worked their way into the 180s. These three had been each other's throats all day. Working their way through. Making their way down the road tax straight. And already looking for a way through. And Roddy Harris going defensive on lap number one. Can you be an. Uh, Yakin Hamaldin around the outside but there's no space he'll have to bide his time he's got another seven laps left to do anything and uh, well like I said this one's for all the marbles you can go defensive from the first lap but I don't know if you can hold that because someone's going to give you a nudge or a push yeah they come up over the line they fan out they fan out Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingefeld, Yakin Hamaldin the front three are at it and uh, work their way down towards the 180s already they're going defensive Hamaldin looks to go around the outside no space he can't do anything and if they're going to go fully defensive it's going to bunch them all up 
Roddy Harris holding out there. And that uh, last three, second three there of uh, Alonso, Dolivera, Russell Yosefat and Sebastian Shuttleworth are going to join the party pretty soon. Roddy Harris, Caleb Lingefeld and Yakin Hamaldin. Well, I don't know. Can you defend for eight laps? We'll have to wait and see, Roddy Harris. Can you do it? They work away past us now. They're going to cross the line. They cross the line. They're going to have six laps left. He goes defensive. Hamaldin stays on the outside. Three abreast going down into turn number one. Is it going to work out? No. Status quo remains. They work their way down towards the 180. Well, Roddy Harris is at race pace, but he's... Uh, Trying to hold out, Lingefeld holds out too. Then it's uh, going to be Dalavira. It's going to be Yusufat and Shuttleworth up behind him. They embroiled in their own little battle three-way tie. A little bit more colourful, all that yellow and green there. Oh, they're having also their tussle. And look at this, everyone goes defensive. Kamaldin up on the inside. Kamaldin's up on the inside. He's always looking for a way through. And going through is uh, Lingefeld to first. Caleb Lingefeld sees the opportunity and goes around the outside of Roddy Harris. And Roddy Harris couldn't keep that going. They were jostling and he just kept his line. You see, if you defend for one, another passes you. And this is exactly what I was saying. As they cross the line, they will have five laps left. Now they're still uh, guarding and guiding and trying to get through. And uh, have we had a change up? We'll see now. Still Lingefeld, Hamaldin's in there, Hamaldin's gone to second, and Roddy Harris to third. Like I said, you can only defend for so long, and then the guys come through. So now it's Lingefeld and Hamaldin and Harris, and up behind him there, it's going to be uh, Russell Yusufat, followed by Alonso Dolivera and Sebastian Shuttleworth. Now, Hamaldin having a drag to the line, Hamaldin's going to take the lead, and Hamaldin goes to the front. Joaquin Hamaldin goes to the front and takes the lead coming out of golf club as he goes around road tax. Brilliant stuff here. As he gets cracking on the pace now, when he crosses the line, we'll be in the halfway mark. Now the crowds are getting on their feet and egging on their drivers now as they cross the line. Hamaldin leads out. He's attacking the circuit. He doesn't go defensive. He wants to get away from them. Down into turn number one he goes. Hamaldin leads out. Lingefeld's in second and uh, Roddy Harris in third. Yakin's getting his head down, he's getting the job done. Now he's starting to crack on the pace. We know this little lad is quick. A man that only came onto the scene about three years ago and has become an absolute stunning little carter. He's got racing in his blood now as he works his way down the road tax straight. Gets on the gas and gets going. And Lingefeld and Harris. Harris up on the inside of Lingefeld. Roddy Harris up on the inside of Lingefeld. He's going to No, Lingefeld cuts his nose off. Lingefeld in second. There you see it on screen and uh, still Hamaldin leads out Lingefeld and Harris embroiled in a bit of a tussle there Hamaldin needs breathing space so he can get away from them and uh, Alonso Dolivera Sebastian Shuttleworth and Russell Yusufat also embroiled in their little battle now lying in fourth place now is Alonso Dolivera Hamaldin still leading out down towards the 180s they go Hamaldin holds out now. Caleb Lingefeld's all over him like a cheap suit as he tries to keep him at bay. Hamaldin attacking the circuit. We've got two and a half laps to go. Yakin Hamaldin has a look around to see who's trying to attack him. Works his way down the back straight. Now Lingefeld up on the inside. He's got good drive. Lingefeld's got good drive. He's going. He's going. And Hamaldin slots into second. He's got uh, Roddy Harris around his outside. And Hamaldin's got to protect himself. He's the meat and the sandwich here. Roddy Harris has gone to the front. Oh no, Lingefeld, sorry, Caleb Lingefeld leads out. Caleb Lingefeld leads out. Comes to the line, he's going to start his penultimate lap. I tell you what, it's going to be a tight race. Lingefeld goes uh, defensive and Hamaldin's on the outside. And Hamaldin goes to the front with great drive. Hamaldin goes back into the lead. Hamaldin leads out. Ahead of uh, Lingefeld and Harris. Oh, this is nail-biting stuff. This is on the edge of your seat. Hamaldin leading out. Caleb Lingefeld trying to close him down. Or should I say, yeah, and then Roddy Harris. Then it's uh, 
Alonso de Oliveira, Sebastian Shuttleworth and uh, Russell Yosefite in their little battle. Now up on the inside, it's Caleb Lingefeld. Lingefeld up on the inside and he goes past the uh, Hamildin. They're going to be starting their final lap. Ooh, I don't want to call this one. It's going to be too close for comfort. The front three are absolutely nose to tail stuff here. Anyone's race. Three abreast going into uh, boss sweep. Some of the tail enders. But here they go. Side by side as they work their way down towards turn number one. Who's going to get the whole shot? Is it Hamaldin again? Hamaldin back to the front. Hamaldin goes back to the front. And he's got Lingefeld all over his back end. He's going to have to try and defend his uh, position now. Oh, you cannot call this one, folks. You can't even, can't even script this. Now, if Hamaldin's clever, he's going to go defensive. He'll go up on the inside of the track. Yep, he does. He's looking up in the middle. He's going to keep Lingefeld behind him. Lingefeld's pushing. Lingefeld looks up on the inside, but uh, Hamaldin holds his line and goes down into golf club. Lingefeld holds off Harris. Has Hamaldin done that enough? The checkered flag is waiting. The checkered flag is waiting. Yakin Hamaldin is on the gas. The crowds are on their feet. Hamaldin, is he going to get the checkered flag? Yakin Hamaldin takes the checkered flag from uh, Caleb Lingefeld and Roddy Harris. And Sebastian Shuttleworth will come through in P4. What a brilliant race from these young lads. Russell Yusufat, he comes through in five. Alonso D'Oliveira in four. Abraham Kalpi comes home in six. It looks like we've lost Sebastian Shuttleworth. Aston Viel comes through. Then Caleb Rogers and Liam De Besa. Shuttleworth went off the circuit somewhere. What an astounding race. Well done, Mr. Yakin Hamaldin. There on screen you see the uh, final outcome of that race. Unbelievable stuff. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. 
when others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Right, for the viewers at home, the Senior Max uh, competitors are getting their cars lined up to uh, do their fourth and final heat. This is the packet, or should I say this is all for the packet of marbles. Clark of the course there in the white t-shirt, talking to everybody. All the cars parked sideways there on the main grid. On uh, pole position is Luca Worley together with John o. Wilson, then it's Tate Bishop. Shal Fisser, Mikhail Basenot, Mohamed Wally, uh, Mauro Deleuze, Josh Smith, Roshan Goodman, Storm Lanfear, uh, Neelan Marks, Divian Naidu, Kian Spies, Travis Minge, Brenner Van Avalt, Ken Schwartz, Nzalo Koza, Cole Houston, Shrin Naidu, Ethan Burstander, Ethan Deacon, Laxon Lau, uh, Carmen Avello, 
Jude Stewart, Kadiana Nguenya, Kobus Reineke, Kian Fussell and Oliver Hintenhaus. Right, so we're just uh, waiting for the start of the fourth and final heat of the Senior Max. It's going to be one epic race now as the uh, mechanics all start leaving the grid. They'll have one formation lap and then they'll get racing. It's going to be a 15 lap battle, all the carts facing inwards. Is our commentary position on screen, the commentary tower, that's where we are residing. Back onto the main grid, all the photographers and the marshals just getting everything ready. Right, and they roll off the line. We're about to get 15 laps of mayhem underway. One, two, five, Senior Max. The Rotax Max Challenge, round one, South Africa National, together with the Africa Open. This is the Africa Open, Senior Max Challenge. Full caution yellow as they put some heat into the tires and those brakes spinning around, getting uh, it all warmed up. Then they're going to form up. Right, so they're all racked and stacked and ready to rumble as they work their way past the pit bend. They're about to hit the tram lines, they're going to wait for the lights to go off. They come around, they hit the right hander. Into the tram lines they go. They'll start uh, accelerating slowly. Lights off and away we go down towards turn number one. Let's have a look, see who gets that whole shot. It's Luca Whirly that goes into the whole shot. Luca Whirly leads out. Who's up there behind him? It looks like it's uh, Jono Wilson. Charles Fiss is in there. Oh, and all kinds of things happening out there. Luca Valley leads out. And uh, they're all pushing. Come out there. Luca Valley gets his head done, gets the job done. Is that Tate Bishop in second place? Tate Bishop sits there behind him. Charles Fiss is probably there too. They go down into uh, golf club. Work their way out of golf club. Here comes Luca Valley. Tate Bishop sits up behind him and Charles Fiss is in there too. They work their way around now past the pit pin and go up over the line for the first lap of 15. Cross the line. There we go. Luca Veli, Tate Bishop, Charles Fisser, uh, Michael Fisser, uh, Charles Fisser, Mara Deleuze, Mohamed Wally, Mikhail Beside Note, and Roshan Goodman. Well, well, well. Now already it's happening. It's all happening. They are mugging each other from all quarters and Charles Fisser goes to the front. Charles Fisser goes to the front and you're going to battle hard to catch him. Tate Bishop is going to chase. 
if Charles Fiss is in the front, he's a difficult man to get past when he sits in front. He uses the track and some. Tate Bishop pushes hard. Luca Verli is in there. Have a look at how they go over the line. Oh, and someone runs horribly wide. Comes back onto circuit. Fissa leads out. Bishop, Burley, Mohamed Wally, Mikhail Basenad, Mara Deleuz, Rashawn Goodman, John Wilson, Storm Lanfier, and Zala Koza, Ken Schwartz, Divian Naidu, Laksanao, Camo Novello, Jude Stewart. And, uh, well, once again put Josh Smith at the back of the pack, but look at Charles Fissa go. Charles Fisser, Tate Bishop and Luca Verli together there with Mohamed Wally. You cannot ask for a better front row. So they work their way through now. Past the kiosk bend they go. Down up over the line. When they cross the line they will have... Oh, it's 20 laps. 20 laps. They've got 17 laps to go. It's an absolute major race. 20 laps. Fisser still leads up. Fisser and Bishop. And look at Luke of Early coming in there. Verley looks up on the inside of Bishop and Luke of Early goes to second. Bishop gets forced a bit wide, tries to come muscle his way back. And uh, Bishop now and Muhammad Wally is looking up on the inside of Bishop. And someone's run wide. Someone's gone right off the circuit. I don't, couldn't see who that was. Uh, it could be Mikhail Besaid notes. I'm not sure. As they cross the line, we'll see how they go. It's Bessena that went off track. Mikhail Bessena that went off circuit. And Charles Fisser is getting away. Charles Fisser is getting away. And when he gets away, he's a hard man to recover. Luca Verli is in second. Mohamed Wally is on his case. And Tate Bishop now wants to get back into that party. It's a high-speed train. Everyone's at it. But at the moment, it's Shal Fisser and he's getting away. He's Luca Valley holding up Wally and Bishop. We'll have to wait and see. But Shal is getting away. And when he goes, he's gone. Shal Fisser is a very difficult customer to reel in. But when he gets his head down and gets the job done, he's going to get away from you. Mohammed Wally is on the back there of Luca Valley. Wally up on the inside and Wally goes to second. Wally goes to second. Bishop now on the back of early. Bishop will want to get through. They come out of the second 180 and it's going to be Muhammad Wally. Luca Valley and Tate Bishop is pushing. Muhammad Wally is up to second. Another difficult customer. But there's a high speed train behind them. It's going to be the likes of Johnny Wilson, Mauro Deleuze, uh, Storm Lanfear, Roshan Goodman. Nice to have Storm Lanfear up so high. He will want to get cracking. Lanfear is ahead of the pack there. Storm Lanfear, one of the local boys and local heroes. He is also very quick when he has time. But still, Charles Fisser leads out into the 180s. He's followed there by uh, Muhammad Wally and uh, that man Luca Verley together with Tate Bishop. Up behind Bishop is John Wilson, then Storm Lanfear. Lanfear head of that whole pack and Lanfear is very quick. Part of the great uh, Lanfear racing family. Shal Fisser has a healthy lead there over uh, Muhammad Wally. We've still got 15 laps to go. No, 13. Sorry, 13 laps to go. My mathematics fails me. Still Shal Fisser leading out. Muhammad Wally second. Luca Verli third. And Tate Bishop four. Don't think that Shal is going to do anything wrong. It's for Wally to go and fetch him. Well, reeling him in slowly is Muhammad Wally as they come out of the 180s. Fisser gets his head done, gets the job done, down towards Boss Sweep. Dives down into Golf Club. There's Wally, there's Rarely, there's Bishop. That's your front four. John Wilson in five. Storm Lanfear six. Mauro Deleuze there in seventh. Then uh, Divian Naidu. La Behind uh, Divian Naidu is Laxon Laos, Jude Stewart in ten. That's your top ten. Still Fisser leads out. Down into the 180s he goes. He's doing a ring by the book. And, uh, well, Luca Valley is sitting on the back there of Muhammad Wally. He's not going to be an easy man to pass. John o. Wilson's closing up on the back there of Bishop. Bishop head down, trying to catch those two in front of him. Luca Valley thinks he's got to have a go now sometime at... Uh, 
Mohamed Wally. Wally sits back and relaxes as he drives down there. Down they go towards uh, turn number one. They have now got 11 laps left. 11 laps to go in this one. Senior Max final. Shal Fisser leads out. Mohamed Wally is second. And, uh, well, that man, Luca Valley, is hanging on to Wally, not letting him go. Tate Bishop and Jono Wilson are coming along for the ride. Mohamed Wally lies back like he's on a Sunday cruise, but trust me, he's working overtime. Fissa still leads up. Wally is getting a bit closer to Fissa. Fissa still holding out. Like I say, to catch Fissa is one thing, to pass him is another. Here they come, down into the 180. There's Fissa, there's Wally. There is uh, Verley, and then it's Bishop and Wilson. Oh, this is a real, real tight race. And Wally knows he's being challenged there by Luca Valley. Valley sits right behind him. Luca Valley is a pint-sized lad. He's got weight on his side. But they all have to make the weight. So no one advantage over anyone else. Bishop now losing touch with Luca Valley. But Valley is staying there with Wally. There's Fisser, Wally, Valley, Bishop, Wilson. That's your front five. Fisser into the 180s, followed there by Muhammad Wally. There you see Shal Fisser looks up as to break the G-force in his neck. Muhammad Wally sits up there with Luca Valley, Tate Bishop and Jono Wilson. Fisser head down, Wally head down as uh, Luca Valley just sits with him. He's like he's glued to him. Works their way out of golf club, hang a left past Rotex, make their way down towards Pit Bend. Are they getting closer to Fisser? Uh, it's, the cap is lessening. Fastest man on the track, Luca Valley, 40.67. So, uh, definitely there, thereabouts. Valley now all over the back of Wally. Wally trying to defend. He's got a problem. He's defending. He wants to catch Fisher, but now he's to defend. Jono Wilson up on the inside of Tate Bishop. Wilson goes to four. Good maneuver there. Wilson looks up on the inside and shuts out uh, Tate Bishop as the leaders make their way out of golf club. Fissa leads out, Wally's close and brings with him Luca Verley now. Wilson ahead of Bishop. The leaders now make their way over the line. When they cross the line, they've got seven laps left, seven laps to go. And now it's Fissa, Wally and Verley. And out of these three, I think Luca Verley thinks he could win this race. That's why he's sticking with Wally. He's got the pace. He's sitting with him. Fisser knows he's got company. You don't, you do not upset Fisser. He will make sure Wally does not get past. And Fisser and Wally have been in each other's throats since Friday afternoon. And Luca Valley is hanging in there. Luca Valley is hanging in there. His first ever Senior Max final that he's in. Luca Valley. Sitting there behind Mohamed Wally and uh, Charles Fisser. John Wilson, Tate Bishop. Then uh, still behind them, it's uh, going to be uh, Storm Lanfear still there. And what's happened? Oh, it was a bit close there in the first 180. And Jono Wilson and Tate Bishop are getting closer. It's going to be a five-way tie pretty soon. Jono Wilson gets on the gas. He's chasing the back of Luca Valley. We have still got uh, five laps left in this one. Well, things are changing up at the back there. We'll let you know as I go over the line. You'll see the leaderboard. But still, it's uh, Shal Fisser. You'll want to keep Mohamed Wally behind him. As they go there now into uh, turn number one. They work their way out at turn number one, make their way up towards the 180s. Wally is trying to draw Fisser out. Fisser will not fall for that joke. He will keep it tight. Wally's there with him. They come out of... Uh, the last 180 is Wally's got good drive but Fisser runs middle of the track doesn't afford any space Wally's looking to uh, try and bully him he won't fall for that one he's holding on Luca Valley's there John o. Wilson is there Tate Bishop might join the party soon 
Luca Valley still sits there behind Mohamed Wally, who's behind Shal Fisser into turn number one. They go, work their way out down towards the 180s. Yeah, they come towards us. Fisser goes defensive. Valley's looking around the outside. Wally goes through and Valley goes through. Fisser's relegated to third and John Wills is there. Fisser's fighting with Valley. Valley gets the upper hand and takes second. Wally goes to the front and Wally breaks away and there goes Valley. Here comes Wilson on the back of Fisser and Bishop is there. Now it's starting to eat up, folks. We've got three and a half laps to go. Mohamed Wally leads out. Will Luca Valley really mean? Are we going to go down to the wire with this one? There's a uh, flag out for a not so uh, good card. Can't pick up the number. But Mohamed Wally leads out. Luca Valley is going to try and reel him in. Here we go down to the 180s. Luca Valley pushing hard, trying to kill him. Mohamed Wally. Then it's uh, Charles Fisher, John Wilson, and Tate Bishop. Anything can happen. You have to uh, not blink because you're going to miss something. Wally's on the gas. Luca Valley pushing hard, trying to reel him. Mohamed Wally. And they cross the line, they left two laps to go. Wally cracks on the pace. Luca Valley's trying to reel him in, but Mohamed Wally is pressing hard. Wally's got a bit of a gap over Valley, and Valley's going to battle to try and close that gap because Wally's on a fly. Mohamed Wally leads out this final heat of the day. Mohamed Wally's in the lead. He goes into the 180s on his penultimate lap. Can Luca Valley reel him in? Wally turns in. Here comes Valley. Can Valley close that gap up? Is slow traffic? Is it going to affect the outcome? They go down towards uh, Boss Sweep. And the slow mark is there. Luca Valley. It's going to hold him up slightly. Is Luca Valley going to take advantage of this one and close up on Wally? Luca Valley's pushing hard. He's trying to close up on the back of Wally. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. They closed up. They've closed up. And they're going through, and John Wall it says Schalfisser goes to second. Schalfis is in second, he's pushing, Wally goes defensive. Yeah, they come up, and it's Fisser, and Bishop puts his nose in there. Luca Valley up on the inside to third, it's absolute war here in the final heat. And the final lap here now, and it's still Wally that leads out from Fisser. Fisser goes up on the, is that John Wall? Fisser, Fisser on the outside there, Fisser's going to go on the outside, and Fisser takes the lead. Fisser takes the lead. Fisser takes the lead. He comes out on top. Shal Fisser takes the lead from Mohamed Wally. It's flag time. Shal Fisser is in the lead. And local lad Shal Fisser takes the final lead. He wins the race. Mohamed Wally is second. Tate Bishop third. John Wilson, Luca Verley, and Divian Naidu comes through in six, followed there by Storm Lanfear, Laxon Lau, Jude Stewart, Mara De Luz, Ethan Deacon, Brandon Van Abel, Travis Finger, and Mikhail Mercedo. Uh, Carmen Novella, Josh Smith in 16. Then it's uh, Nielsen Marks, Cole Houston, Kian Spies, uh, Kian Fussell, uh, Oliver Intenhaus, and Anzala Corza. Wow, wow, you cannot ask for a more exciting race than that. Well done to Charles Michael Fisser, man from Cape Town, who wins the African Open Senior Max Challenge. It sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, every minute change matters a never-ending quest.
each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved. Speed, grip, hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, it is moulded, until finally, it is ready, but not complete. Right, folks, next up, race number four, Micro Max on the front row. Michael Mahoney and Liam Wharton. Matthew Shuttleworth and Jaden van der on the second row. Then it's Adrian Stein and Sl Slater Smith. Ruan Victor, Luan De Vett, Liam Takiso, Jake Stutt, Luke Dutoy, Alicia Britz, Ronald Fenton, 
Lawasha Matabula, Mia Manis, and uh, Zach Fossil should have been out there, but he's not. So they're warming up. It's their uh, sighting lap. And then we're going to have 12 laps of absolute mayhem. Double yellows out, full caution yellow. Michael Amoni puts his hand up, slows them up. Liam Orton pulls up alongside him. They start forming up. Right, looks like they're going to get one more sighting lap. One of the cards will have to catch up. So they're going to slow it down. Slow it down. All in their positions, they're expecting to start a race, but they're going to get one more sighting lap. Luan de Vet has to catch up with him. They get one more sighting lap. They weren't expecting that, so they get to warm up the tyres a bit more. Luan de Vet has to catch up, so he's going to be reeling at full pace, getting a lot of heat into his tyres. Double yellows, they will slow up down the back straight. They slow up going into golf club. All the carters start catching up. Now they're all together. Now they can slow it right up. We're about to go racing. 12 laps of absolute wards going to be. Everyone's going to be jostling for that uh, leader position. Double yellow's getting waved. Right, here we go. They're about to break the tram lines. We're about to go racing. Into the tram lines to go. Lights off and away they go. Down towards turn number one. Who's going to get that all shot? Is it going to be Michael O'Mahony? And alongside him there, it's uh, Liam Wharton. But Wharton gets squeezed out wide. Wharton gets squeezed out wide. And he's going to slot in at about number four. He's got a bit of work to do. He's a man that would like to be up front. He's going to have to... Oh, and someone runs wide. They come back onto the circuit. A bit unfortunate there. Now they race down towards Boss Corner. All ducking and diving and jostling for positions. And uh, work their way out of golf club. Make their way now past Rotex. Michael O'Mahony is leading out. And uh, up behind him there, it looks like it could be Jaden van Amava as they go up over the line. They cross the line, we'll get the leaderboard. No, it's Ruan Victor. Then it's uh, Mark Shuttleworth, Matthew Shuttleworth, Liam Wharton, Adrian Stein, Luke de Toy, and Jaden van Amava. Well, we'll have to see how this one pans out. Into the 180s they go. Everyone was going to want to get through there now as they make their way now out down the road tax straight. Still Michael O'Mahony leading out there. Ruan Victor's there. Here comes Liam Wharton up on the inside. Liam goes up to third. He's on a charge. Little Liam Wharton wants to get to the front now. He sits there in P3. Michael O'Mahony still leads out. It's a cart of about seven carts. Eight carts there in that high-speed train now as they cross the line. They cross the line. We're going to have 10 laps to go. Yeah, they come down towards uh, turn number one. There you see all seven carts in that high-speed train make their way down towards the 180s. Into the 180s, Michael Mahoney. Mark Sh uh, it's Matthew Shuttleworth. And then it's going to be uh, Liam Wharton in there. They make their way down towards Boss Corner. And uh, Wharton there in fourth. Wharton's got to be careful. He's going to get squeezed out. He's going to lose a position. He's hanging wide. You cannot afford to hang wide in this race. The guys will bomb you up on the inside. Wharton's hard work goes to poor Houston. He's got it all to do all over again. We cross the line. We're going to have nine laps left. Nine laps to go. A little bit of jostling for positions there behind them. And it's still Mahoney leading out from the front. Mahoney leads out. Into the 180s they go. The front four closely knit. Yeah, they come out. Michael Mahoney 
shuttle with Victor Wharton. Now they come out. All jostling for positions. Mahoney still leads up. Matthew Shuttle was sitting there in second place with Ruan Victor and Liam Wharton. Michael Mahoney is still leading out. Mahoney has uh, Matthew Shuttleworth right up there behind him, dining to turn one. They go. Shuttleworth takes the lead. Matthew Shuttleworth goes to the front. In a good maneuver. Will Mahoney try and come back at him? They dive into the 180s. Keeping the doors closed there. Mahoney is now going to chase down on Shuttleworth now as they go down the road tax straight. Michael Mahoney, Shuttleworth. Mahoney drives past the outside. Mahoney's going to take him around the outside. Oh! And the two collide. And Shuttleworth goes off the circuit. And Wharton does up to second. Oh, it's one of those races. Coming in too tight on a corner. And get back to the outside. And now Mahoney and Wharton are going to be at it. Liam Wharton chasing Michael Mahoney. And we've got uh, seven laps left. Seven laps to go as they work their way down towards the 180s. Michael Mahoney, Liam Wharton. And up behind him is Adrian Stein. I tell you what, it's anybody's race. Anybody can take this one. A Mahoney, Wharton. Wharton tries to close down a Mahoney. He does indeed gain down into Boss Corner, into Golf Club. He gets right up behind him. Liam Wharton's got a lot of pace in his car. He's uh, following Mahoney. He needs to go and catch Mahoney. Don't worry what's behind you. What's worry is in front of you. Keep going. Keep at it. Chomp at the bit. Eat the elephant one piece at a time. Ah, oh, Adrian stands in there and, uh, and he thinks, well, I'm also in with a shout here. I'm in with a shout. It's anyone's game. You're prepared to put your life on the line here. Let it hang out. Michael Mahoney is now hanging on for dear life there as Liam Wharton pursues him. They're gonna and Wharton looks up on the inside. Liam Wharton's gonna take the lead and Liam Wharton goes to the front down into golf club. Liam Wharton goes to the front. Now can Wharton hold out? Arden Stein is all over the back of Michael Mahoney there like a bad rush now, giving him food for thought now as they work their way past the uh, pit pen. They make their way over the line when they cross the line. They're gonna have five laps to go. Six laps to go, sorry. Wharton leading out. Liam Wharton leads out. Can he hold on to this one? Into the 180s goes Wharton. He keeps it tight. Dives in there. Michael Mahoney is all over him there. He's pushing hard. Wharton might have to go defensive. Does he? No, he tucks the circuit. He gets his head down. Now goes toward the inside of the circuit to hold his line. Dives down into golf club. Mahoney's right there with him. Mahoney's pushing hard. Adrian Staines in there as well. He's looking for a way through. Then it's uh, Ruan Victor. And then it's Jaden van Amava. Now they're getting close. It's becoming a five-way tie once again. Here we go. Now Michael Mahoney up on the inside. Mahoney goes back to the lead. And uh, Liam Wharton down to second. Up to the 180s. Michael Mahoney goes defensive. Wharton's pushing him. Wharton's up on the inside. And Mahoney has the inside line. He holds on. And Adrian Staines pushing the back there of Liam Wharton. They come out of the 180s, work their way down the back straight. Wharton leaves the door open and it looks like Staines going to come through. And he does. Adrian Stain goes to second. Michael Mahoney's leading out. Adrian Stain is absolutely riding the wheels of his car this way, that way. And it looks like Wharton's been relegated down to fourth. Over the line they go. Work their way up towards the 180s. Liam Wharton's gone back to second. He's fought his way back. Lovely driving here. Up behind Michael Mahoney. Liam Wharton chasing Michael Mahoney. They have got three laps left in this one. Three grueling laps. Mahoney's got his head done. He's trying to get the job done. Wharton is chasing hard. Wharton wants this one badly. Look in front of you, lad. Don't look behind you. The minute you look behind you, you get chomped up. Keep your line. Stick with Mahoney. This is what they are saying. Michael Mahoney doing a sterling job here now as he leads out front. Liam Wharton 
on the outside will have to go up on the inside he's left that door open he's going to get gobbled up he does indeed he's running wide he's leaving the door wide open and making it difficult for himself now he gets defended well i tell you what mr wharton you have got all the attributes but you're making life so hard for yourself at the moment in time but in the meantime it's uh Rowan Victor that sits up behind Mahoney. Mahoney is controlling this race from the front. Wharton looking up on the inside now as they come, come out that corner there. Through the kink they go. Come past the uh, pit pen. Up over the line they go. Mahoney goes defensive. Wharton once again on the outside leaving a door open there he's in third place he's got to be careful he cannot hang outside you need to go up on the inside he tries to go around the outside tries to switch back maneuver it doesn't pay off Ryan Victor is holding his line it's the final lap it's the final lap it's going to go down to the wire Mahoney is holding out everyone goes up on the inside line and coming up on the inside, Liam Wharton gets squeezed out to third, and it's Adrian Stein that goes to third position. Adrian Stein and Michael Mahoney is still holding on. Michael Mahoney is going to take this race. Check it, flag time. And check it, flag time. Michael Mahoney takes the race there from Ruan Victor, Adrian Stein, Liam Wharton, and uh, Luke Detoy, Jada van Amerva, Luan de Vett, Matthew Shuttleworth. Wait for the rest of the guys to come through. Then it's Zach Bossoff, Alicia Britz, Lawasha Matabula, Ronald Fenter, Mia Manus, Jake Stein, and Liam Takiso. Well, what a great race there from uh, Michael O'Mahony. Lovely, lovely stuff there from Michael O'Mahony as he takes the win in the Micromax race number four. sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at nighttime, I guess.
Well, if you haven't had enough excitement yet, next up, Junior Max Race. Number four, Keegan Beaumont, William Marshall, Jack Moore, Reese Quiz, and Gianna Pascal. Georgia Lennox, Jordan Wadley, Keegan Martin, Josh Moore, Luke Hill, Caleb Woodnell, James Nash, Nicholas Lennox, Tristan Vahil, Sebastian Iman, Rafael De Silva, Armani Kinyao. Uh, oh, so many names to mention here. Yeah, Emma Dowling, Anwar April, Spice Malula, Jesse Swart. It's going to be another crackerjack race. 18 grueling laps. As you see on screen for the viewers at home, all the cards parked sideways there for the start of the race. Lovely to see all the respective charges in their carts. This is going to be another crackerjack race. There's all the peanuts in the packet, as they say. Everyone filling up the stands, all on the edge of their seats. This is going to be another. There's William Marshall in screen. And uh, there's uh, Keegan Beaumont, Reese Quirzen, Georgia Lennitz. Beautiful to see everyone, all the great uh, carters on screen going around the world. Great things to come for some of these people there. Jack Moore on screen. See on his uh, pants there, Jay Moore. The sport of kings karting. They'll be ready to go shortly. Keegan Martin in picture there as well. Starting the engines. Green flag, off they go. Sighting lap. 18 laps of war about to commence. William Marshall, Keegan Beaumont, Reeves Quizen, Jack Moore, George Lennox, Gianna Pascal, Keegan Martin, Jordan Wadley, Luke Hill, Josh Moore, James Nash, Caleb Woodendall, Christian Vahil, Nicholas Lennox, anyone's race, Rafael De Silva, Sebastiani Himan, Caleb Moss, Amani Kenyao, Emma Darling, Anwar Pearl, Spice Malula, Jesse Swat. Anybody can win this race. There are a couple of protagonists, but... You never know what happens in a race. Right, so they're busy forming up, coming out of golf club. We're about to commence with an 18 lap battle. Here they go. They're all lined up, rack stacked and ready to rumble. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, hang on to the edge of your seats. Junior Max is about to commence. They hit the tram lines, watch the lights, lights out, and away we go racing. They dive down into uh, corner number one, and it's William Marshall that's got the whole shot there. Marshall leads out. And it looks like he's got Reese Quirzen up behind him. Oh, we got two of the quickest men up front there, and Keegan Beaumont as well. Oh, and there's a massive accident. A man flung out of his cart. As he goes around, he gets spun out and gets flung out. Let's hope he's okay. Down into a golf club they go. It's Cerise Quirzen. Not sure was that, but oh, fortunate enough. Hopefully not hurt too badly. Quirzen leads out over Marshall. Quirzen leads out. And uh, red flag, red flag. Red flag. Red flag, it's called. And a couple of concerned drivers run to see if the uh, driver that had the accident is okay. Bang! And he gets ripped right out of his cart. Stands up. Uh, he's made of some of the solid stuff. He seems okay.
Laird took a bit of a knock, but he's okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, just to let you know, the driver is okay. Took a massive tumble, comes out in the cart, smacks the tires and gets flung right out of his cart and bang, he lands on the tarmac. A little bit of roast is there, but uh, everything seems okay. A bit of a track clean up there, sweeping the sand up and etc., making sure everything's okay. All the carters together, all a little bit concerned for their fellow competitor. You do race against each other, but they're uh, much love as well between the competitors. the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those few, those lucky few who can. 
kept their cool, held their nerve, and conquered the mountain. The reward is the title of champion. Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate. Their nation celebrates. We celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sama. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, Every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Right, folks, so welcome back as the uh Junior Max take to the circuit again. It looks like we're going to restart the race. Another 18 grueling laps. Quick sighting lap. And uh, then we'll get the show on the road again. On the front row, William Marshall. Keegan Beaumont, Reese Quirzen and Jack Moore. Georgia Lennox, Gianna Pascal. Keegan Martin, Jordan Whaley, Luke Hill, Josh Moore, James Nash, Caleb Woodendall, Christian Veal, Nicholas Lennox, Rafael De Silva, Sebastian Iman, Caleb Moss, Amanian Kanyao, Emma Dowling, Anola April, Spice Malula and Jesse Swat. Not sure who's the driver that is out. Right, so now they're all wrecked and stacked and ready to go. Hit the tram lines and lights off and away we go. Down into turn number one. Work their way around. And uh, trying to see who's in front there. As they work their way around. It looks like it is William Marshall. He's followed there by uh, Reese Quirzen by the look of it. And Keegan Beaumont. Make their way down the back straight. Quirzen on the back of Marshall. Keegan Beaumont's in there. They work their way down into Golf Club. Right, Golf Club they go. Hang that left-hander past Rotax and make their way down towards Pit Bend. Come down past Pit Bend, work their way up over the line. Uh, lap number one of 18 is under the belt. Off they go. Work their way down into uh, holes, turn number one. And status quo remains, as you see there on screen, down into the 180s. Marshall, it looks like someone's moving up the line there. Could it be... Uh, well, it's someone there. We'll try and pick up who he is that's gone through the ranks as they come out. 
It is the 4-5-7 uh, of Luke Hill that's gone up to third ahead of Keegan Beaumont. So Luke Hill moves up into third place. Up behind Reese Quirzen and William Marshall. They're all fighting for the peanuts in the packet here. They cross the line. We will have 16 laps to go. 16 left. Still William Marshall leads out. Reese Quirzen. There's a bit of chopping and changing in the field. There between uh, 4, 5 and 6. And uh, they come down. Still Marshall leads out. Quirzen biding his time. He's got Luke Hill on his tail. And then Keegan Beaumont. Have a try and have a look. See who's behind Keegan Beaumont. It's the... Uh, 417 that's Gianna Pascal that's moved up the ranks and I think Georgia Lennox is in there as well Marshall Slynn Luke Hill's gone to second Luke Hill goes to second ahead there of Reese Quirzen and Keegan Beaumont Beaumont's having a look at Quirzen but Quirzen keeps him in check so it's chopping and changing now they're coming to the 180s Luke Hill sits there in second place in the Praga up behind William Marshall Reese Curzon up behind Luke Hill and it's Keegan Beaumont have a look at there Pascal and Lennitz are having a go at each other Lennitz, Georgia Lennitz goes ahead of Jana Pascal they work their way now out of golf club here yeah, past road tax still Marshall in lead Luke Hill Reese Curzon Beaumont, Lennertz, Pascal and then Wadley up over the line they go Three, four laps down, 14 to go work their way out of turn number one make their way down to the 180 still William Marshall leaning out Quirzen looks up on the inside of Luke Hill and Quirzen goes to second and Luke Hill shuts Beaumont out from trying to get through Quirzen up to second cool, calm and collected have a look at that manoeuvre on screen as Quirzen just up on the inside and Hill has to keep Beaumont out in check. Down into Boss Corner they go. Into Golf Club. Still Marshall leading out. Quirzen's in second. They work their way now past Rotex. Down they go. Come down past the bit bend. Still William Marshall leading out. Reese Quirzen in second. Quirzen now wants to go and find Marshall and get back on his tail. Now Keegan Beaumont up on the inside of Luke Hill. Beaumont goes up to third into turn number one. Good manoeuvre Cohen. Someone runs a bit wide. It looked like Wadley. So Beaumont shuts Hill out, stays in third. And the rest of the guys all jostling for positions now as they make their way down towards uh, Golf Club. Into Golf Club they go. Still William Marshall leads out there with Reese Quirzen. Quirzen a little bit ahead there of Beaumont. Beaumont ahead of Hill. So they make their way up over the line. When they cross the line, they'll have 12 laps left. 12 laps to go. Down into turn number one. William Marshall still leading out. Ahead there of Reese Quirzen and Keegan Beaumont. Then Luke Hill. Up behind Luke Hill is Gianna Pascal and Georgia Lennitz. And uh, then it is going to be uh, Christian Verhill that sits there. High speed train as it comes out. Marshall ahead of Quirzen. Quirzen has to do a bit of work to go and find Marshall. Quirzen has to up the ante. There's still uh, 11 laps in it. Still 11 laps to go anyone's game Marshall when he's in front likes to stay in front Curzon likes to attack so uh, Curzon's got a bit of uh, speed to make up have a look at the gap it's 0.7 seconds it was 0.6 so Marshall up in the ante there and uh, pressing hard now as they're going to the 180 still William Marshall leading out there ahead of Reese Curzon Curzon coming in tight there with uh, Keegan Beaumont sitting up there behind them the who's who in South Africa's junior max karting makes its way down towards boss sweep William Marshall's got a fair lead there now but can Quirzen reel him in Quirzen can be quick but it's still early days they cross the line they left 10 laps to go then the race will really only start for most of them they're just maintaining their positions at the moment Quirzen cracking on the pace William Marshall stays in front 0.8 seconds so he is pulling away slowly from Quirzen. Can Quirzen reel him in? Luke Hill coming under attack there from P Pascal. Pascal and Luke Hill are embroiled in a battle. Georgia Lennox looks on. Now Marshall makes his way down towards Boss Sweep. And Quirzen is chasing hard. It's a real titanic struggle this one all down through the field. 
your leader William Marshall comes past Rotex Pendia followed by Curzon and Beaumont then it's Luke Hill then it's Jana Pascal Georgia Lennox Christian Vihil Nicholas Lennox and uh, Joshua Moore followed by Monica Nyan Emma Darling the gap now up to one second Marshall is pulling away from Curzon Curzon has to now up the gante he needs to go and fetch Marshall come out of that last one AD William Marshall's getting the job done and pulling away from Reese Quirzen. Quirzen has to now to work a bit harder. We are going to have eight laps left when they cross the line. They come here past Rotex. Still Quirzen, Edda Beaumont and Luke Hill. Then Janet Pascal and Georgia Lennitz. They make their way over the line. Marshall leads out. What is the time difference now? 1.05 seconds. And uh, Beaumont is hassling uh, Quirzen. Your leader Marshall into the 180s. Behind him, Curzon and Beaumont. Reese Curzon, we know, has got a bit of speed, but Marshall is really pedaling along. Now Curzon pulling away from Beaumont. Here comes Pascal chasing Hill. Georgia Lennox a little bit further back. The front uh, bunch now starting to uh, spread out. Is Curzon now starting? Is he now going to come into his own? We'll have to wait and see as he charges chases William Marshall up over the line they go the gap 1.08 so pretty constant Beaumont having a look there at Curzon Marshall getting his head down Curzon has got Beaumont behind him but he's not too worried Janet Pascal chasing the back of uh, Luke Hill with Georgia Lennox not too far behind so they exit the 180s Keegan Beaumont rubbing the back end there of uh, Reese Quirzen, but Quirzen's not phased by that. Quirzen's got other things on his mind. He wants to go and fetch William Marshall. They cross the line, we'll have six laps left. Marshall leads up. William Marshall doing a sterling job here at the front of the field. Unopposed at the moment. Quirzen there with uh, Keegan Beaumont up behind him. come out Curzon chasing hard that car just not enough uh, speed in it to uh, catch uh, William Marshall and Keegan Beaumont is sticking there with Reese Curzon it's pretty uh, standard stuff Curzon chasing uh, Marshall at the moment trying to get a bit closer there's uh, Luke Hill, Janet Pascal and Georgia Lennox going down towards turn number one now Quirzen has closed the gap down to 0.8 seconds is he starting to now up the ante and while he does that um, Beaumont sticks with him Pascal takes Luke Hill Luke Hill back on the inside of Pascal Luke Hill goes back to the front Pascal and Georgia Lennox is part of that second pack of three now Quirzen starting to get the job done he's got Beaumont right in his tail Beaumont's nose going looks a bit bent there in the front on screen but he still keeps going they're trying to close down on Marshall. Quirzen now up and down. It was 0.8. What's it going to be now when they cross the line? They cross the line now. It is still 0.8. So Marshall doing everything right. Quirzen trying to close him down now. They're up on the way to one, the 180s. Down they come to the 180s. Quirzen in there. Still Beaumont sticks to Quirzen like uh, glue. And Pascal's now got past Luke Hill. Gianna Pascal's past Luke Hill. And Georgia Lennox is now on the back of Luke Hill. <coughs> and still... Um, William Marshall leads out but I think Curzon and Beaumont are getting a bit closer we got four laps to go <coughs> four laps to go and Curzon and Beaumont are now signing to up the ante they're upping the ante Pascal crosses the line there with Hill and Lennox and Georgia Lennox was looking on the inside there of Luke Hill Oh, Rhys Quirzen getting a bit, a bit closer to William Marshall. Can he catch him? They cross the line. They'll only have two laps to go. Two laps will be left in it. Can he do anything? Can he catch Marshall? Will Marshall hold out? Quirzen's chasing hard. They're going to cross the line. There goes Marshall. There goes Quirzen. 
0.6 of a six seconds there now. They're pushing hard. Curzon and Beaumont are pushing hard. Curzon into the 180s. It's their penultimate lap. They've got a lap and a half to go. Curzon knows what's left. He's pushing hard. There's Pascal. There's Hill. There's Lennitz. William Marshall still in front. Reese Curzon dives there in behind him. The last lap board's going to come out. Last lap board's going to come out now for William Marshall. William Marshall's going to get the last lap board as he crosses the line. There he goes. Curzon's not close enough to mount the challenge yet. And Keegan Beaumont looks up on the inside. But Curzon keeps him in check. Curzon keeps him in check. And while they're having a scuffle, they're losing out to Marshall. Marshall leads out. Is Curzon going to catch him? I think not. William Marshall leads out. He's been doing things right all day. He did have a DNA, but here he goes. William Marshall down. I think he's done enough. I think he's going to take the checkered flag. Curzon's going to be in second. Here comes uh, William Marshall. William Marshall's going to take the checkered flag. Around here, past Pit Pen, and it's checkered flag time, ladies and gentlemen. Checkered flag. William Marshall, Reese Curzon, Keegan Beaumont. Then it's going to be uh, Guiana Pascal, Luke Hill, and Georgia Lennart. Then we have uh, Emma Darling, jo uh, Josh Moore, uh, Mani Kenyao, Sebastian Eman, Christian Veal, Jordan Wadley, Caleb Woodendahl, James Nash, Rafael De Silva. Wait for the rest of the field to come through. And it'll be Caleb Moss and Nicholas Lennox, followed there by Anwila Pro. Well, a brilliant race from start to finish. Will William Marshall showing them the way around. Great race. Well done, William Marshall. drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this.
Right, well, next up the Minimax. Just getting all the cards from the grid. After Minimax, we'll have the DD2 and DD2 Masters, and the day will be completed. So we're nearing the uh, end of the day. Minimax all on the grid, and we're about to go racing. Have a look at that online picture, ladies and gentlemen. All those mini maxes lined up. Stunning to see all these carts ready to uh, go into action. 12 laps of absolute battle awaits them. Those young chargers are uh, all getting ready to go into battle and the hearts are all sitting in the throats. They may look relaxed but trust me, they're all ready to rumble. Right, off they go off the line. Minimax National, last heat of the day, 12 laps to go. On the front there, Ariane Singh and Chipang Sessinwana, Durrell Goodman and Max Passov in the second row, Michael Danks and Ruan Lewis. Then uh, Ruvan Maritz, Ronaldo Kuhn, Rafael De Silva, Brody Dowling, Mandume Kayama, uh, Ashe Nagura, Andre Betancourt, Zach Inley, Kian Reddy, Eduardo Campos, Zayden Hussain, Zach McCauley, Nande Kayamu, Andrew Retta, Michael Arda, Aidan Beaumont, Ashan Reddy, Ryan Falconer and Tandiyisu Nklapo. Right, so here they are, racked and stacked, coming towards the line. Good discipline coming out of the Minimax carts. Nice and slow, easy does it, the mind games are at play, the strategy has been run through the mind as they work their way past pit bend. When they come past pit bend, they'll go into the tram lines, they'll split the tram lines, they'll wait for the lights to go off. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to about to go racing. Lights off and away, they go down towards turn number one, who's gonna get the whole shot now as they go, everyone dives and darts around the circuit, in they go. They work their way around down towards the 180s. Into the 180s they go. Singh and uh, Chisawana sit there in second and third respectively. I think it could be Goodman who leads out. Yep, it's Durrell Goodman that leads out. Durrell Goodman leads them out down towards Boss Corner. Singh, then Chisawana and Danks. Well, no surprises there. They've been quickest all day now as they lead their way down into Golf Club. They roll around Golf Club. Hang a left hand pass, Rotex and make the way down towards Pit Bend. Well, Darrell Goodman's got what it takes as he leads them out. Can he hold on? I'm sure he's going to come under a lot of threat there. And uh, him and Ayan Singh have been in the front most of the day. But I'm sure that that man from Gazoo Racing, Chipang Shishinwana and Michael Danks have got other thoughts. Into the 180s they go. You don't want to do anything untoward and put yourself out of commission here. You want to stay on the track as they work their way around the second 180. Hang a left, then a right, down Rotax straight. Darrell Goodman leads out. 
Shishawana gets his head down as he charges behind Singh. Singh keeps him behind him. Michael Danks looks on best seat in the house. Singh gets his head down as he charges behind him. Michael Danks looks on best seat in the house. Singh keeps him behind him. Michael Danks looks on best seat in the house. Danks comes in nice and tight. Michael Danks has got the weapons to win this fight, but he's got three very quick cards in front of him, and I think the four of them are going to be at it most of this race. Up over the line they go. Darrell Goodman leads out over Aryan Singh. Down into turn one they go. All nice and tight. Swing around to the right. Work their way down. Down towards the 180s. Another right-hander. Keep it tight as they go in. Then they're going to hang a left into the second 180, all diving nice and tight. Thanks, closing up on the back of Shisenwana. They work their way in out the right hand and down the back straight. They go down towards Boss Corner. Durrell Goodman leads out, sings up behind him. Singh gives him a bit of a nudge from behind as they go down into a golf club. Work their way around. And uh, Chipang Shisenwana and Michael Danks hanging on. Behind them, it's Ruan Lewis, Max Bossoff, Ronaldo Kuhn and Rafael de Silva. That's the second group behind them. Still, the Dural Goodman leads out of Aryan Singh. Chapang Shisunwana sits there in third, followed by Michael Danks. And between Singh and Goodman, they make it life very difficult for Shisunwana. But Chapang Shisunwana is in there from Gazoo Racing. He's giving it his all. Michael Danks is a little bit off the boil. He's going to have to work a bit harder to get closer. Maybe once a bit of clear air for his motor. I don't know. He dives into the golf club. They go hang out past Rotex and they get going. Danks just a little bit off the boil there. And if he doesn't be careful, he might lose touch with him. Tristan Wana sitting on the back of Singh. Gets his head down towards turn number one. They swing into one. It's Goodman. It's Singh. It's Tristan Wana. It's Danks. Then a whole bundle of carts up behind them. Goodman holding on, Singh keeping the door closed there on Shisunwana, Shisunwana once through. He's saying to Singh, get out the way, I want to come through here. Singh says, forget about it, it's not happening. Danks now joins, have a look at that second bunch, there's about six, seven cards in there. And that's Lewis, uh, Bossoff, D'Souza, Darling and Kun with Asha Nagura. And now, well, Singh and uh, having a bit of a scrap there. And Michael Danks is in there as well. Have a look at that. Goodman coming up on the inside of Singh there. They touch. And ugh, they're still going. And Chipang Shisunwana has gone up to second place. Shisunwana is in second place. The head of Singh. And Michael Danks is now on the back of Singh. Wow. Oh, rubbing is racing, as they say. As long as you don't have a nose cone penalty, that's the main thing. Have a look at that second scrap up behind them. Chipang Shisunwana chasing Dural Goodman. Shisunwana has been on good form all day. Goodman as well. Singh has won a race or two. And uh, Danks sits there now looking on. Can Michael Danks do something? Can he get in there? A little bit off the boil. He's got a bit of work to do to catch Singh. Shisunwana holds Singh up behind him. Still Goodman leading out into turn number one. Go head south down towards the 180s. Shisunwana holds off Singh there as he chases Goodman. Chapang Shisunwana doing a good job there. Michael Danks a little bit off the boil behind Danks. It's going to be uh, Rafael de Souza. Shisunwana gets his head down, closes up a little bit behind. Uh, Goodman, but Goodman still leading out. Pass road taxi goes. Durrell Goodman leads out over Chipang Shisunwana and Aryan Singh. Michael Danks, Rafael de Souza, Max Bossoff, and uh, Ru Ruan Lewis. Round turn one, they go. Seven laps in the bag, five to go. Durrell Goodman, Chipang Shisunwana. Chapang is holding on there with that black cart. He sits there in second place, the Gazoo Racing cart. And Michael Danks has lost pace, and Danks has been honed in there by Rafael de Souza and Max Bossoff. The front three have broken away. Durrell Goodman still leads up. They've been egged on from the sides there by their crews. Get a move on, they're saying. The court is probably saying, I'm doing the best I can, lad. Shisunwana gets away there a little bit from Singh as he chases Goodman. They're spread out now. 
Danks is under threat there from uh, Rafael de Souza. The quickest man on the circuit is Max Bosov. The 5-5-2 card is off. 5-5-2 is Andrew Retta. And uh, Durrell still leads out now. Down the road tech straight he goes there with Chapang Shisanwana in tow. And then it's going to be Aryan Singh. Aryan Singh sits in third. They go around golf club. Chapang Shisanwana getting a bit closer to Durrell Goodman. Have we got a race on our hands? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Now they come through. They're going to cross the line. When they cross the line, they have got uh, three laps to go. Three laps left in this one. Lots of racing down the field. And Goodman and Shisenwana sits... I mean, uh, yeah, Chipang Shisenwana gets through. But Goodman, guy, Goodman goes off. And hits Shisenwana. And Singh goes through. And Shisenwana is going to try and regain second. But he's now third. And Goodman has chucked him, his lead away. Just down the road. And poor Chipang Shisenwana's cart looks absolutely horrid. And he's still racing. And Darrell Goodman... I think it's just absolutely miserated that he's out of this race. Absolutely miserable. I think he's fine. I think it's just been brought to tears that he's just out of this one. And Aryan Singh has been gifted a lead here. Rafael D'Souza, Max Bosov in third. And Chapang and Juanus Scott looks very worse for wear as he's down in P4. Trying to pick up on the leader. There's your leader, Aryan Singh. Making his way down into uh, golf club. Rolls around golf club. Comes out. Works his way around out of Rotex. And uh, he's got a very healthy lead at the moment. Now, I don't know if uh, Rafael de Souza will be able to really win. No, that is a very healthy lead. They're starting their uh, final lap. It's the final lap. Aryan Singh is out front. Aryan Singh is going to take this. He's also got a bit of damage there on the nose cone by the liquid. No, he hasn't. It's just the shadow casting. So uh, nothing wrong with his card as he leads out. And uh, Rafael D'Souza sits there in second place. But Aryan Singh is on his way to the flag. He's going to just keep it on the black stuff. Nothing special. Goes around golf club for the final time. And I think he's done it all right this weekend. He's going towards the checkered flag. Aryan Singh is going to take this one, ladies and gentlemen. Checkered flag beckons. Checkered flag, Aryan Singh. Second will go to Rafael de Souza, followed there by Max Bosov. Chapang and Wana goes through in fourth with a broken card. Ruan Lewis, Brody Darling, Brody Darling uh, Ronaldo Kuhn, Ashenagura, Ruben Maritz, Kian Reddy. Uh, Mandume Kayamo, Michael Audre, Zach Hindley, Andre Betancourt, Aidan Beaumont, Ashan Reddy, uh, Eduardo Campos, Zach McCauley, Ryan Falconer, and Tandise Tlapo. Well, brilliant stuff coming out of Aryan Singh. He'll be very happy with it. Rafa de Souza coming in second. A good race by him. Max Bosov. P3, a local man.
Right, folks, next up, uh, DD2 Seniors, race number four. It's a 20 lap race. On pole position, Sebastian Boyd and Jason Goodseer. Second row, Nicholas Vostanos, Brad Bradley Liebenberg. Third row, Matthew Whaley, Ethan Steer. Then it's Karaba Malamela with Olorato Sukudu. Dusan Radojevic, Jaden Jacobs, Jordan Moodley, Tian Ilov, Zane Buten, and Nikita Team. Don't forget your socials are going to get flooded with pictures out of this event. And uh, a big shout out there to the photographers on the uh, circuit. Right, they get the go in, off they go. Sighting lap about to commence. Sebastian Boyd and Jason could see on the front. Vistanis and Lieberg on the second row. Wadley and Steele on the third row. Full caution, yellows are out. 20 laps of absolute battle out there. Then we see them going down into golf club, they'll form up and they'll slow it up for everyone to join the pack. Popping and weaving, getting heat into those tires. Full caution, yellow, here we go. And let the show's about to commence. Come out, they're going to split the tram lines, wait for the lights to go off. Lights go off, and away they go, down towards turn number one. Let's have a look who gets the whole shot. It's going to be Sebastian Boyd there with Nicholas Vestanis. Then it's... Uh, Jason Kutsia, Kutsia goes back to second, Vistanis comes back on his inside. Bradley Lieberberg comes up on the inside there of Kutsia, but Kutsia muscles his way back. There's a couple of uh, jostles there for positions. Boyd leads out and Boyd's getting away. Boyd's trying to get away. Kutsia up on the inside of Vistanis going into golf club. Kutsia gets in front of Vistanis in golf club with a good critical maneuver. Vistanis is back at Kutsia. Vistanis back into second, Kutsia now, has a look at Vistanis. Vistanis goes defensive as Kutsia pushes him. The race is on, he does, Kutsia does it. Vistanis holding up the whole league there as they're coming to the 180s. And Kutsia is through. Vistanis is down another position. And they work their way through. And Boyd is gone. He's down the road. And... Uh, Caraba Malamela has gone up into third place. Good see her. Caraba Malamela in third. Vistanis in fourth. Liebenberg, oh no, Matthew Wadley in five. They cross the line. Boyd, good see her. Mar Malamela, Vistanis, Wadley, Steer, Sakudu, Ilov, Jacobs. And it looks like Brady Liebenberg is out. Oh, he's down the back of the pack. So looks like Liebenberg is out. And Boyd leads out. And Boyd has got a big lead. And he's getting the job done. Kutsia is second. And Malamela is third. Sebastian Boyd leads out. Across the line, we'll have 17 laps to go. Boyd gets cracking. Kutsia is second. Malamela third. Wastana is third, fourth. Wadley, Steer, Sakudu, Ilov, Jacobs, Radievich, Buten, and Brady Liebenberg is out the race. Boyd still leaning out, getting the job done, gets his head down. Could see her chasing out, pulls away from Malamela, Vistanis is chasing, and uh, Matthew Wadley is in there as well. Boyd cracking on the pace, Kutsia upping the ante, trying to get a bit closer. They're going to cross the line shortly, let's have a look, see what the gap is. It's 1.5 seconds, one and a half second lead, but Kutsia is moving very swiftly. 
is chasing the back there of uh, Sebastian Boyd. Jason Kutsia, very quick. Boyd up on the inside of the 180. There comes uh, Kutsia. Kutsia is very fast. Behind him is uh, Karaba Malamela, then Nicholas Vistanis, Matthew Ailey, Ethan Steer, Ola Raja Zakuda, Tian Ilov. Uh, then it's going to be Dusan uh, Radajevic. Comes Boyd past us. And then it's going to be Jason Kutsia. And uh, Karaba Malamela, head of uh, Nicholas Vistanis. Boyd still leading out, Kutsia closing that gap up a little bit. Is there going to be any maneuvers? Vistanis having a look at Malamela. And Vistanis up on the inside there of uh, Malamela. Vistanis goes to third. See him give a push and goes a little bit up on the inside. Malamela goes wide. Matthew Wadley also in there. Wadley now chasing the back end of Malamela into golf club. Matthew Wadley sitting on the back there of uh, Garaba Malamela. But the leader up over the line, crosses the line now with uh, 14 laps to go. Jason Kutsia goes over there. Kutsia, the quickest man on the circuit, 40.4 seconds. So Kutsia is turning up the wick. He's after, he's going after um, Sebastian Boyd. Boyd into the 180s, reels out there. There he is for Stanis with uh, Malamela and uh, Matthew Wadley and Ethan Steer. The leader is breaking away from the rest of the pack. Nicholas Vistanis wants to go catch Jason Kutsia. But Kutsia is reeling hard. He's trying to catch Sebastian Boyd. Kutsia riding for Gazoo Racing. Chases hard to get try and catch Sebastian Boyd. Who is in full swing going down towards uh, turn number one. Into one goes Boyd. There goes Kutsia. And it's going to be Vistanis. Manamela, Wadley, Steer. And uh, Alarada Zakudu. Well, it looks like Kutsia is reeling in uh, Boyd. Boyd gets his head down, gets the job done as he goes down towards Boss Sweep. Kutsia chasing on. Vastanis a little bit further back, about two and a half seconds behind Kutsia. Cape Town boys showing the light. They cross the line, they'll have 12 left left. Boyd crosses the line. We have got 12 laps to go. Good here, still in hot pursuit there of Sebastian Boyd. There's your leader Boyd going into the first 180. There's Good here behind him. Good here giving everything, trying to chase. Wadley up on the inside of Malamela. Wadley goes up one position. Boyd still leads out. Good here getting closer. Jason Gutsia is getting notably closer. Was 1.3 seconds. Let's have a look what the gap is now when they cross the line. Over they go. Boyd crosses the line. Gutsia crosses the line. It's down to 0.9 seconds. So Gutsia is now upping the ante. It's a little bit of a jostle at the back there. And Ethan Steer gets past uh, Malamela. Sebastian Boyd. There comes Jason Gutsia is really pinning his ears back. He's a very quick lad. Then it's uh, Nicholas Vastanis up behind him. Sebastian Boyd's got his head down and Kutsia is really pinning his ears back at the moment as he goes down there into the golf club. Can Sebastian Boyd hold out on uh, Jason Kutsia? When they cross the line, we hit the halfway mark, 10 laps to go. Nicholas Vastanis, Matthew Wadley in four. Boyd down towards the 180s, into the first 180, here comes Jason Kutsia, he's got this notable sliding technique and is very quick around corners. Boyd with Kutsia closing up, there's Vistanis, there's Wadley, there's Steer. A lot of Cape Town boys now in the front pack. Jason Kutsia now in the Gazoo Racing outfit, sits in second place and he's chasing Boyd, he's getting closer, he's getting notably closer. Well, this is going to go down to the wire. Another one of those exciting races where the leader is going to get reeled in. Wadley trying to catch Vastanis, takes steer with him as they go up over the start-finish line. And we've got nine laps left in this one. Sebastian Boyd in the Burrell Art Cart leads up over the Gazoo Racing outfit of Chase Agutsia. Then it's Nicholas Vastanis that comes through. 
Matthew Whaley and the CLG steer in the Praga as they work their way down towards uh, Boss Sweep into Golf Club. When they cross the line, we'll have eight laps to go in this DD2 seniors race. Off they go. Over the line they go. Let's see what the gap is now. It's down to 0.6. Goodsier is getting closer. He's chipping away at the block. Jason Goodsier is definitely chipping away at the block now as he's chasing down Sebastian Boyd. Two great friends but excellent competitors out on the circuit and Jason Goodsier is absolutely murdering that car, trying to reel in there. Nicholas Vistana is doing the same. So too, Wadley and Steer. Up behind Steer is Karabo Malamela and Olorata Zakudu, then Tian Ilov. Dusan Radijevic is up there behind them too. All around golf club they go. Sebastian Boy, Jason Goodsier is getting closer. It could be about half a second now when they cross the line. 0.4, less than half a second. Goodsier is getting closer. We have still got uh, six and a half laps to go. Goodsier, chipping away, chipping away. Oh, and he's notably closer now. He's on the back of Boyd. Goodsier is there. And Goodsier is chipping away. Sitting with Boyd. Gets his head down. He is pushing hard and he's with Sebastian Boyd. Goodsier is now caught up with Boyd. Now the race is on for the front, for the lead. Boyd and Goodsier embroiled in a battle now as they come past the pit bend. There you can see how close it is now. And look at uh, Goodsier sliding into the corners as he chases down uh, Sebastian Boyd. Down into the 180s they go. Boyd leads out. Goodsier stays in. Boyd is going to just keep those doors shut. He doesn't want Goodsier to come past. But well, Goodsier's pace is notably quicker than Isa. Goodsier is still the fastest man on circuit with a 40.2. Chase is hard there, going down into golf club. Is Jason Goodsier on the back there of Sebastian Boyd? Can Boyd keep him at bay? And they cross the line, they left five laps to go. Five laps left in this one. Boyd goes towards the line, he crosses the line. Goodsier right up behind him. See Goodsier slide out of that corner there. He will go down, he'll slide in there. And tell him, tell you, if he wants to overtake, he'll break late and dive into a corner and slide across your bow. He sits up there behind Sebastian Boyd. Jason Goodsier right on the back of Boyd. Two local lads providing the crowds with ultimate entertainment. They've broken away from Vostanis. They're almost four seconds ahead of him. Boyd and Goodsier down into golf club. Boyd uh, holding out there now and he crosses the line. We'll have four laps left in this one. Sebastian Boyd and Jason Goodsier lead this race out. Over the line they go. And uh, four laps to go. Four laps left in this one. Down into turn number one. Jason Goodsier still with Sebastian Boyd. This one's going to go down to the wire, folks. It's going to be exciting. Jason Goodsier is there. I don't think he's ever won a uh, Africa Open. Boyd has done it. He knows what it's like. And uh, they make their way down towards uh, Boss. Still Boyd stays in front. Come out of golf club. Sebastian Boyd still leads Chase and Goodsier. It's Boyd and Goodsier. Who's going to have line honours? We'll have to wait and see. They make their way down towards uh, turn number one. Cross the line. We've got three laps to go. Three laps left in this. Goodsier is right on the back of Boyd. They come out of turn number one. Make their way up towards the 180. Boyd holds his line, keeps Kutsia behind him into the second 180, nice and tight, no doors left open. Doing everything by the book is Sebastian Boyd, but Jason Kutsia is there right with him. Now they make their way down towards Boyd, boss corner, and Sebastian is still the head there of Jason Kutsia. A little bit back, Nicholas Vastanis and Matthew Wadley. Boyd still staving off the attention of Jason Kutsia. When they cross the line, they're going to start their penultimate lap. Two laps to go. Boyd holding on. Could see her right on his tail now. They work their way up towards the 180. Have a look at that. Here comes Kutsia. He'll slide it in and work his way around. He's right up behind Boyd. Boyd will close that door. Leave no space. Jason Kutsia is there. They work their way out down the road tack straight. And Boyd gets his head down and makes his way towards Boss Sweep. And Kutsia sits right on his tail. Kutsia is trying everything and Boyd just keeping those doors closed. When they cross the line now, it's going to be the last and final lap. Here we go. 
Wilkuts here on the back of Boyd. Wilkuts here pulls something, a rabbit out of the head. Now as they make their way down towards turn number one. Sebastian Boyd and Jason Kuts here. Hard at work. Kuts here on the back of Boyd. Boyd's holding out. They come up to the 180s. Boyd and Kuts here is up on the inside. And Boyd holds his line and keeps Kuts here at bay. Sebastian Boyd holds him there. The experience pays off. And Boyd leads out. They go down the back straight. Sebastian Boyd holds out. He's got a lead over Jason Kuts here. And I think he's done enough. Down into Boss Sweep. Into Golf Club they go. Sebastian Boyd leads there. And the checkered flag waits there. Sebastian Boyd goes around Rotex. Makes his way towards Pit Bend. And Boyd is going to do enough. He's going to take the African Open. Checkered flag time. Sebastian Boyd takes it from Jason Goodsier. Third place will go to Nicholas Vastanis. Fourth to Matthew Wadley. Five should be Ethan Steer. Ethan Steer. Olorata Sakuda. Karaba Malamela. Dusan Radijevic. Then uh, Tian Ilov, Jaden Jacobs, and uh, Zane Buten. Fantastic there from uh, that man, Sebastian Boyd, from start to finish. What a epic, epic race from this lad. His second Africa Open. He is just something to behold. Well done, Sebastian Boyd. sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all of some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. Right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, it is the DD2 Masters, the final race of the day. 18 laps on the front, Connor using Jared Jordan, second row, Bjorn Roos and Justin Rogers. Christian Boucher from uh, Mozambique, together with Roy Gruer, Grant Fienstra, Jonathan Peterson and Michael Jordan. They also have an extended race, they're going to be doing 18 laps.
Right, so uh, sighting left for the DD2 Masters. Jared Jordan and Connie Hughes on the front row. Beyond Roos and Justin Rogers in the second row. Christian Boucher and Roy Grew on the fourth row. Then Jonathan Peterson, Grant Fienstra and Michael Jordan. Jordan puts his hand up, slows it down. And then we go about go racing 18 laps. They sew it up in golf club. They get uh, nice and wrecked and stacked and all ready to go. Two, four, six, eight carts in it. Nine carts. Eight. It's going to be a crackerjack race. Jared Jordan wants to take the prize. Connie Hughes wants to spoil the party. So to Bjorn Roos. And so to the man Jonathan Peters is sitting at the back. All want to work his way through the field. Everybody wants to win this race. Right, here we go. Into the tram lines. Lights off and away they go. Get the famers down. Who gets the whole shot? Jared Jordan is in the front. Connie Hughes is relegated. Bjorn Roos goes to second. Bjorn Roos has also got the tools to win this one now as they work their way out of the second one. 80, 18, lap, 18 grueling laps. Work their way down. And uh, Boucher working his way through in there. Jared Jordan leads out. Bjorn Roos second. Connie Hughes. See what they can do now as they work their way down the uh, into turn number one. One lap under the belt, 17 to go. Still Jared Jordan leads out there with Bjorn Roos in second and Connie Hughes into the first of the 180s. Jared Jordan, Bjorn Roos, Connie Hughes. Then uh, Boucher gets a little bit out of shape there. Oh, there's a bit of jostling for positions at the back. Guys wanting to come through. Justin Rogers sits there, then it's Ma Michael Jordan, Roy Gruer, and then uh, Fiennstra. It looks like we've lost Peterson. Jonathan Peterson's out. Jonathan Peterson's out. And Jared Jordan still leads out ahead there of Bjorn Roos, Connie Hughes, Christian Bush Boucher, Justin Rogers, Michael Jordan, Roy Gruer, and uh, Grant Fiennstra. Jared Jordan still riding hard. Bjorn Roos getting a little bit closer. Bjorn Roos wants to compete here in the final. Christian uh, Boucher from Mozambique. The international competitor sits there in P4. Still Jared Jordan leading out. Can he hold out? He crosses the line. He'll have 15 laps to go. They are get, giving it absolutely 11 tenths. Roos trying to close down there on Jared Jordan. He's quite close. Will he compete? Well, we'll have to see. He's right on the back of Jared Jordan. Then now it's the final race of the day. The weather's starting to change, getting a bit blustery out there. Is there a possibility of precipitation? Well, we don't know. Roos now right on the back of Jared Jordan. Beyond Roos. We know he's got the skills. He hasn't done, he's done so-so for the day. But now in the final, he's giving it his all as he sits behind Jordan. Christian Boucher's got Justin Rogers there on his tail as they go into a uh, golf club. Boucher riding as hard as he can. Jared Jordan, Bjorn Roos and Connie Hughes work their way through. Up over the line they go. Roos still on the back of Jordan. Jordan cuts up on the inside at turn number one. Keeps Roos honest. Roos all over the back of him now like a cheap suit. Roos goes on the outside, looks for the switchback. But uh, Jordan covers his lines. Jared Jordan knows he's got a race in his hands. He's got Bjorn Roos and not too far behind is Connor Hughes who's getting a bit closer. Now they make their way down towards Boss Sweep. Into Boss Sweep they go. Jared Jordan with Bjorn Roos and Connor Hughes. The three of them have broken away from Christian Boucher and Justin Rogers. Jordan still holds out. When he crosses the line, he will have 13 laps to go. 13 grueling laps still remain as they go up over the line down into turn number one. Roos looks up on the inside. No space, but it brings uh, Connie Hughes right into the frame once again. Jordan protects his line as he goes into the 180s, into the second one, takes it tight, leaves no doors open. Connie Hughes, now the quickest man on track, is now up the ante. Connie Hughes has got the muscle to win this one now. 
Ruiz up on the outside here of Jordan and Jordan stays off his attack into golf club they go beyond Ruiz is now definitely showing his hand now that he wants to get through and Connie Hughes is there behind him so Ruiz is the meat in the sandwich now as they come up past the uh, but Ben work their way over the line they cross the line now and they've got 12 laps left and Bjorn Ruiz takes the lead Ruiz goes to the front Bjorn Ruiz goes to the front of uh, Jared Jordan Jordan's got work to do Ruiz is quick Bjorn Ruiz takes the lead a calculated maneuver there dives up on the inside as Jordan fiddles with his cart Ruiz takes easy pickings now Jordan's got it all to do again to come back to the front now he's up there He's got Connie Hughes alongside and Hughes goes in. Looks like uh, Jordan's got a problem. Jared Jordan's got a problem. He's now down to third, but he doesn't have his pace. What has happened, I don't know. But Bjorn Ruiz leads out and Connie Hughes in second. And Jared Jordan is notably a little bit slower and is losing touch. There's a problem with his car. Either that or he's got to pick up the pace. But I think he's got a problem. He's losing touch because Kristen Boucher is now on the back of Jared Jordan so Bjorn Ruiz leads out what has Jared Jordan done what has taken the wind out of his sails looks like he's a flap on his radiator is giving him an issue and Christian Boucher is right on the back of Jared Jordan Jordan definitely got a problem Jordan goes defensive to hold on to that third position and Christian Boucher is right there with him and so do Justin Rogers Boucher of uh, Jared Jordan like a cheap suit what Jordan's problem is I don't know but he's uh, notably lost a bit of pace is his car overheating in the meantime Bjorn Ruiz leads out there over uh, Connie Hughes Connie Hughes and Boucher gets past Jordan Jordan has definitely got a problem Jordan has been winning all day but his cart has got a problem and Bjorn Roos and uh, Connie Hughes have uh, left the rest of the pack there as they lead out Bjorn Roos doing it all right at the moment as he leads out and we've got uh, nine laps left nine laps to go down into the 180s they go Bjorn Roos still leading Connie Hughes Connie Hughes is matching him for pace can Connie Hughes do anything different? Christian Boucher from Ozebeek's in third. Justin Rogers fourth. And uh, Jared Jordan now falling by the wayside. It's a pity about that one. Ruiz still holds on to the lead there with Connie Hughes up behind him. Well, I know Connie Hughes has got the fighting spirit. Local man versus a man from the northern regions. Down into turn one they go. Hughes sticks with Ruiz. Now they've got 10 laps left. Eight laps, sorry, eight laps. Eight laps to go. Eight laps left in this one. Second 180, Ruiz and Hughes, your leaders. Nose to tail stuff here. Hughes drafts him down towards uh, golf club. Hughes sitting there with Ruiz. Ruiz and Hughes are embroiled in a solid battle for the leadership here now as they work their way through the kiosk pen. Start finish line down towards uh, turn number one. And Hughes is already having a look. Connie Hughes already having a look at Bjorn Ruiz. Bjorn Ruiz holds, staving off the attentions there of Connie Hughes. Connie Hughes now all over the back of Bjorn Ruiz like a cheap suit as they come out of the second 180. Connie Hughes has got the drive. Hughes now riding hard. Looks up. Oh, he has a look up on the inside. Just not enough pace to make a move. Down into golf club. Still, Bjorn Ruiz leads out there on Connie Hughes. And they, they got across the line. The left six laps to go. Bjorn Ruiz holding out here. Uh, putting everything into this one now as he goes down into turn number one. Connie Hughes sits there with him. That's an exciting... Uh, prospect here for Connie Hughes he sits behind Bjorn Ruiz even a bigger prospect for Ruiz to win this one Bjorn Ruiz holds out here with Connie Hughes right up behind him Hughes has got the drive can he draft him going down towards boss sits up behind him Ruiz goes defensive Hughes comes around his outside switches back at him now as they go into golf club I think Ruiz knows that Hughes has got the pace 
So when they cross the line, they'll have five laps to go. And Roos has got a lot of work to do to defend his lead. Taxa circuit down towards uh, turn number one. Into holes they go. Come out there, make their way up towards the 180s. Connie Hughes sits there behind Bjorn Roos. Just checked early on when he showed his will if he's got the pace. He now knows he's got the pace. So he might just wait till the, the second last lap or so before he makes a move. Roos goes defensive, middle of the road, attacks the circuit now, down into golf club. Connie Hughes sits there with him. Connie Hughes now, right on the back of Bjorn Roos, out of Rotax they go, Roos still holding on. Roos and Hughes, Hughes is on the back of, I mean uh, Hughes on the back of Roos. Down they go towards turn number one, Connie Hughes looks up on the inside, oh, just no space there as he works his way out down towards the 180s. I think Connie Hughes knows he's got a little bit of extra oomph there, so he's just sitting there on the back of Roos, just biding his time. Local man Connie Hughes in second place. Northern Region man John Roos leads out. Connie Hughes there with him. Work their way out of golf club now past Rotax. Roos is fighting hard to keep Hughes behind him. It's a brilliant race here now as they make their way up towards the line, up over the line, they cross the line, they'll have three laps to go. Three laps left in this one. Uh, it's brilliant stuff here for the leaders. Work their way down into the 180s. Connie Hughes all over the back of Bjorn Roos. Roos doing everything right just to keep Hughes behind him, fighting with the hard with that uh, car of his. And, uh, well, Connie Hughes sitting there, he's going to draft him now again down towards... Uh, Golf Club is right there with him. When they cross the line, they'll start their pen ultimate lap. Rus and Hughes are embroiled in a solid struggle. Can Rus defend? Can Hughes get past? Right down to turn number one. Two laps to go. Now possibly something could uh, come of this. Beyond Rus holding off Connie Hughes. He's riding his heart out. Connie Hughes might start attacking pretty shortly here. Oh, has he got it to attack? Roos still leads up. Comes out the last 180. Down the back straight. Pulls a bit away from Hughes. Goes down the back straight. Attacks the circuit. Goes slightly defensive up on the inside. Dives down into golf club. He's about to start his final lap. It's going to be final lap time here in race number four. Roos still leading out. Beyond Roos still leading out. In the DD2 Masters. Can uh, Connie Hughes do anything here in the final lap? Hughes now flies down towards uh, turn number one. Bjorn Roos leading out. Roos comes out. He's attacking the circuit here, there and everywhere. Into the first 180. Nine to the second 180. Roos still leads out. I don't think Hughes has got anything more in the tank. Out they come. Down the back straight for the final time today. Bjorn Roos and Connie Hughes goes a little bit wide. But Roos is holding out. Roos down towards boss corner into golf club. Beyond Roos, it's the final straight to come up now. Beyond Roos is leading out. It looks like Roos is going to take the chicken flag. He's going to be very elated with this one as he comes past the pit pin. Beyond Roos is going to get the chicken flag. Chicken flag out. Beyond Roos takes it there from uh, Connor Hughes. Brilliant stuff there. Then it's going to be uh, Christian Boucher, Justin Rogers, Roy Gruer, Michael Jordan, and uh, a very. I think uh, dejected Jared Jordan, who uh, didn't finish this race. And uh, Michael Jordan brings it home. Well done there to uh, that man, Bjorn Roos, on screen for taking the final race of the day. A brilliant drive there out of him. A man I know well and a great, great driver. I think he'll be elated with that one. Connie Hughes, try as he may, could only get second place. And... Uh, Christian Boucher coming in third. Justin Rogers followed by Roy Gruer and Michael Jordan. Well, folks, it's been a stunning day. Don't forget to give your transponders back to the timekeepers. And uh, to all the viewers from around the world and around the country, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, broadcast. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you. And uh, from me, Francois Butler, I'll be signing off to everyone. Goodbye and have a great weekend further.
when the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all of some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. the grand finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao.
So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Winning is everything. But it is not the only thing. 384 champions. A rainbow of color, hope, and pride. It changed my whole life. And there's no other event in the world like it. I love it. It's part of my life. Bahrain unfolds before them. A floodlit ocean of sand under an ink black sky. A roller coaster of tarmac and emotion. Months after months they have toiled in every country every track in all conditions to grasp hold of their prize their ticket their golden opportunity behind each contender the love, the drive, the joy and heartache is shared equally. The time and sacrifice is all of ours. Each moment, each race is felt from afar. From the pits, the stands, the grid. It put hairs on your arms, you know. It's such an emotional experience for everyone. Win, lose or draw, there's such a passion for it. The moment arrives. Summon every sinew and go for broke. If you don't take your opportunity, a rival will. Glory, triumph, victory or defeat, all flash by like a feather blowing on the hot breeze. With every grand final, a champion is crowned, standing tall on the shoulders of us all.
it sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, every minute change matters, a never-ending quest. Each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved, speed, grip. Hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, it is moulded, until finally, it is ready. But not complete. It's a really uh, immediate kind of adrenaline buzz. Nothing has the, uh, has the excitement of karting. My name is George Robinson. I've been involved in karting for many, many years. Fairness and sportsmanship in uh, karting is a, uh, a very broad subject, but before Rotax Max came along, there was many different engine manufacturers competing in the same class. Rotax Max was really the first major attempt at running a one brand racing, which is what we have here today. That had changed karting completely because it meant that it was much easier to get the same baseline, a fair level of performance with an amazing level of reliability from a new product that was much more modern. It was the dream of the Rotax company to introduce this category. The Rotax Max was designed to be as much a leisure use engine as a racing engine. But what's happened throughout the world, not just in the UK, it's proven to be the most popular class worldwide. Racing is very difficult to say it's completely fair because things happen on track that might be an incident you say isn't fair, but as far as the equipment is concerned, as far as the engines are concerned, it is the fairest it has ever been in this sport in the 50 years I've been involved. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax.
I saw the carts for the first time, you know, it was just magic. I loved my first race suit, helmet, gloves, and boots. I looked like a hero, my own superhero. And when I went on the track, I knew this was my dream. The rumble of the engines behind me, the screech of the tires around me, and I was in control of it all. I felt like the king, the king of speed. Then I learned it would take much more to be first. But every time being second just made me strive harder for victory. Week after week, month after month, we learned, we practiced, we traveled, and we raced. We couldn't buy speed. We had to learn it. Power was always there, and it was down to us to unlock it. Every year we set out with one goal, one dream. To earn my ticket to the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. Money can't buy the feeling I got when I qualified. Money can't buy the feeling we had when we knew all those years of hard work was worth it. And now, I am here. I graced my way to a ticket to the most spectacular, most colorful, most unique karting event in the world. All the sacrifices were worth it for the chance to compete with the best, to finally be among the best, and to give it all I had. To hit every apex perfectly. To be the best Rotax driver in the world. To be part of this is like a crazy dream. To get to the final, to hold your flag, to hear your anthem on the podium. I have raced, I have competed, and I have won. Through all these years, I made so many friends, I became a part of the Rotax family. The noise, the color, the speed, it still makes my heart beat faster, my eyes open wider, and my desire to race get stronger. And still to this day, I feel like the king, the king of speed. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there was a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all of some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. calm before
before the storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. year the grand finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those few, those lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain, the reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. 
because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. Winning is everything, but it is not the only thing. 384 champions, a rainbow of color, hope, and pride. It changed my whole life, and there's no other event in the world like it. I love it. It's part of my life. Bahrain unfolds before them, a floodlit ocean of sand under an ink black sky, a roller coaster of tarmac and emotion. Months after months they have toiled in every country, at every track, in all conditions to grasp hold of their prize, their ticket, their golden opportunity. Behind each contender, the love, the drive, the joy and heartache is shared equally. The time and sacrifice is all of ours, each moment each race is felt from afar, from the pits, the stands, the grid. It put hairs on your arms, you know. It's such an emotional experience for everyone. Win, lose or draw, there's such a passion for it. The moment arrives. Summon every sinew and go for broke. If you don't take your opportunity, a rival will. Glory, triumph, victory or defeat, all flash by like a feather blowing on the hot breeze. With every grand final, a champion is crowned, standing tall on the shoulders of us all. It sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, every minute change matters a never-ending quest. Each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved. Speed, grip, hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, 
it is molded until finally it is ready but not complete It's a really uh, immediate kind of adrenaline buzz. Nothing has the, uh, has the excitement of karting. My name is George Robinson. I've been involved in karting for many, many years. Fairness and sportsmanship in uh, karting is a, uh, a very broad subject, but before Rotax Max came along, there was many different engine manufacturers competing in the same class. Rotax Max was really the first major attempt at running a one brand racing, which is what we have here today. That had changed karting completely because it meant that it was much easier to get the same baseline, a fair level of performance with an amazing level of reliability from a new product that was much more modern. It was the dream of the Rotax company to introduce this category. The Rotax Max was designed to be as much a leisure use engine as a racing engine. But what's happened throughout the world, not just in the UK, it's proven to be the most popular class worldwide. Racing is very difficult to say it's completely fair because things happen on track that might be an incident, you say, isn't fair, but as far as the equipment is concerned, as far as the engines are concerned, it is the fair it has ever been in this sport in the 50 years I've been involved. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax. When I saw the carts for the first time, you know, it was just magic. I loved my first race suit, helmet, gloves, and boots. I looked like a hero, my own superhero. And when I went on the track, I knew this was my dream. 
The rumble of the engines behind me, the screech of the tires around me, and I was in control of it all. I felt like the king, the king of speed. Then I learned it would take much more to be first. But every time being second just made me strive harder for victory. Week after week, month after month, we learned, we practiced, we traveled, and we raced. We couldn't buy speed. We had to learn it. The power was always there, and it was down to us to unlock it. Every year, we set out with one goal, one dream. To earn my ticket to the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. Money can't buy the feeling I got when I qualified. Money can't buy the feeling we had when we knew all those years of hard work was worth it. And now, I am here. I raced my way to a ticket to the most spectacular, most colorful, most unique karting event in the world. All the sacrifices were worth it for the chance to compete with the best, to finally be among the best, and to give it all I had. To hit every apex perfectly. To be the best Rotax driver in the world. To be part of this is like a crazy dream. To get to the final, to hold your flag, to hear your anthem on the podium. I have raced, I have competed, and I have won. Through all these years, I made so many friends. I became a part of the Rotax family. The noise, the color, the speed. It still makes my heart beat faster, my eyes open wider, and my desire to race get stronger. And still to this day, I feel like the king. The king of speed. When the sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all of some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at night time, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch perfect. 
Ahead of each driver lie six gruelling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. Each year the Grand Finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. Those few, those lucky few who kept their cool, held their nerve, who conquered the mountain, the reward is the title of champion, Rotax champion of the world. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sarno. Right folks, so welcome back as the uh, Junior Max take to the circuit again. It looks like we're going to restart the race. Another 18 grueling laps. Quick sighting lap. And uh, then we'll get the show on the road again. On the front row, William Marshall. Keegan Beaumont, Reese Quirzen and Jack Moore, Georgia Leonard, Gianna Pascal, Keegan Martin, Jordan Wadley, Luke Hill, Josh Moore, James Nash, Caleb Woodendall, Christian Veal, Nicholas Lennox, Rafael De Silva, Sebastian Eman, Caleb Moss, Amanian Kanyao, Emma Dowling, Anola Prol, Spice Malula and Jesse Swat. Not sure who's the driver that is out. Right, so now they're all wrecked and stacked and ready to go. Hit the tram lines and lights off and away we go. Down into turn number one. Work their way around. And uh, trying to see who's in front there. As they work their way around. 
It looks like it is William Marshall. He's followed there by uh, Rhys Quirzen by the look of it and Keegan Beaumont. Make their way down the back straight. Quirzen on the back of Marshall. Keegan Beaumont's in there. They work their way down into Golf Club. Right Golf Club they go. Hang that left-hander past Rotex and make their way down towards Pit Bend. Come down past Pit Bend. Work their way up over the line. Uh, lap number one of 18 is under the belt. Off they go. Work their way down into uh, holes. Turn number one. And status quo remains as you see there on screen. Down into the 180s. Marshall, it looks like someone's moving up the line there. Could it be... Uh, well, it's someone there. We'll try and pick up who he is that's gone through the ranks as they come out. It is the... Uh, 457 of Luke Hill that's gone up to third ahead of Keegan Beaumont. So Luke Hill moves up into third place. Up behind Reese Quirzen and William Marshall. They're all fighting for the peanuts in the packet here. They cross the line. We will have 16 laps to go. 16 left. Still William Marshall leads up. Reese Quirzen. There's a bit of chopping and changing in the field. There between uh, four, five and six. And uh, they come down. Still, Marshall leads out. Curzon biding his time. He's got Luke Hill on his tail and then Keegan Beaumont. Have a try and have a look. See who's behind Keegan Beaumont. It's the uh, 417. That's Gianna Pascal that's moved up the ranks. And I think Georgia Lennox is in there as well. Marshall Slim. Luke Hill's gone to second. Luke Hill goes to second ahead there of Reese Curzon. And Keegan Beaumont. Beaumont's having a look at Quirzen. But Quirzen keeps him in check. So it's chopping and changing. Now they come into the 180s. Luke Hill sits there in second place in the Praga. Up behind William Marshall. Reese Quirzen up behind Luke Hill. And it's Keegan Beaumont. Have a look at there. Pascal and Lennox are having a go at each other. Lennox, Georgia Lennox goes ahead of Jana Pascal. They work their way now out of golf club. Yeah, pass road Still Marshall in lead. Luke Hill, Reese Quirzen, Beaumont, Lennox, Pascal, and then Wadley. Up over the line they go. Three, four laps down, 14 to go. Work their way out of turn number one. Make their way down to the 180. Still William Marshall leaning out. Quirzen looks up on the inside of Luke Hill, and Quirzen goes to second. And Luke Hill shuts Beaumont out from trying to get through. Quirzen up to second. Cool, calm and collected. Have a look at that maneuver on screen. As Quirzen just up on the inside. And Hill has to keep Beaumont out in check. Down into Boss Corner they go. Into Golf Club. Still Marshall leading out. Quirzen's in second. They work their way now past Rotex. Down they go. Come down past the bit bend. Still William Marshall leading out. Reese Quirzen in second. Quirzen now wants to go and find Marshall. And get back on his tail. Now Keegan Beaumont up on the inside of Luke Hill. Beaumont goes up to third into turn number one. Good maneuver, Cohen. Someone runs a bit wide. It looks like Wadley. So Beaumont shuts Hill out, stays in third. And the rest of the guys all jostling for positions now as they make their way down towards uh, Golf Club. Into Golf Club they go. Still William Marshall leads out there with Reese Quirzen. Quirzen a little bit ahead there of Beaumont. Beaumont ahead of Hill. So they make their way up over the line. When they cross the line, they'll have 12 laps left. 12 laps to go. Down into turn number one. William Marshall still leading out. Ahead there of Reese Quirzen and Keegan Beaumont. Then Luke Hill. Up behind Luke Hill is Gianna Pascal and Georgia Lennox. And uh, then it is going to be uh, Christian Verhill. That's it there. High speed train as it comes out. Marshall ahead of Quirzen. Quirzen has to do a bit of work to go and find Marshall. Quirzen has to up the ante. There's still uh, 11 laps in it. Still 11 laps to go. Anyone's game. Marshall, when he's in front, likes to stay in front. Quirzen likes to attack. So uh, Quirzen's got a bit of uh, speed to make up. Have a look at the gap. It's 0.7 seconds. It was 0.6. So Marshall up in the ante there. And uh, pressing hard now as they're going to the 180. Still William Marshall leading out there ahead of Reese Quirzen. Quirzen coming in tight there with uh, Keegan Beaumont sitting up there behind him.
the Huzu in South Africa's Junior Max Karting makes its way down towards Boss Sweep. William Marshall's got a fair lead there now, but can Kwerzen reel him in? Kwerzen can be quick, but it's still early days. They cross the line, they left 10 laps to go. Then the race will really only start for most of them. They're just maintaining their positions at the moment. Kwerzen cracking on the pace. William Marshall stays in front, 0.8 seconds. So he is pulling away slowly from Kwerzen. Can Kwerzen reel him in? Luke Hill coming under attack there from Pascal. Pascal and Luke Hill are embroiled in a battle. Georgia Lennitz looks on. Now Marshall makes his way down towards Boss Sweep. And Kwerzen is chasing hard. It's a real titanic struggle this one all down through the field. Your leader William Marshall comes past Rotex Bendia followed by Kwerzen and Beaumont. Then it's Luke Hill. Then it's Jana Pascal. Georgia Lennitz. Christian Vihil. Nicholas Lennox. And uh, Joshua Moore, followed by Monica and Jan Emma Darling. The gap now up to one second. Marshall is pulling away from Quirzen. Quirzen has to now up the gante. He needs to go and fetch Marshall. Come out of that last one, AD. William Marshall's getting the job done and pulling away from Reese Quirzen. Quirzen has to now to work a bit harder. We are going to have eight laps left when they cross the line. They come here past Rotex. Still Quirzen, Edda Beaumont and Luke Hill. Then Jana Pascal and Georgia Lennitz. They make their way over the line. Marshall leads out. What is the time difference now? 1.05 seconds. And uh, Beaumont is hassling uh, Quirzen. Your leader Marshall into the 180s. Behind him Quirzen and Beaumont. Reese Quirzen we know has got a bit of speed but Marshall is really pedaling along now Quirzen pulling away from Beaumont here comes Pascal chasing Hill Georgia Lennitz a little bit further back the front uh, bunch now starting to uh, spread out is Quirzen now starting is he now going to come into his own we'll have to wait and see as he charges, chases William Marshall up over the line they go the gap 1.08 so pretty constant Beaumont having a look there at Quirzen. Marshall getting his head down. Quirzen has got Beaumont behind him, but he's not too worried. Jana Pascal chasing the back of uh, Luke Hill with Georgia Lennox not too far behind. So they exit the 180s. Keegan Beaumont rubbing the back end there of uh, Reese Quirzen, but Quirzen's not phased by that. Quirzen's got other things on his mind. He wants to go and fetch William Marshall. They cross the line, we'll have six laps left. Marshall leads up. William Marshall doing a sterling job here at the front of the field. Unopposed at the moment. Quirzen there with uh, Keegan Beaumont up behind him. Come out Quirzen chasing hard. That car just not enough uh, speed in it to uh, catch uh, William Marshall. And Keegan Beaumont is sticking there with Reese Quirzen. It's pretty uh, standard stuff. Quirzen chasing uh, Marshall at the moment. Trying to get a bit closer. There's uh, Luke Hill, Janet Pascal and Georgia Lennox going down towards turn number one. Now, Quirzen has closed the gap down to 0.8 seconds. Is he starting to now up the ante? And while he does that, um, Beaumont sticks with him. Pascal takes Luke Hill. Luke Hill back on the inside of Pascal. Luke Hill goes back to the front. Pascal and Georgia Lennox is part of that second back of three. Now, Quirzen starting to get the job done. He's got Beaumont right in his tail. Beaumont's nose going looks a bit bent in the front on screen, but he still keeps going. They're trying to close down on Marshall. Quirzen now up in the ante. It was 0.8. What's it going to be now when they cross the line? They cross the line now. It is still 0.8. So Marshall doing everything right. Quirzen trying to close him down now. Is that up on the way to one, the 180s? Down they come to the 180s. Quirzen in there. Still Beaumont sticks to Quirzen like uh, glue. And Pascal's now got past Luke Hill. Gianna Pascal's past Luke Hill. And Georgia Lennox is now on the back of Luke Hill. <coughs> and still... Um, William Marshall leads out but I think Quirzen and Beaumont are getting a bit closer 
we got four laps to go. <coughs> four laps to go in Quirzen and Beaumont are now signing to up the ante. They're upping the ante. Pascal crosses the line there with Hill and Lennitz. And Georgia Lennitz was looking on the inside there of Luke Hill. Well, Reese Kersing and a bit, a bit closer to William Marshall. Can he catch him? They cross the line. They'll only have two laps to go. Two laps will be left in it. Can he do anything? Can he catch Marshall? Will Marshall hold out? Quirzen's chasing hard. They're going to cross the line. There goes Marshall. There goes Quirzen. 0.6 of a, six seconds there now. They're pushing hard. Quirzen and Beaumont are pushing hard. Quirzen into the 180s. It's their pen ultimate lap. They've got a lap and a half to go. Quirzen knows what's left. He's pushing hard. There's Pascal. There's Yil. There's Lennitz. William Marshall still in front. Reese Quirzen dives there in behind him. The last lap board's going to come out. Last lap board's going to come out now for William Marshall. William Marshall's going to get the last lap board as he crosses the line. There he goes. Quirzen's not close enough to mount the challenge yet. And Keegan Beaumont looks up on the inside. But Quirzen keeps him in check. Quirzen keeps him in check. And while they're having a scuffle, they're losing out to Marshall. Marshall leads out. Is Quirzen going to catch him? I think not. William Marshall leads out. He's been doing things right all day. He did have a DNA, but here he goes. William Marshall down. I think he's done enough. I think he's going to take the checkered flag. Quirzen's going to be in second. Here comes uh, William Marshall. William Marshall's going to take the checkered flag. Around here, past Pit Bend, and it's checkered flag time, ladies and gentlemen. Checkered flag. William Marshall, Reese Quirzen, Keegan Beaumont. Then it's going to be uh, Gianna Pascal, Luke Hill, and Georgia Lennitz. Then we have uh, Emma Darling, jo uh, Josh Moore. Uh, Marnie Kenyal, Sebastian Eman, Christian Veal, Jordan Wadley, Caleb Woodendahl, James Nash, Rafael De Silva. Wait for the rest of the field to come through. And it'll be Caleb Moss and Nicholas Lennox, followed there by Anwil Pro. Well, a brilliant race from start to finish. Will William Marshall showing them the way around. A great race. Well done, William Marshall. sun goes down, the lights come on, and it's the driver's chance to shine. The track under the lights looks really good. Well, it's definitely a change of atmosphere. It's like everything's closer, so you just feel ten times faster. Last night was a bit cooler, there's a humidity in the air. I think the track loses a bit of grip, but the times are still pretty quick. I mean, it's all some of the best drivers in the world, so everyone here should know how to adapt to that. Yeah, well, it's very special because you don't do that normally, and I enjoyed it a lot. I guess we feel a bit more like superstars at nighttime, I guess. storm. A new continent, a new culture, and the steepest hill in world karting to overcome and organize the most iconic image of the Rotax Grand Finals. It isn't only the drivers who must be inch 
perfect. Ahead of each driver lie six grueling days of competition. Equal equipment, equal engines. There is something different this year. As the Rotax reach grows, Brazil is truly special. The heat of the sun burns. Brazil's beauty, bewitching. Its sights and sounds, breathtaking. It is a new challenge for nearly 400 drivers. Everyone has battled all year to get here, and now they face a track carved out of the side of a mountain. Designed to reward the brave, the fearless, the clever. Designed to reward the best. When the cheers and waves of the crowd are left behind, it all comes down to this. the grand finals gain more colour, more personality, more laughter and more bonds from nation to nation. Rivals on track, friends off it. But when the final approaches, one by one the contenders fall, until only the very best remain. They celebrate, their nation celebrates, we celebrate. BRP Rotax would like to thank all their drivers, their families and official partners for making the 2018 Grand Finals a truly unforgettable experience. Thank you, Brazil, and good luck to the hosts of next year's 20th annual Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. We will see you in Sao. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Every rev, every corner, every apex, every pass, every risk, every position, Every tenth, every hundredth, every thousandth, every goal we set, every challenge we face, every fear we overcome. Because we won't settle for second. Because we live and breathe it. Because we seek the strength deep inside us. Because we give our best. Because this is Rotax.
Winning is everything. But it is not the only thing. 384 champions. A rainbow of color, hope and pride. It changed my whole life. And there's no other event in the world like it. I love it. It's part of my life. Bahrain unfolds before them. A floodlit ocean of sand under an ink black sky. A roller coaster of tarmac and emotion. Months after months they have toiled in every country, at every track, in all conditions to grasp hold of their prize, their ticket, their golden opportunity. Behind each contender, the love, the drive, the joy and heartache is shared equally. The time and sacrifice is all of ours, each moment each race is felt from afar, from the pits, the stands, the grid. It put hairs on your arms, you know. It's such an emotional experience for everyone. Win, lose or draw, there's such a passion for it. The moment arrives. Summon every sinew and go for broke. If you don't take your opportunity, a rival will. Glory, triumph, victory or defeat, all flash by like a feather blowing on the hot breeze. With every grand final, a champion is crowned, standing tall on the shoulders of us all. It sits in silence, just one of hundreds, built to be equal. Once selected, it will become unique. Lap after lap, session after session, every minute change matters a never-ending quest. Each delicate adjustment is observed, measured, monitored. Piece by piece the puzzle is solved. Speed, grip, hard on the brakes, turn in, make it bite. Gradually, it is molded, until finally it is ready, but not complete.
It's a really uh, immediate kind of adrenaline buzz. Nothing has the, uh, has the excitement of karting. My name is George Robinson. I've been involved in karting for many, many years. Fairness and sportsmanship in uh, karting is a, uh, a very broad subject, but before Rotax Max came along, there was many different engine manufacturers competing in the same class. Rotax Max was really the first major attempt at running a one brand racing, which is what we have here today. That had changed karting completely because it meant that it was much easier to get the same baseline, a fair level of performance with an amazing level of reliability from a new product that was much more modern. It was the dream of the Rotax company to introduce this category. The Rotax Max was designed to be as much a leisure use engine as a racing engine. But what's happened throughout the world, not just in the UK, it's proven to be the most popular class worldwide. Racing is very difficult to say it's completely fair because things happen on track that might be an incident you say isn't fair, but as far as the equipment is concerned, as far as the engines are concerned, it is the fair it has ever been in this sport in the 50 years I've been involved. So tell me, why do we do it? Why do we push so hard? Why do we test our limits? Why do we reach for perfection? When others leave, we stay. When others pack up, we work harder. When others keep in the dry, our blood turns to ice. When others give in, we dig deeper. Long time. Secondly, I'd like to thank all the competitors from Namibia, Mozambique and from the other regions in South Africa. Thank you for uh, dotting us with your presence. I hope you had a great time. And then to the Western Province uh, Karting Club for hosting one great event. I think it's been absolutely stunning. Right, so we're going to commence with the prizes. It's the f f Chantal, first six, eh? Right, so on the Bambinos, overall results. In sixth place, Sebastian Shuttleworth. In uh, fifth place, Alonso Dolavera. In fourth place, Ibrahim Kalpi. In third place, Caleb Lingefeld. In second place, Yakin Hamaldin. And in first place, Roddy Harris. Just remember, we're busy with the uh, Rotax results. After all the Rotax results, we move on to the African Open. Then while these young gentlemen are standing here, we've got a certificate for a new lap record in the uh, Bambino class. Put your hands together for a time of 56,561. Well done, Roddy Harris. Stand there. I can hear you talking. All your blood cell passes. Here we go, well done boys.
Right, has everyone finished their photos? Thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations. Right, we're going to move on to the Micromax. In sixth place, well done, Slater Smith. In fifth place, well done, Adrian Stein. In fourth place, well done, Jaden van Amava. In third place, well done, Matthew Shuttleworth. In second place, well done, Liam Wharton. And in first place, put your hands together for Mr. Michael Oboni. Right, ladies and gentlemen, in the, uh, in the uh, class, the uh, new lap record of a time of 45-2-3-1 goes to Mr. Liam Wharton. Right, folks, just something I missed. We just want to go back to the Bambinos from 7 to 10, get medals. I want to call on Aston Vahil, Caleb Rogers, Russell Yosefat, and Liam De Beer. Come have your photo taken, gents. Come have your photo taken. Right, where's all my bambinos? Come back here. Let's have a big photo. Team photo. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving on to the Minimax class. In sixth place, put your hands together for Ruan Lewis. In fifth place, Michael Danks. In fourth place, Max Bossoff. In third place, Durell Goodman. In second place, Chepang Shisinwana. And in first place, well done, Iron Singh.
Right, you're going to move on to a very exciting class. Junior Max in sixth place. Put your hands together for Gianna Pascal. So nice to have ladies out there. In fifth place, another lady. Put your hands together for Georgia Lennertz. In fourth place, well done, Jack Moore. In third place, well done, Reese Quizen. Second place, well done, Keegan Beaumont. And in first place, I hear he's going to Italy tomorrow. He's going early. Put your hands together for William Marshall. William Marshall still got the radiator grid stuck to his teeth. <laughs> well done, Jens. Thank you very much. Right, we move on to probably one of the biggest fields out there today, Senior Max in sixth place. Well done, Muhammad Wally. In fifth place, well done, Mikhail Beside Note. In fourth place, well done, Shaul Fisser. In third place, well done, Tate Bishop. Well, Shaul's working his way through Tate as well. In second place, well done, Jono Wilson. And in first place, in his first Senior Max National, well done, Luca Valley. Right, and while they're standing up here, a new senior lap record at a time of 40.534. Well done, Jono Wilson. Right, we're going to move on to the DD2s. This is the DD2 seniors in sixth place. Well done, Ethan Steer. In fifth place, well done, Matthew Wadley. In fourth place, well done, Bradley Liebenberg. In third place, well done, Nicholas Vastanis. Where are these gents? In second place, well done, Jason Kutsia. And in first place, local hero, well done, Sebastian Boyd. Let's see. Let's see. 
Libya. That's a bit of test on my Lizzie African Open. Right, you're going to move on to the uh, O-Toppies. The DD2 Masters, they had absolute fun out there today. In sixth place, well done, Roy Gruber. In uh, fifth place, well done, all the way from Mozambique, uh, Christian Boucher. In uh, fourth place, well done, Justin Rogers. Where are they hiding? Third place, Bjorn Roos. In second place, local hero, Connie Hughes. And in first place, well done, Jared Jordan. Right, folks, don't go anywhere now. We're going to start with the results of the African Open. We're going to start with the Bambinos. We're going to go down from 10th position. There's a couple of medals out there. In 10th place, well done, Sebastian Shuttleworth. In 9th place, Liam De Beer. In 8th place, well done Caleb Rogers. In 7th uh, place, Aston Veil. In 6th place, Ibrahim Kalpi. In 5th place, Russell Yosefat. In fourth place, well done, Alonso Dolaviera. Now we move into the top three. In third place, Roddy Harris. In second place, Caleb Langefeld. In first place, he came, he saw, he conquered. Well done, Yakin Khamaldin. Right, folks, just listen up quickly, a quick announcement before we continue. Can card 60, uh, Dusan Radajevic? Uh, card 603, Christian Boucher? No, 126. Uh, 126, Christian Boucher? And then 640. And card number 640, Alicia Brits. Please return your transponders to the timekeepers. They're waiting for it, please. I think it comes with a case of beer fine. Right, we're going to Micromax. The uh, top six in Micromax in the African Open. In sixth place, well done, Jaden van Amava. In fifth place, Luke de Toy. In fourth place, Liam Wharton. In third place, well done, Adrian Stein. In second place, Ruan Victor. Woo! 
And in first place, local hero, well done, Mr. Michael O'Mahony. And one day, and there we go, a Grand Challenge uh, Rotex Max final ticket. Michael, 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 when you finish, don't go away. We're going to have a photo with all the ticket holders, eh? So stay here. Don't go home. No, you can go, but come back. I'll call you back just now. Right, we're moving on to Mini Max. In sixth place, well done, Ronaldo Kuhn. In fifth place, well done, Brody Darling. In fourth place, well done, Ruan Lewis. Third place, local favorite, well done, Max Bossoff. Second place, well done, Rafael de Souza. And taking all the honors, well done, Aryan Singh. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I think we're finished. Yep, there we go. Right, we're going to move on to Junior Max. Top six, two ladies in sixth place. Well done, Georgia Lennox. In fifth place, Luke Hill. In fourth place, Kiana Pascal. And now, three Cape Tonians in third place. Well done, Keegan Beaumont. In second place, Reese Cousin. And in first place, no surprises here. Well done, Mr. William Marshall. Right, you're going to move on to the senior max in sixth place in the Africa Open. Well done, Luca Valley. In fifth place, well done, Jono Wilson. Fourth place, Divian Naidu. In third place, Tate Bishop. In second place, Muhammad Wali. Muhammad not here. And in first place in the Africa to open another Cape Town favorite. Well done, Shaul Michael Fisser.
Right, folks, listen up. There is no DD2 outcome. There is a protest pending, so the last result will be the DD2 Masters. Right, so we move on to the DD2 Masters. In sixth place, a very unfortunate day for him after an engine problem. Well done, Michael Jordan. In fifth place, Roy Gruer. Oh, fifth, sorry. In fourth place, Christian Boucher. In third place, Justin Rogers. In second place, Connor Hughes. And in first place in the African Open from the Northern Regions, put your hands together for Bjorn Ruiz. Come beyond, come beyond. <laughs> Put your hands together for the masters. Lots of entertainment. Well done, James. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the prize giving. Thank you for your attendance. I want to wish all the uh, foreigners and the northern visitors a safe journey. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.